Hey there, good morning. <laughs> I've been talking to you in chat, but how are you doing, gamer guy? It's good to hear. Oh, pickle, perfect timing. It's just getting started. How are you doing? This song is catchy as heck. Dream Daddy. <laughs> hey, Alex, how's it going? <laughs> it's okay. No one's gonna. No one's gonna see eight minutes and twenty three seconds into a vod. <laughs> I'm not. Sure. You know what? I actually should pay attention. I'm not sure. I wouldn't be surprised if it were Danny. Oh, no worries, gamer guy. You you never have to sub. It's totally cool. Hang out and chat, talking. It's more than good enough. Okay. Yesterday, Five Pickle Morning said, If I gift you a game, will you play it? And I said, what game? And she said, I've already gifted it. So, uh, yeah, we're going to check out Dream Daddy, a game by the Game Grumps Studio or whatever you call it. I know, uh, I, I, I don't know what any of these daddies are like, so I don't know which one I'm going to choose. Hmm. I'm currently thinking maybe Beardy up on the top right. Okay, I guess we'll check this out. <laughs> How are you doing, Alex? Oh, I already asked you that. You already answered. Dad tip number seven. Mm. Guessing I just need a mouse for this. Dad. Dad, wake up. Uh, five more minutes. You said that five minutes ago. And also ten minutes ago. I finally open my eyes and sit up. I'm lying in the middle of the living room, spooning a moving box. I yawn and stretch. Morning, Manda Panda. <laughs> Ugh. Ugh. Dad breath, go brush your teeth. Dad tip number three, start building credit as early as possible. Okay, let's see. Okay, I'm gonna go with the default. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, I can understand that, Alex. I love the, uh, man, I love the JonTron era when it was happening and then post, I don't know. I was disappointed when certain things occurred. <laughs> I'll just say that. Yeah, I, I think that, um, I feel like there was a little, I mean, it's natural, but I feel like there was, um, I feel like the JonTron era hit the ground running um, because it was like new and fresh and they were excited. I feel like the Danny era t had a, a little bit of warm up, but Danny is awesome. Yeah. I've actually been watching. Um, I've been watching Rubber Ross a, a little bit on Twitch. Let's see. Hmm. Should we make a should we make a Domplin? Should we make a Domplin dad? Tempted to make a domplin. Huh. I guess this one's more domplin because it's less it's less hairy. Okay, we will we'll experiment. Let's 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 take a look. Okay, how about we make uh how about we make we make handsome dad and then we decide 
if we want to go uh we want to go Domplin route instead I gotta do something real fast. Oh my god, I'm Aaron Hansen. It is Aaron's hair. And that's Danny's hair. Yeah, I found um I found Ross uh in certain ways the most uh, <laughs> inconsistent, but I I think the funniest Ross stuff is like the funniest stuff on Game Grumps sometimes. <laughs> Ooh, Pompadour. Uh, Goku. <laughs> yeah, he's really funny. I, I I like him a lot. Hmm. What you guys feeling? We're gonna do the longest, uh... The longest character creation ever. Uh, so I haven't, uh, do you mean editor for Game Grumps? Like, uh, oh, you want to go Monster Factory route, Pickle? Is that what you want? You want to make Derp Daddy? We can do Derp Daddy. Hmm. No, please no. Take this game seriously. Hmm. Want to go Pompadour? Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, you... <laughs> I'm like, uh, Archie. Oh, I, I only knew about, um... I only knew about Barry and Kevin. Barry was, um... Barry was interesting with his edits because he really, like, that was before he, he like, was a, a member. And so... I wouldn't recommend his uh, editing for most YouTubers, but for Game Grumps, I thought it worked perfectly because he was really like the silent member, but he had a voice and he would add a lot of his own punchlines. So I thought I thought Barry for the Game Grumps content was super enjoyable. Let's see. Okay, now that we have the hair. Oh, anime eyes. Ooh, this guy. Wait, I need to check something real fast. No, we're not going to do that. Let's get these. Uh, let's get these brads out of here for a second. I like how I said, let's get them out of here, and I made them way more intense. Oh yeah, I'm not familiar. I, I, uh, I mean, it's definitely been a little bit since I've watched Game Grumps, and last I watched them, I was watching some of their older, older Danny content and stuff like that. So, I'm, I'm definitely a bit, uh, <laughs> I'm, 
I probably haven't uh, seen new stuff for a while. Ooh, shifty guy. A lot of shifty kind of eyes. I did just the other day though. I did just watch a uh, Rubber Ross stream a reaction to the Game Grumps playing his levels. Oh my gosh! Is that is this Archie Comics? Should we just should we just make Archie from memory? Hmm. Here's what I'm leaning towards. I'm leaning towards either ooh eyes or Archie eyes. What are your guys' thoughts? Unless you you can veto me, I'm I'm happy to be vetoed. Ubu or Archie? Hmm. Well, I will keep looking for other things and you guys tell me. Ooh. That's a little... Okay, let's see. This one. This one. We might have to go with the, the little rounded nose. E, that's that's a uh, concerning. Okay, I think we need to change his. Uh, I think we need to change his brows for a second. Even though I kind of like the brows, honestly. What's something that is? Uh... <laughs> oh, he looks so scared. You know what's funny? I, I so rarely play visual novels. And, and by rarely, I mean pretty much never. So when you gifted this, I was like, oh gosh, a visual novel. And then last night I started getting excited, like I'm down to play this. Ooh, that one makes me uncomfortable. That one's intense. Hmm. I'm liking, I'm liking, uh, I guess color doesn't really matter right now. Okay. Oh, you want, you want Uwu? Or are you just saying that? I, oh yeah, Doki Doki. Yeah, I, I, I'm familiar with Doki Doki. Uh, I do own, um, I do own, uh, oh, what's it called? Why am I blanking on it? What's the pigeon one? Oh, gosh, I'm blanking on the name. Okay, let's see the eyes. I actually, I actually kind of like the <laughs> super cartoon and then the intense eyebrows. <laughs> Huh. God, I I just thought about it the other day. Ah, little scared boy. Or we could go full dad. Let's see. We're gonna give him. We're gonna give him darker eyebrows. Okay, that's a good point. Facial hair. I think we're probably... Listen, normally I would make a dad with facial hair, but I feel like it might ruin the Archie vibes. Let's see. Actually, I don't know. That's pretty good. <laughs> My mind infinite, instantly uh, got a little bit. I might go with that. Okay. 
See, I'd normally go with something like this. Like this. Oh, that's good. That one's good too. Okay. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, yeah, I can I can totally see it. The little the little uh What? <laughs> he, wait, he likes this one? Or he likes this one? Or a different one? Oh, this one? Is that what you're feeling? Oh. Oh, yeah. I don't use Discord Nitro. But I did add our, um, I added our emote to the Discord server. <laughs> mm. Get a Clark Kenton. No, I'm going without glasses for him. Hmm, let's see. <laughs> I like I like the idea of like Just like this is the uh <laughs> He has his one zone of his face that he's like This is where I express myself. Tame everywhere else, but I express myself in this corner. I like that outfit. That outfit is very dramatic. I'm a fan. This one fits his vibe. Ooh, I like the egg nipples. You know what? All the outfits in this game are kind of alright. Ooh. Archie Professional. Oh, nice. I like that. I could see people wearing that IRL. I like how I said IRL, even though it's literally exactly as fast to say in real life. Oh, man. This is like drug dealer. This is like 70s. <laughs> hey, Carlos. How's it going? Uh, by the way, Carlos, I uh, I did make a Discord. It is below my profile in the link section. Um, is there a night that you... Or, or I can actually do it for a day stream. But if you want, there, we can set a time for inside if you and Pickle are uh, around at the same time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is very much that. I feel like uh, I want to signal with my hand, but I can't. I feel like as it as the uh, like if you only saw it right up here, you'd get one idea of a character. And then if you saw here, you would think it's a totally different character. And then if you saw here, and then if you like, it, it, it's it feels like it's transforming from one character to another character. Okay. Uh, today's uh, maybe. Maybe uh Friday? Are you uh are you around on Friday, Carlos? I may just do it during the day cuz that's when people seem to be available. I like the cat shirt suit like unironically, which is weird because that seems like like if I only saw the cat shirt, I would assume I would only like it ironically. But 
I legit think it's a good look. Yeah, I want to check something real fast before we move on. Okay. Yeah, we're, we're, we're... Oh, wait. Oh, you can turn the hair on or off. Wait, so if we... Just out of curiosity. Okay. Yes, as in two days from now. What time zone are you in, Carlos, if you don't mind me asking? Or actually, what time is it for you right now? Okay, I think I'm going to go with this guy. Okay. Okay, it's, yeah, it's 11.30 here. Okay, cool. Okay, in that case, I I will uh, probably stream inside on a Friday at the usual time, somewhere around uh, an hour to two hours from now. Yeah, well, I I know the um, <laughs> like I know like the American like from Pacific to like. You know, but I, I realize that people live in different areas of the world than North America. So I should just ask the time instead of the name of the time zone. Name that dad. Okay, we're going to name him Archie Selick. Is that good? Awesome. Be that dad. That was, a, that was a long character, Jin, but I think it was worth it. I think we, we ended up with something special. Uh. Did you fall asleep packing? I got most of it done, I think. Searching around the room, it seems like I did a pretty good job. Every box is sealed except one. Wait, Straggler. Uh -huh. What is it? Looking into the box, I see a bunch of old photos and little photo albums. Whoa, I haven't seen these in years. I pull out one of the dusty albums from the top of the pile and we begin looking through it. <laughs> That's the coolest baby I've ever seen. Eh. Hmm. I just went, oh, the, the only way your mother and I could get you to stop crying was to put the sunglasses on you. But whenever we tried to take them off, you'd start crying again. You spent the first two years of your life with the sunglasses on. Nice. Halloween, when you were maybe four? Oh my god, that dragon costume. I think Devil Zorko had this costume, didn't he? You couldn't decide between being a princess or a dragon. You went with Princess Dragon. Huh? Why do I remember crying in that dragon costume? You saw yourself in the mirror and realized you were afraid of dragons. Seeing yourself inside the dragon's mouth was a realization of your greatest fear, I think. Mm. Right, yep. Definitely repressed that memory. Uh-oh, was it my real laugh, Carlos? I can't help it, it's involuntary. And this was in your horse phase. Oh no. Dad. I believe you named that plush Sir Horsington the Brave. Uh. I don't think that was his. Amanda lunges for the photo, but I quickly snatch it away and hold it above her head with my superior dad arms. <laughs> nice try, but this is important blackmail for later down the road. <laughs> Go ahead and try me. I've seen pictures of you in your ska band. Ouch, kid. The ska manifest manifesto had a chance back in the day. The dad jokes have already started. <laughs> I look off in the distance and reminisce about that rad horn section. Hey, it's Emma P. Ugh. No, Dad, that's Emma R. I didn't meet Emma P until high school. 
Honey, I promise you wholeheartedly that I will never st stop mixing those two up. Ugh. Dad, Emma R has been my best friend ever since I was seven. Give it, like, a little bit of effort. Oh, right, Emma P was the one who... Tried to steal people's pets, fired a flaming tennis ball at the police station, or pooped her pants during a sleepover. This one... <sighs> there's only one answer to this question. So, my understanding of this game... Now, I, I, I haven't really watched it, but I've heard a little bit about it. It's, uh... It's produced by the studio that is, like, the Game Grumps. Like, the YouTube channel. So... Yeah, they, they basically have a studio that made this game. It's a visual novel where you're a dad and you're choosing which daddy you want to date. And I, from what I understand about it, it kind of presents itself tongue in cheek, but it actually has like an actual like heart to it. And people like get actually unironically get really attached and like invested in it. So I think it's one of those, uh, one of those games that kind of like subverts your expectations. Where you're like, oh, this is going to be kind of a funny little thing. And then it's like, oh, it's actually really sweet. She pooped her pants, obviously. Ugh. Dad, that was me. I did that. Oh. Oh. Hmm. And I was having a sleepover with Emma R, who isn't Emma P. Huh. She never told anyone, though. True blue, that Emma R. Eh? Anyway. I gotta show this to Emma R later. She'll get a kick out of it. The first photo photography award you ever won. <laughs> oh, I finally I finally paid attention to her laugh, Carlos. <laughs> yeah, and it got us a twenty dollar gift card to McFridays. And then you got food poisoning from the cheesy tostada blasts. Oh, congratulations, gamer guy. You'll get you'll get affiliate in no time. Just keep on streaming. Hey, uh, Alex, you've got to be super close to affiliate, right? If you haven't hit the goal already. I think you, I think you mean food poisoning, you know, with a Z Ugh. or a Z. Dad. Still can't drive past Big Fridays without ga gagging. Still proud of you, though. Amanda reaches deep down into the box and she pulls out one last photo. Mm. Neither of us say, say a word. We stare at the photo for a long moment. It's kind of cool that you have the um, question early on about, like, is it your uh, husband or wife? Um, and then the last picture changes depending on that. Kind of cool. I finally decide to break the silence. Hmm. It's funny that, like, these choices, I know they don't matter, and yet I'm like, hmm, what should I do? Ah. We'll say that. It's kind of a funny story. The day we brought you home, we got into a car accident. It wasn't anything big. Just a little fender bender in the parking lot. But of course, I was freaking out. And the little old lady who crashed into us was freaking out. And I didn't know what to do. But your mother... Oh, man. She holds my hand and looks me directly in the eyes, the calmest I've ever seen her, and says... It's okay. It's all gonna be okay. By the way, if... Pickle, if I cry on stream, I'm gonna be... I'm gonna be livid at you. Okay? Livid with you? Whatever the word is. Oh. She was right, you know. I stare at the picture for longer. Maybe too long. I miss her. I can't even imagine what it must be like for Amanda. She pats me on the back. <laughs> Come on, Pops. We gotta finish packing. The moving van won't wait forever. You're right. Amanda and I pile into the car and take one last look at the old house. Oh man, this car. This car would have looked so good if we went with the Narcos outfit. So many memories here. Hard to believe your mother and I bought this place almost 20 years ago. Hmm. 
Uh, Carlos, honestly, it's random. It is totally random. I, uh, I recently was feeling like m my, uh, quality of answers was dropping. Hey, goats, how's it going? I felt like my inspiration was dropping on AI Dungeon, so I decided I wanted to take a, a few days off of it just to kind of recharge. Hey, remember when I shadowed, shattered the front window playing catch? You always had very strong arms. Huh. Yeah, uh, hey, remember when I sh shattered the other front window pretending to be a robot who breaks windows? How are you doing, goats? And Carlos, I'm not sure if I asked you already. You were a very imaginative child. Huh. Remember when I broke the back window play... We get it, Amanda. You break stuff. And there'll be plenty more stuff for me to break in the new place. Memories to make and stuff to break. Uh. You ready? We sit in silence for a moment. I watched my daughter grow up in this house. It will forever hold a place in my heart, but it stings a little bit to leave it behind. I'm ready. The moving van begins to pull away and I get in the car. I get the car into position to follow it. I watch our house, our old house, disappear in the rearview mirror. Glad to hear it, goats. So, by the way, goats, in case you're wondering, I have set up a Discord server for anyone that wants. I've, it's linked in my link section. There's currently pretty much no one in it, so it'll be a, a beautifully awkward place with nothing going on. But it's got to start somewhere, right? So, so what? Hmm. So, sell me on our cool new pad. I clear my throat and do my best cheesy announcer voice. Oh God, I have to do my best cheesy announcer voice? Well, I guess I have to do Archie's best cheesy announcer voice. Nestled in beautiful scenic downtown Maple Bay, our new house features. Multiple plate, not only are there bedrooms for your sleeping pleasure, but couches and floor space where you can, yes, catch a wink. What a deal, I mean, if sleep weren't for the weak. You sleep more than anyone I know. That sounds, that sounds like a dad. <laughs> I admit my faults, Pops. I keep it real. Anyway, it's also smaller than our last house. Cozier, one might argue. Good spin. Right. I think it's great. Won't we be closer to a lot of cool stuff that we can walk to so I don't have to waste gas? I mean, and I mean trying to park downtown is, you know. Amanda, you know you're going to have to learn how to parallel park at some point, right? Hmm. Not going to happen, Pops. I think someone needs to do a three-point turn on their attitude. I don't know how to do that either. Have you met the neighbors yet? Not yet, but the neighborhood seems quite pretty. Have you guys seen this game yet? Oh, you're exhausted? I'm sorry to hear that. Hopefully you can get some rest soon. Not yet, but the neighborhood seems pretty quiet. So you won't have to chase any rowdy teens off your lawn? You are the very teen you mock when you say that, honey. I'm in my last year of high school. I'm practically dust. Yeah, you're a real... Don't you dare. Senior. <sighs> Dad, I know where this is going. Citizen. <sighs> I'm just going to ignore that. <sighs> but I won't forget it. I know nothing about the dads, so you guys are going to learn quite a bit about my... Uh, Taste in daddies, apparently, as this goes on. But I won't forget it. So, what's item number one on the new house agenda? Well, first we'll need to forge a path through the solid wall of boxes that's blocking the living room. I still have to install the washer and dryer, and we need to go grocery shopping. Pops, cool your jets. You have to promise me that we're going to take a break and explore the neighborhood. Okay, okay, you're right. We'll get some work done and then check the area out. We pull up to the new house and step outside. 
The lawn is freshly mown, and the for sale sign is still in the yard. Hiya! And with a swift kick from Amanda, the for sale sign is no more. Nice form, sweet pea. I got a problem with authority! I'm so proud. Man, all that karate chopping tuckered me out. I could really go for a sandwich. An ice cream sandwich. Sweetie, it's 10 a.m. Uh, I need some coffee ASAP. I gotta get my hands on a nice cup of coffee out of that old bean juice. Or I'm gonna be useless all day. I think we passed a coffee shop on the way here. Maybe we could check that out. Let's do it. We walk down the street to the Coffee Spoon, a cute little place on the corner. Man, this is such a convenient uh, walking distance from our place. Are we going to meet Barista Daddy? I mean, I guess. What's wrong? Why would I go somewhere else and drink coffee on the couch when I could... Sorry. Why would I go somewhere else and drink coffee on a couch when I could just drink better coffee at my own home on my own couch and not have to make awkward eye contact with other people? At least when I'm home, some random guy is going to come up and sit on the recliner next to me, and I won't feel like a little weird about it because technically he's not sitting at my table, but he is very much within my personal zone. <laughs> Dad. You can tell that that was really relatable for whoever wrote that. And what's the etiquette when you have a dirty mug? Is there a bin? Do you go set it up on the counter because you don't know where else to put it? Or do you leave it there? And feel your face flush uh, hot with shame as you consider the possibility that there is, a, in fact, a bin somewhere just out of sight. And now you're the jerk who left their mug. Ugh. Dad, are you just afraid to meet new people? Yes, Amanda. We walk inside. Huh. The inside of the coffee shop is incredibly warm and inviting. Final records line the walls and patrons lounge around on well-worn worn couches. Some cool tunes spin on a record player next to the little stage. Yeah, relatable. Hey. Welcome to the Coffee Spoon, guys. How's it going? What's with the name? Hey. Oh, it's, uh, it's, it's kind of dumb. It gets mentioned in this poem I like, and I thought it was a good idea at the time, but... And I suppose now it's still a good idea because, like, the business is still running? <laughs> Yeah, I agree. I mean, I, I, uh, we'll see. But people ask me that question all the time and I give them the same answer every time. And now I'm standing here rambling and I'm sure we're getting more and more uncomfortable the more I keep talking, but man, we're in it now and I can't stop. Okay. Contender one is a handsome daddy. Yeah, and he's got, he's got sleeve tattoos. So, what'll it be? Ah. I scan the chalkboard menu and immediate and am, am immediately overwhelmed. I'll have a uh... uh. Oh my god. Hey, Canadian. Canadian reference. Uh, I guess I guess we uh Hmm. I gotta go with Chai Edward, though. I feel like loyalty to Canada should make me get Ice Tegan and Sarah, but... I'm going for Chai Edward. Spicy. I don't get it. <laughs> oh, it's a it's a pun. Die Antwerd is a South African rap group. They're pretty well known for their uh, evocative imagery and hyper-stylized music videos. Their music is uh, as catchy as it is disturbing. Yeah, I remember you used to listen to Tegan and Sarah back in the day. I just, I was watching, um, oh God, I I can't shout her out because I don't, I don't know her full, actually, I think she's on right now. Oh, she's not. 
There's a streamer named Nova Kate, but her full username is like Nova Kate Eb or something. And uh, she does like variety game streams, but she also does uh, music streams. And she per she played some Tegan and Sarah the other day. I'm doing the thing again. But coming right up. Yeah, when I remember her username, <laughs> I'll shout her out at some point. She's great. But coming right up. And for you? I'll have a Macchiato DeMarco, please. Coming right up. Do you want that in small, medium, or biggie smalls? My god, this is the game for, uh, for Filthy, isn't it? That biggie smalls line? That is like right out of his mouth. Uh, medium? Wait, is Biggie Smalls big or small? Uh, I should change that, shouldn't I? Matt sets to making our drinks and Amanda and I take a seat one on, on one of the couches. So, if we had Archie and Matt, we could have the awkward dad pair. They're both very socially awkward. What's his deal? Yeah. Let the man make his puns. They're cooler bands than you listen to anyways. Hey. Hey. Skull was cool once. This couch is actually pretty comfy. Maybe not comfier than our couch, but it's all right. Good lumbar support. You sink right in. I have played some Skull concerts, and they are funny because as a trombone player, I, I'm pretty sure there's no genre of music that people love you more than ska. I literally had people, th this is going to sound like a, um, what is it, like a Reddit that r slash that happened, but I literally, as I was playing a solo in a ska thing, had people get on their hands and knees in front of me and do the like, we're not worthy thing, where they're like, you know, doing the worship gesture with their hands as they're kneeling. <laughs> ska, ska is a vibe. Okay. Okay, it's comfier than our couch. Amanda nudges me. This place is right next to our house, and that guy seems not only cool, but also just as uncomfortable with talking to other people as you are. You should totally become friends with him. Uh, I don't know. Come on, what did we say about meeting new people? I can't meet new people if I always stay inside, and also don't go outside, and also don't talk to people. See, we're making progress. Matt sets our drinks at Matt sets our drinks down at the table, and I immediately burn the roof of my mouth. Good one. Hi, we're new in the neighborhood. I'm Amanda, and this is my dad, Archie. Hey. Oh, right on. Pleased to meet you both. Hey. You gotta come by when my daughter is hanging around the shop. You two might get along. Yeah, I'm sure we'll maybe come in from time to time. Amanda kicks my leg from under the table. I'm sure we'll be here a lot. You know what? Let me get your guys' opinions on something. Matt goes into the back and comes out with a fresh plate of something that smells amazing. Hey. I'm working on a new banana bread recipe, and I need help coming up with a name for it. Well, I think we're going to have to taste test it first so we can uh, get the full flavor profile of, you know, and really appreciate the flavor sensations of... Uh, Amanda nods vigorously. She knows the game. Yeah, we need to give that Nana bread a taste if you uh, want us doing free creative labor. I think that would be uh, commensurate with... Uh, I've taught her well. We've trained for this day. I was just going to give you guys free banana bread anyway. Right. Yes. That. Matt serves us each a piece. Amanda and I happily chow down. All right. This is amazing. Thanks. The secret ingredient is bananas. So, any ideas? I'm stumped. Well, I think I might only be able to give you dad band puns, but I'll give it a shot. Let's see. Banana bread Kennedys. Grateful banana bread. Or right said banana bread. I think we gotta go for the grateful bread. Oh, he didn't like it. Like the jam rock band fronted by Jerry Garcia. So, so, <laughs> wait, w do these guys, their relationship status depends on how good your puns are? Wait, what? That 
actually has a nice ring to it. Really? Come on, the great... Okay. The Banana Bread Kennedys. That one's fine. The Grateful Bread is pretty good. And then the third one I don't even remember, so it can't, it can't be that good, can it? Really? Yeah, Grateful Banana Bread. Strong decisions, that's art, baby. I wanted to say baby because I thought it would sound cool, but once I said it, I realized that it doesn't sound good coming out of my mouth, and maybe I should just leave saying baby to the professionals. Uh... 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 How do I ban? What the, oh, there we go. There we go. There we go. You don't need those bots in here. Oh, uh, where's my chat box, by the way? I should probably move that, shouldn't I? I, I I'll... Where do I want to move it? I'll move it right here. Perfect. That'll be better. Oh. Hey, uh... Enjoy your coffee. Thanks, baby. Hey. See, it sounds good when you say it. Across the way, a man catches my eye. He sits all by himself, brooding over a cup of coffee. Our eyes meet just for a moment. Okay, so now we have, we have Edgy Dad. I hastily look away, hoping he didn't catch me staring. Who was that? We finish up our drinks and head out. Hey. Thanks for stopping in. Take care. Okay, now that we're full of caffeine, where to? Uh, let's get some fresh air. Time to soak up all that vitamin D and make our bones nice and strong. Yeah, our skeletons are going to get so strong, they're going to hop right out of our bodies and crush cars with their bony fingers. Amanda, I already have an irrational fear that my skeleton will one day escape this flesh sack and run amok. Please don't encourage it. Right, sorry. Ah, uh, to the park. Amanda and I begin a stroll through the neighborhood. I can't believe how beautiful it is outside. Kids are playing in the streets, the flowers are in bloom, and the faint smell of nearby barbecue drifts through the air. This place is nice. Too nice. I don't trust it. Good eye, honey. You would never be too careful. See that baby in that stroller over there? Government operative. Hmm. We're on to you, baby. We walk for a while and eventually end up at a small park. Toddlers chase each other through the playground, and dogs of all shapes and sizes romp through the grass. It's pretty crowded, but Amanda spots a nice empty bench. We start to make our way over to it when... Heads up! Ah! Oh. A frisbee suddenly hits me in the face. Woof. Huh. <laughs> a corgi with a nice plaid handkerchief tied around its neck bounds up to me, waggling its tail. Did you throw this thing at my head? Bark. I'm not going to voice dog barks. He runs around in a circle and nudges my leg with his nose. Oh god, this is the cutest dog. Impart upon me your wisdom, tiny dog. Woof woof. You have tomorrow's lottery numbers. Bork. Got it. He definitely could have caught that. There's a guy in a Hawaiian... A guy in a Hawaiian shirt jogs over to us, and he takes the frisbee from me. Uh. You know, frisbees are traditionally caught with your hands, not your face. So, on the front screen, I liked this dude because of his beard, but... He now threw a frisbee, frisbee at our face and made fun of us for not catching it, so... I don't know how I feel about him anymore. Well, you know, you're 
Traditionally, not supposed to aim for people's heads. But I'm fine, thanks. <laughs> I'm just messing with you. I'm Brian, by the way. I'm Archie, and this is my daughter, Amanda. I look over at Amanda, only to find her sitting on the ground, rubbing the dog's tummy. Hi! Your dog's cool. Ah, old Maxwell sure loves the attention. It's great to see another father and daughter out here on such a sunny day. So depending on the choices, like, oh, I need to get a coffee, or, um, oh, I want to go for a walk, does that change the dads you meet? Like, are, are you only going to meet certain dads each playthrough? Or does it just, like, change the order? Great to see another father and daughter out on such a sunny day. I like the, um... The effect in the background of the text. Where's yours? Brian gestures over to a grassy knoll. Knoll. There's a young girl... Uh, where a young girl sits on a checkered blanket. She's reading a book bigger than her head. She puts it down and hands it over to us. Oh, you've played this, Pickle? Did you make the same choices as me? Coffee and uh, go for a walk? This is Daisy. She's reading the brothers Karamazov. Her teacher tells me that she has the reading comprehension skills of a high schooler. How old is she? 10. She's a precocious little youngster. Hey. Whoa. My natural dad instinct kicks in. I must brag about my child's natural my child's accomplishments. Oh no, it's happening. <laughs> Brian. Go on, Daisy. Tell him about yourself. Um, I That's my girl. Amanda, get in there. Okay, okay. Let's see. What's daughter? Oh, okay. Dang, can I go back? You unfurl your wallet to reveal a tiny copy of a drawing of a cornucopia Amanda did in first grade. Cute! It isn't very impressive, but Amanda genuinely appreciates you holding on to it. Brian loses 10 HP. You regain 20 HP. Daisy just started a weekly chess club at her elementary school computer lab. She's the president too, of course. Dang, my high school doesn't have a chess club or a computer lab. You lose 10 HP. Hmm. Amanda here just recently won a local photography award. Wow, congratulations! <laughs> this is uh, Dream Daddy, the daddy dating simulator. Daisy actually just won a statewide poetry contest. You lose 15 HP. Oh, dang it. Huh. Huh. With a flourish, you produce a band-aid from your pocket. Take a knee and start to apply it to Amanda's arm. Amanda, what are you doing, Dad? Being a protective parent. Anyone would agree it is an unusual gesture. You lose 10 HP. Daisy sold enough candy bars this year to get to the top, to get, uh, to get the top prize, a canoe. We're taking it out next weekend. How was that even possible? Amanda could barely get one of those sticky hand things. It's extra powerful. You lose 20 HP. Oh no, we're losing. Last week, unprompted, Amanda helped an old woman with her grocery bags. It's extra powerful. Brian loses 20 HP. Did I mention Daisy said her first word at 10 months? Daddy? Amanda's was potty. Still cute. But maybe this isn't the time to bring it up. You lose 10 HP. Oh, God. Pull out a wrinkled copy of Amanda's last grade card. 
out of your back pocket dad awesome grades brian loses 25 hp you really carry that around everywhere ouch maybe it is kind of weird you lose 5 hp daisy here has all of her adult teeth never had a cavity either amanda self-consciously pushes her lips together to hide her teeth it's extra powerful you lose 20 hp oh no i think we've lost uh amanda's in all honors classes this semester oh we lost oh really i'm actually talking to daisy's teacher about having her skip a grade even amanda kind of bristles at that one he loses 20 hp dang he really got us beat boy it's been such a treat getting to meet you two ah did you have to add insult to injury by being such a gracious winner i lost guys i lost so I take it you guys are new to the neighborhood. We just moved in. You live around here? God, I remember when uh remember when my dad used to do that with uh my uncle. <laughs> we just moved in. Do you live around here? Uh. Yeah, we live in that cul-de-sac down next to the coffee shop. Huh. What a coincidence. That's where we live too. Small world, yeah? And Daisy and I are in the middle of, uh, are in that little ranch style house on the corner. I know that house. It's just like ours, but slightly bigger and better landscape. Does this guy have to outdo me at everything? What a lovely place. <laughs> well, I don't want to take up any more of your time. Really nice meeting you guys. You'll have to stop by at some point. Yeah, definitely. Bye. Brian and Daisy walk further into the park with Maxwell. Happily trotting along in tow. You get the feeling that he was trying to one-up us? Hmm. Trying and succeeding. I can't believe that kid's only 10. What was I even doing at her age? Uh, I believe you had a bit of a thing for horses. Shame that didn't pan out. Could have majored in comparative horse studies. It's not too late to mire in a horse creative writing. <laughs> You're close to the truth, Dad. Ugh. Let us never speak of the fantastic adventures of Sir Horsington the Brave, an epic in seven parts by Amanda Selleck. I think I spelled Selleck wrong, didn't I? Oh well. <laughs> we laugh off the horse epic and walk around the park a bit more, enjoying the day. Oh, it is? Okay. Go and pack. We should head home. I'm going to need four hours minimum to figure out how to build my new bed. And I'd like to not have to sleep on the floor tonight. So that daddy that we just met, uh, he's my least favorite thus far. I would rank it. My current rankings are poetry barista dad, um, creepy edgy dad, and then frisbee dad. Oh, they're, they've, they've been happening, Koju. And we'll see more. I get to work unpacking the various boxes around the living room. A couple hours pass, and I get some good work done. The washer-dryer unit is both washing and drying, and we can actually walk through the living room without tripping over boxes. First visitor already. I walk over to the door and open it. Hello? Hello? Mm. A handsome, clean-cut man stands at my door, brandishing a plate of cookies. Hello? Oh, where are my manners? My name is Joseph. I'm your next-door neighbor. Oh, yes. Hi, I'm Archie. Uh, that's what my name is. I saw the moving van, and I thought I'd bring over some cookies. My daughter, Christy, wanted me to let you know that she baked them herself. You can, you can be a, a balding... You can make yourself a balding dad. I almost did. Um, by the way, Pickle, I believe there's a, a no-clip documentary for this, for this, uh, game, and I believe I've watched it. Uh, I saw the moving van, and I thought I'd bring over some cookies. My daughter, Christy, wanted me to let you know that she'd bake them herself. Joseph leans in and whispers, mm. just between you and me, just sprinkled in the chocolate chips. Good one. 
We both share a laugh. Kids, right? Mm. Wow, cookies, huh? So nice to meet you. Joseph hands her the plate of cookies with a smile. Well, thanks for the cookies. Amanda disappears with the cookies. I feel like I should date him solely because... No, I don't want to. Uh, I'll make up my mind later. Mm. Amanda, come back. And she's gone. That's my daughter. Her name's Amanda. She's a charmer. Daughters are tough. Sons are also tough. Children in general are just tough. I hear that. I mean, there'd have to be something wrong with you to try to raise more than two. I have four kids. What have you done? Oh, uh, I meant, don't worry. You didn't mean to be rude. Oh, no. This is just the first neighbor I've met, and my social life is already in a tailspin. I wonder if it's too late to move again. Uh, yeah, okay. Is the missus around? No, not anymore. She died. Uh. Could you imagine if someone responded like, Huh. No, she died. Huh. Oh, uh. I'm sorry for your loss. No, no, it's all right. Wow, this is uncomfortable. We stand there quietly for a moment, acutely aware of how awkward we both made things. I'm sorry, can you close the door real quick? I look at Joseph quizzically, but comply. After a second, I hear a knock on the door. Opening it, I see Joseph standing there with a huge smile. Hey, I'm your new neighbor, Joseph. I promise not to talk about your dead spouse at this time. I'm... Throwing a barbecue for the cul-de-sac, and I'd love for you to come by and meet the rest of the neighbors in the community. What do you say, pal? Thanks, Koju. It's it's hard, but, you know, we'll live. <laughs> that sounds great. My daughter Amanda and I would love to stop by. Also, four kids is a perfectly normal amount of children to have. We shake hands and seal the deal. Hey. Well, neighbor, we'll see you at 3 p.m. sharp on Saturday. Sure thing, neighbor. Joseph starts walking away, but stops to think for a second and turns around. Oh. Hey, in all seriousness, raising a kid on your own can't be easy. If you ever need to talk about stuff, I'm the youth minister at a church down the street. Oh, I don't know. I wouldn't really consider myself a youth. Yes. Look pretty young to me, but suit yourself. And with that, Joseph's gone. Ah, he seems okay. He seems fine thus far. It's fine. He seemed nice. Amanda walks back to the living room, crumbs on her face and a cookie in hand. It was the smoothest recover I've ever seen. You should be taking notes. I like him more than, um, than, uh, Frisbee Dad. See, you're already fitting in. Great. Where'd those cookies go? <sighs> They're gone. I'm sorry. If it makes you feel any better, they weren't very good. So you ate all of them anyway? I guess that makes it break time. Any ideas? Joseph probably wants his plate back. I think we get a ton of good neighbors points if we bring this back. We're going to be the best neighbors in the whole cul-de-sac. We're going to kick all the other neighbors' butts. With kindness. Amanda and I step outside. Huh. Shoot, I'm actually not sure which house hmm. is his. I hazard a guess it's a big one with all the well-groomed blonde children in the yard. Good eye, kid. So I I've heard the intro was supposed to be 40 minutes. And we're an hour and 15 minutes into the stream, so I think this is going to be a longer playthrough than the estimates suggest. Good eye, kid. And remember, we need to make a positive first impression here. Keep it light. I don't know if it said light or tight. I, I went past it. We walk up to the kids and wave. Hey guys, is your dad around? They are all the creepiest kids in the world. There is something wrong with this family. Hey kids, is your dad around? They'll just stare at us blankly. Is this the wrong house? Is this actually going to be the guy who was in the coffee shop? We just wanted to uh, 
return this nice plate and thank you for the cookies. Jeez. These definitely are Joseph's kids. They all look exactly like him. Whoa. They were really good. Yeah, this is horrifying. Especially this kid. She's also pretty creepy. But this one. This one makes me uncomfortable. I mean, I heard they were good. I didn't get to eat any. I chuckle nervously. Well, okay. We're just gonna set this plate down on the ground real gentle and then back away slowly. Right, Dad? <laughs> yeah. I, uh... I like how... Ugh, never mind. Never mind about Right. That's what we're gonna do. These kids' eyes bore into us as we scurry away. I can feel their gaze on my back, even as we approach our house. Hmm. I need to get something... I, I need something to get my mind off those carbon coffee kids. I need to rest my eyes. You've been awake for, what, three hours? And that's three hours too many. As we're walking home, I hear he heavy footsteps coming up behind us. Archie, bro! I turn around and am greeted by a familiar face jogging up to us. Is this like police officer daddy? Craig? Oh. Bro! Bro! Oh. Holy. Wow, I haven't seen Craig in forever. Hmm. It's been too long, dude. Yeah, I, I, I do wonder where that fourth kid is. That being said, why did his why did the the minister's house have a big anchor on it? The nautical themed house. This is this is the guy that you like, I'm guessing, Pickle. It's been too long, dude. Yeah, wow, you look great. Nice. <laughs> yeah, I cleaned up my act. Cleaned up his act? Are you kidding me? He's ripped. Amanda, this is my friend Craig. We went to college together. We were roommates for a while, too. <laughs> Amanda, dude. You probably don't remember me, but you're so big now. Hello, and hello, cute baby. Oh, oh thank you. The last time I saw you, I think you were about her size. This is River. Say hi, River. Hmm, Archie Andrews and River? Is that a sign? He picks up her tiny wrist and waves it around. River gurgles happily. Are you babysitting? Oh, dude, River's my kid. Man, it has been a long time. Feels like one minute we're rolling up to the exams with bad hangovers and the next we're both fathers. Where you been, man? I was working out in California and just relocated the business back to Maple Bay. No kidding, Amanda and I just moved to this side of town. How's Smashly doing? Smashly? I know there's a streamer named Smashly. Oh, man. I mean, Ashley. Ashley is her name. Oh, God. I don't know. She actually still goes by Smashly, and, uh, she got divorced last year. Oh, dude. I'm so sorry. Nice. Well, it's old news, but we take turns. Uh, we, we take turns taking care of River and the twins. It's all copacetic. <laughs> twins. You have three kids? Oh. Ain't life something, bro? Right? Peg Stan Craig is a father of three. Mm -hmm. Peg Stan Craig? I don't know. Uh, is, is she called Smashly because of... Uh, Oh. Reasons? Oh, haha. <laughs> yeah, it was my old college nickname. You got it because he did a lot of keg stands. Mm -hmm. It's a thing where you do a handstand on a keg and then drink from the keg. Right. He was very good at it. Hmm. Ah, bro, I hate to be that guy, but I'm in the middle of my daily jog and I really gotta keep up my heart rate. Brought River along for, you know, resistance training. You jog daily? I jog yearly. 
On January 1st, when I promised myself I'm going to jog daily for the rest of the year, I give up 30 minutes and then just walk home. Yeah, that's that's what I was thinking, Toji. Well, I mean, if it's a college nickname, that seems like a... It's like a... Well, it's never too late to get back to it, dude. You should join me sometime. I, I don't know. Come on, it'd be fun. We could grab breakfast afterwards, catch up. We could do a bro brunch, just like the good old days. All right, sure, sounds great. Great, let's get that going soon. I'd better get moving. Good to see you guys. Craig gives a little wave, puts his earbuds back in and jogs off. So he seems okay. He says bro a lot, but... And my character says bro a lot when I'm around him, but he seems... Can't believe Craig is ripped and has kids. I'm reeling. Why is that? Craig I knew is not fit to be responsible for any living thing, including and especially himself. But one time I watched him drink an entire jar of marinara sauce for dinner. Amanda has op Amanda, he opened up a new jar of marinara sauce and then drank it like it was a thing that normal people do. It was unholy. And then I asked him what the hell he was doing, and he said, and I quote, It's basically a smoothie, bro. I mean, technically, he's not wrong. He jogs. He was jogging. He's like a totally different person. Anyway, we better get home. I'll have plenty of time to reflect on how old I feel later. Amanda and I flop down onto the couch. Amanda has to shove some empty boxes out of the way before she can sit. Eh? Too bad we're going to be putting my stuff right back into the boxes in a few months. No, don't say that. Ah, mm -hmm. oh, Dad, it's going to be okay. I'll be fine. I know, I know. It's just... You're my little girl, and it's going to be weird not having you around. I'll come visit, and I'll text you every day. I'll take lots of pictures. I mean, obviously, I'm a photography major. You promise? Huh. Of course, are you going to be okay by your lonesome? Oh, come on, I'll be fine. I'll get a dog or something. Right. A dog? Yeah. Forget art school, I'll stay for the dog. Is that what it's going to take? Medium-sized dog, handkerchief around the neck, and I get to name it. That's what it'll cost. For me to give up on my dreams. I'm a woman of simple wants and needs. Well, a dog is a lot cheaper than college. <laughs> Suddenly, a pile of envelopes slides through the mail slot. Speaking of college, Amanda darts over to the envelopes and shuffles through them. She pulls one out and throws the rest uh, back on the floor. This is from McGowan College of Art and Design. Open it! But I'm scared. It's just an envelope. Yeah, it's just like... My entire future, not a big deal. She takes a deep breath and rips the letter open with her teeth. You have a letter opener, but okay. I hold my breath while Amanda's eyes dart back and forth, scanning the letter. I'm pretty sure I've never used a letter opener in my life. What does it say? Uh, the, admi the admissions committee has reviewed your application, blah, blah, blah. Um, we... Her face drops. Regret to inform you that we are unable to offer you admission to McGowan College of Art and Design. Amanda throws the letter back on the coffee table. Didn't she get win a photography award? Didn't she have awesome grades? What's McGowan thinking? McGowan, whatever. Oh, sweetie. It's okay, I I kind of saw it coming. I knew I shouldn't have put that experimental stuff in my portfolio. Their admissions officer told me they just wanted to see portraits or whatever. I pull Amanda in for a big hug. You're an amazing photographer. I know how much work you put into your portfolio. Some other school is going to want to snatch you up for sure. Mm. Yeah, I know. It's fine. Are you actually fine, or are you just saying that? Hmm. I'm fine, really. Her face says the opposite, but I probably shouldn't push her on this. Hmm. 
Oh, and before I get, Emma R and Emma P are sleeping over tonight. Aww. So... You need me out of the way because I'm painfully uncool. I would choose more delicate phrasing, but... Yes. Well, I'll have you know that I conveniently already have plans for tonight, so you'll have the new place to yourself. <laughs> yeah? What are your plans? Quick, think of plans. Oh. Am I secretly the mayor? Or am I going clubbing? Hmm. We might have to go clubbing. Normally, I would go with secretly the mayor. But clubbing scene sounds like a plan. I'm gonna put on a nice outfit and go tear it up on the dance floor. All the hottest dance moves. The lawnmower, the sprinkler, the running man. You know, the ones all the kids are doing these days. My And my character's wearing a dope outfit for a club. Hmm. All right, but I'm not gonna come pick you up if you pull anything this time. Not again. Just kidding, I'm actually going to... Go out and watch the game. Nice. Huh? Which game? You know, the game, the one that's on tonight. The game on TV. at somewhere other than here. Huh. Okay, cool. While you do that, I'm gonna go... I'm gonna do drugs and commit some light arson with the Emmas. Concerned you're hanging out with the wrong crowd. Amanda shrugs. Would have expected you guys to be up to white-collar crime by this point. Maybe money laundering at the least. Nah. I'm a street rat, Pops. You're kidding about doing drugs and crime, right? <sighs> yes, Dad. Just making sure. I give her a pat on the head. Have fun with your sports. Are you being sarcastic? <sighs> no, making fun of sports is played out. All right, then. I do some light cleaning around the house and decide to clear out right before Amanda's friends arrive. Before I leave, Amanda stops okay. me. Hey, don't forget that you have a meeting with my English teacher tomorrow. Oh, right. Mr. Vega. Yep, totally remembered. I'll be there. Drinking water too much can cause water intoxication. Wow, I guess I really did, didn't think this plan through. I'm not entirely sure where the closest bar is, and Amanda still hasn't shown me how to use the GPS on my phone. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pick a direction and walk in it. Let's go this way. Cool, okay, we're marching. We're marching in the direction of the game. Any game, really. In the distance. Could it be? A big, burned-out neon sign hangs above a tiny dive bar. Jim and Kim's, huh? All right, it'll do. Okay. I don't know who's going to be here, but the bartender is who we're romancing. I'm calling it now. We did the space bar theme. Bartender life, come on. Make it happen. The bar is small and dimly lit. The crack of pool balls sounds in the back as patrons laugh and joke. A string of multicolored Christmas lights hovers over hover over the bartender. I can't tell if he's Jim or Kim. I pull up a seat at the bar. What'll it be? One beer, please. Sure thing, boss. Bartender slides me an ice cold beer. I take a sip and enjoy the refreshing taste. Say, are you Jim or Kim? I'm Neil. Oh, I awkwardly turn my attention to the game, which is playing on one of the TVs on the wall. As luck would have it, my team of preference is not only playing, but is currently in the lead, which is always a good thing. The brightly colored mascot, which is some kind of animal, does cartwheels. I silently cheer on my favorite team, hoping that I don't get into any confrontational arguments with a fan of the opposing team. Several people in the bar are wearing the distinctive colors of the team I dislike. Although, I believe from their demeanor that, like me, their passion for their team is all in good fun. Hey. A middle-aged woman holding a nearly empty gl uh, wine glass slides up to the bar and sits uncomfortably close to me. Hey, sailor. Oh, hello. Mm -hmm. Good to see fresh meat in here. I'm Mary. Come here often? Oh, no, I just actually moved to this part of town today. I'm Archie, by the way. Ah. Are you watching the game? Yeah, my preferred team is in the lead. If they keep this up, they'll win. The game with ease. Hey. Oh, I love that team. And I also love that game. 
I love someone who knows their way around balls. I'm getting the impression that she's a little drunk. Uh, mm -hmm. buy a gal a drink? Hmm. We buy her a drink. Hmm. She is drunk. And she has a, she has a drink right there. Yeah, I'm not going to buy one. I'm going to be that dude. Uh, maybe some other time. Suit yourself, sailor. Mary saunters off, setting our sights on the newest bar patron to enter. I think we made the correct call. I happily watched the game over another beer. The game has gotten close in terms of points. A little too close than what I'm comfortable with. After a particularly skilled player scores a number of points for the other team, putting them in the lead, I hear an affirmative grunt from another man at the bar. Go team! It's the brooding man from the coffee spoon. He sits alone, sipping whiskey and watching the game as well. Enjoying the game? I am now that we're winning. Oh, we must be rooting for different teams. In my opinion, my team is far superior. I have to disagree with that. Based on our win-loss record, I'd say my team is superior. That's where you're wrong. Since as it stands right now, my team is beating yours. The conversation ends there, and we both go back to silently rooting for our respective teams. The game is close, with both sides playing their hardest to win. But in the end, my team prevails. Quiet cheers ripple through the bar. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you you can tell. Uh, ah, never. <laughs> I uh, I raise a respectful glass at the man drinking whiskey. He raises his in response. An unspoken truce is formed between us, based on our mutual love for the game. He motions to the bartender who pours two glasses of whiskey. The man slides one over to me. Hmm. Are we gonna go with Broody Dad? Is that is that the route? The name's Robert. Thanks, I'm Archie. Hey. You must be new here. Mary already hit on you? Yep. Robert chuckles. He's a peach. Well, you picked the best bar in town. As slimy as it is, you'll never find a better spot than Jim and Kim's. Is, is there actually a Jim or Kim that runs this place? No, that'd be Neil. Neil waves from across the bar. Good guy, Neil. Not enough Neils in this world. Okay. You. You a whiskey fella or a beer fella? Beer, but I'll drink most things. You like shots? I love shots. Thank God. Robert nods to Neil, who serves up two shots of whiskey. He hands one to me. Here's to your health. Take the shots. The whiskey burns you down. But I, I try my hardest to look tough. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I, I think that you might be onto something, Koju. I think it might be about dating dads. Thus far, I, he, Broody Dad does not seem that broody to me. He just looks broody. But we'll, we'll see. Wait, I think. Oh, <laughs> thanks for the follow, hot local daddy. You, uh, well, I think you might be an alt account for someone. If not, you picked the right game to walk in on. How are you doing? Wait, I think, I think this is what making friends is. Okay, Archie, this guy's out of my friend's league. But I think if I play my cards right, we'll be pals in no time. Ah. Uh. Hand tattoo? Let's call that his hand tattoo. Like your tattoo, what does it mean? Oh, it's a reminder. We we fucked up. His broody we 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 stepped on his broody uh on his broody sore spot. I wait for him to elaborate, but it seems like he's done talking. Man, this guy's mysterious and cool. Way cooler than I am at least. Robert signals to the bartender for another round. 
What are you doing here tonight? <laughs> Running from my problems. My daughter kicked me out of the house. Oh, like forever. She was having a sleepover with friends. Family type, huh? Single dad. Hmm? He gets up. Get right back. Gotta powder my nose. Never seen Robert this talkative. He must like you. <laughs> I guess so, except that I complimented his tattoo. I gotta admit, Robert has a gruff charm to him. A guy like, like that thinks I'm cool. It really must be. Robert comes back from the bathroom and grabs his leather jacket. You gotta go home. You heading my way? Robert and I leave the bar and find ourselves walking in the same direction. <laughs> Gosh, I wonder if there is a harem ending. You know, like... I feel like I feel like harem ending is a dating sim. That's that's what everyone aims for, isn't it? Robert and I leave the bar and find ourselves walking in the same direction. Oh. I live in this cul-de-sac down the road. Does everybody live there? Me too. We just finished oh. unpacking today. Great place to be. Good neighbors. Well, some of them. Who's that? We get to Robert's house, which is just a few houses away from mine. We stop and he turns to me. I don't kiss and tell, Archie. So, are we doing this or what? What? You know. You want to come inside or not? A wave of realization rushes over me. I blush. You know what? Pickle, if you're there. I have a feeling that this might be like Jack from Mass Effect. Or this might be like... Um, What's-his-face from Dragon Age? I feel like this might be one of those situations. I think this is one of those situations where... You can hit it right now, and then you'll, and then you'll miss out on the ending with him. Or you can say no, and that's how you get something more serious. I think this is a trap. So I'm going to say no thank you. Ah, I'd better call it a night. Catch you around? Sure. That's my guess. I could be wrong. I head home, head buzzing, with whiskey. What did he mean, are we going to do this or not? I plop down on the couch, and I'm asleep before I get the chance to take my shoes off. Always bring a war chest. <laughs> Daddy tip number 30, always bring a Horatio store chest. I walk up to a te I wake up to a text from an unknown number. Rise and shine, early bird. Still want to work out? This is Craig, by the way. Smiley. Holy crap, it's 6 a.m. What does who does 6 a.m. anymore? Without realizing it, I drift back to sleep. Whoops, I must have winked back out. I check my phone again. Hey bud, still wanna get your swole on? Ready to tear up Oh, thanks for the raid gamer guy. Hey, welcome back. What were you playing today? Hey, bud, still want to get your swole on? I'm ready to tear up that track. Hit me up. God. The last thing I want to do right now is work out. But it is Craig. I do want to catch up. Oh, nice. Uh, here. You... One second. Twitch.tv slash... Gamer guy 2215. Uh, I think mo everyone in chat right now pretty much are are the regs. So you guys probably know him already. But uh, that gamer guy, he's at 18 followers. He needs to get to 50 to get affiliate. It may be worth a follow. Help him get, get up to that goal. Okay. God, the last thing I want to do right now is work out. But it is Craig. I do want to catch up. Oh. Pickle. Here's the question. I guess we have to engage with Craig, right? That being said, this, is, this would be a very out-of-character decision for me. We'll do this. We'll go to the gym. We'll do it. 
Hey, my man, I need a few minutes to wake up, but let's meet in 20. After a few seconds, another text comes in. Sure thing, meet me at the gym. I stretch and my bones creak. I gotta stop falling asleep on the couch. I throw off my blanket and... Hey, wait, I don't remember falling asleep with the blanket. Amanda must have tucked me in after I fell asleep. Bless that child. I reluctantly brush my teeth, throw on the only clothes I own, and that are even kind of gym appropriate, and head out. Now, for a character like mine, who is supposed to be like a nerdy, uh, maybe not nerdy, but like an awkward, not athletic dude, that has got a pretty, he's got the, the athletic body. The neighborhood is quiet and serene this early in the morning. Birds chirp, and the grass is still wet with dew. Surprisingly, the gym is pretty crowded. I spot Craig standing out front, stretching. Of course, he spots me and waves enthusiastically. Hey, bro. Good morning. Hey, good to see you, man. I'm definitely not as pumped up as he is. Maybe I should have had some coffee before I left. Oh. You ready to kick some butt? Yeah, you know what, though? Uh, maybe don't post the link in this chat. Uh, yeah, you'll have bots. Please, you know, please don't post those links back in here. <laughs> uh, yeah, one second. Anyways. <laughs> Is there a way for me to just delete a single message without timing you up? Without timing you out? Eh, whatever. Whatever. Oh, it's okay. I just, uh... <laughs> I don't know. Like, if, if... Those links are probably, like, freaking viruses or something. I, I don't really want... Can I time you out for, like, a, a second? How does that work? Oh, okay. Time out. That gamer guy. You do one five for one second. And we'll say the reason is for fun. Boom. Deleted. Okay. You should be back. Sorry, I just I just wanted to clear that out of chat just in case it's actually like a virus or something. <laughs> so, yeah, I. <laughs> yeah uh on youtube and listen on my youtube like my vod backup channel i've gotten about 10 comments and every single one of them has been bot bots posting those links and we had one of them in today in chat earlier today it's just something that happens just ban them and they'll be gone uh but yeah no reason to apologize but yeah don't post them <laughs> okay uh, with your help, I am. I get the feeling that this is going to be less of me kicking butt and more of the gym kicking my butt. But I can handle it with you here. Dude, bro, that means a lot. Bro. We head to the gym, and I'm, I'm immediately intimidated. All these people... Looked like they could break me in half, and it seems like Craig is friends with all of them. <sighs> so, I like Craig's look. And, you know, he seems like a good guy, but he's very, very dude bro. Hmm. He high fives and finger guns all the cool jocks in the room. They look like they could and would steal my lunch money to spend on protein shakes. Oh. Come on, bud, let's warm up. We head over to the treadmills and start walking. So currently, my top three are... My top three are currently... Um, Edgy Dad is number one. Barista Dad is number two. And um, Children of the Corn Dad is number three, currently. Those are my, my, my rankings. We head over to the treadmills and start walking. Okay, I can walk. Walking is good. This is a decent place to be walking. So I know we're on treadmills. Yes. And those over there are ellipticals. Very good. 
But it's all this other stuff. Craig laughs. They might look a little scary, but I guarantee that all of them serve a specific purpose for building muscle mass. I watch as a dude in a muscle T flexes. A muscle I didn't know existed on a machine that I... That I think was once used to process grain into flour. What's that? Why is that guy doing that to hide himself? It's a, it's a good question, bro. What do you think he's doing? Uh, we're going to say he is praying to some sort of pain god. It's uh, like a religious self-flagellation meant to atone for one's sins. You're actually not far off from the truth. Oh no, Craig is turning up the speed. I better do the same. How, uh, how long have you been doing the buff thing? Hmm. Couple years. And what do you do when you're not dadding or working or buffing? Mm -hmm. Oh, I coach my twin softball team. That still counts as both dadding and buffing. Nice. Ah, I keep busy. What do you do for fun? Uh... Uh, I don't like any of these answers. I'll say I check out my hot bod. I spend most of my time in front of the mirror admiring my Adonis-like figure that worked so hard to sculpt. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. By the way, I, by that I mean lay horizontal and watch bad television. We're jogging now. Oh god, we're jogging now. I look over to Craig who hasn't even broken his sweat. How is he doing this so effortlessly? I'm dying. I can feel my life force draining through every orifice of my body. Hey, remember when my fish died in college? No, I don't like this story. Oh God. Oh my God. Is he really bumping up the speed again? I guess I better do it too. Oh, this is fast. This is very fast. And we were at that party and you vowed to make me feel better. You tell me to create a distraction, so of course I do a sick keg stand and I get everyone cheering. And then I try to steal a fish from a fish tank at the party of my with my bare hands like an idiot. Bro. And then you drop the fish and it is flopping around and you panic. So you run up to my post keg stand. You run up to me post keg stand with a dying dirty fish in your hand that you scooped up off the ground and you're yelling at me that we have to leave. So we're running out of the frat party with a fish, trying to give it water to uh, give it. Oh, we're trying to give it melt to melt resuscitation. We get him home and give him, uh, get him into a bowl of water. And the, but the prognosis was grim. The next day he's alive and well. Never did catch the great fish thieves of Grand Ridge University. And they never will. I shoot off the end of the treadmill and crash into the wall. Jesus, that hurts. Dude, bro, are you okay? Craig offers me a hand. He looks me over for injuries. I'm fantastic. I managed to stand up and rub my back. Doesn't hurt now, but I'm sure it will later. Oh, you haven't pushed yourself like that. You don't have to push yourself like that. Always know your limits. Well, I think I might call out our gym adventure. Well, I think I might call our gym adventure here. You sure? Yeah. All right. Well, here, I brought you this. Craig hands me a shaker bottle full of thick green liquid. I stare at it with what must be apparent distaste. The protein shake, bro. Better be matcha. Oh, thank you. He wants me to drink it. Oh, boy. Here it goes. I like the drums. except for right now. Okay. I take a small sip. It's actually delicious. Wow, this is really good. Hey. And good for you. It's my special recipe. I'm pretty proud of it. Let me know if you ever want to work out again. Maybe we can try running around the neighborhood if treadmills aren't your speed. No pun intended, bro. Good one. Well, I'm going to put some ice on this. E everything. I'll see you around. I leave the gym, feeling ashamed. 
Craig used to order delivery from the pizza place across the street from our dorm, and now he can run circles around me, literally. Man, I really gotta work on this dad bod. I get home and lie down on the couch. It hurts to move. Oh my god, I'm so old. Oh no, I must have fallen asleep. What time is it? Shoot, it's 3.55. I'm supposed to be at Amanda's school in five minutes. I frantically put on some clean clothes, apply a generous amount of deodorant, and run to the school. I arrive at Amanda's school and check in at the front desk. They give me a bright orange visitor sticker and send me on my way. I'm barely awake and feeling pretty haggard, but hopefully no one will notice. I check my watch and am revealed... Blah, and I'm relieved to see that I'm only two minutes late. Wait, was it room 103 or 108? I spot a youth standing at his locker and approach him for help. Excuse me, do you know where Mr. Vega's classroom is? The youth turns around and looks me up and down with heavily lined eyes. <sighs> Come on, kid, I'm late for a meeting. Mr. Who? Mr. Vega. I don't know, have you tried the exit? Okay, wise guy, are you going to help me or not? Fine, up those stairs and to the left. Can't miss him. I head up the stairs and walk around, unable to find Mr. Vega's class. After a couple of minutes of searching, I head back downstairs. That punk youth sent me on a wild goose chase. I get back to where that low-rent Gerald Way is standing. Uh, fully ready. I give him a piece of my mind. When suddenly his head pops out of the classroom next to his locker. Oh. Lucian, don't you have a third period to get to? Wow, third period is at 4 p.m.? <sighs> Fine, Mr. Vega. Mm -hmm. Wow. Now I'm officially 10 minutes late. I glare at him as he walks away. You're not cool. Mm -hmm. You must be Archie. The period's almost over. Would you mind walking? Uh, would you mind waiting in the back? Huh. Mr. Vega leads me in and I take a seat in one of the comically small student desks in the back. I might get stuck in this. Mm -hmm. All right, where were we? Now, who can tell me about the unreliability of the narrator in J.D. Salinger's Catcher in the Rye? Hmm. Yes, Colin? Colin stands up and does the thing where he blows into the crook of his elbow to make a fart noise. Ah. The whole class erupts in laughter. Um. All right, everybody. Very funny. Colin, please sit down. Mm -hmm. Now, Holden Caulfield is an unreliable narrator in the sense that the bell for the period rings. All of the students immediately get up and make a break for the door. Yes. Remember to do the reading and answer the response questions on page 194 of your textbook. Nobody's mm. listening. Or not, I guess. Mr. Vega turns to me and sighs. Mm. Middle schoolers, right? Don't you teach high schoolers? <sighs> Both, you know. Budget cuts. Right. Oh. Thanks so much for coming in. No problem, Mr. Vega. Oh. Please call me Hugo. Uh. I don't normally do these impromptu parent-teacher meetings, but I'm sure you know Amanda's a very bright student and I'm concerned about her recent behavior. What's going on? Oh, no. Amanda's never been the most engaged student, but I know she cares. Recently, though, she's been falling behind, not completing assignments and has been doing rather poorly on tests. I'd normally chalk it up to senior senioritis, but this is strange. I thought Amanda always shared everything with me. It doesn't cross my mind that something might be wrong. Hmm. I just wanted to ask if everything is okay at home. Well, we just moved recently, but it was only the other side of town and Amanda was more excited about it than I was. Hmm. See if you can talk to her about it. I know she values you uh, a great deal and would appreciate your guidance if she keeps heading down this road. Yeah. You know how important art school is to her. I would hate to see her miss out on a scholarship, on scholarship money that she clearly deserves. I'll make sure to talk to Amanda. Thanks for letting me know, Hugo. Ah. Anytime. On the way out, I stop, thinking for a moment. I turn to Hugo. Hey, Hugo. Ah. Yes. You ever catch that, Rye? Oh. Yes. I leave the classroom and make my way out of the school. I'm still a little bit in shock that Amanda was able to hide this so well from me. 
She's always been such a force for positivity in my life, especially after we lost her mother. And I must be done with classes for the day by now. I'm sure she would appreciate a ride home. Maybe I can talk to her about what's going on. Huh. I pull up to the carpool and Amanda hops in the passenger seat. So, did you have fun gossiping about me? Mr. Vega and I just actually just gossiped about our celebrity crushes. So you talked about M Mario Batali the whole time? It was a very productive meeting. I'm pretty hungry. Can we grab some dinner? Sure thing. Ah. Does that sound good to you? Going to the mall food court? Yeah, sure. Why the mall? Geez, can't a dad take his daughter to the mall? Will you buy me things? I will buy you a thing. Singular. Sounds like a deal to me. We drive in silence for a short while. Amanda plays a game on her phone. I should say something. You know, sometimes when a kid gets older, they find that they have to keep things hidden from their parents. And that's okay, because sometimes that's what kids do. And that's okay, but also sometimes it's good to have the parents' perspective, because, you know, maybe the parents have also dealt with similar situations. Maybe they're a little cooler than you give them credit for anyway. I mean, me, than you give them credit for anyway. What I'm trying to say is, it's good to share. Love you. Have you been reading my tweets? You have a Twitter? What? N never mind. Look, sweetie. Mr. Vega says you haven't been participating in class, and that you're not turning things in. Oh, I'm fine, Pop. Senioritis and all that. I thought you liked Mr. Vega's class. It's fine. He's fine. We pull up at a stoplight, and I eye Amanda. She's still texting. Just, I want you to know that you can talk to me about anything. Uh-huh. I can tell that whatever it is, she doesn't want me knowing about it. That's frustrating. Uh, I heard Emma R's going to that fancy art school in California. That's exciting. Yep. Are you bummed that you guys aren't going to the same school? Yep. Hmm. Amanda keeps te texting. She stifles a laugh. What's so funny? Uh, it's, uh, I don't think he'd get it. Okay. Who are you texting? Noah. Who's Noah? My friend. Does he go to your school? Hmm. Yep. Do you like Noah? Ah. What? No! Dad! Ugh. Can't believe you would. Aww. Dad. I mean, jeez. Why would you... Ugh. Gross. Sorry, sorry, just... Just asking. Dad, he's just my friend. Guys and girls can be friends. He's my friend. Mm. Okay, okay. Jeez. This is going well. Well, good talk. Love you, kiddo. She leans forward and turns up the radio. I guess that conversation is over. To the mall, then. We arrive at the mall. A big indoor shopping center with a couple of different floors. It's kind of dead, but that doesn't stop a mall security guard from yelling at a group of loitering teens. Let's eat something disgusting for dinner. Yeah. Hell yeah. Language, Missy. Hmm. Heck yeah. Better. Huh? We approach the food court and evaluate our options. There's greasy restaurant after greasy restaurant. My heart burns just looking at the menus. Nobody looks happy to be here. What are you in the mood for? Bread dripped in sugar? Bread with cheese on it? Or do you want me to just inject some fat directly into your bloodstream? I extend my hand to her. The correct answer there is bread with cheese on it. Would you do me the honor of sharing some nachos? Yep, see? She takes my hand with a grin. But make me the happiest, cheesiest girl alive. We order a giant pile of chips and unnatural orange cheese from a very unenthusiastic and possibly stoned teenager. We take a seat at a rickety table and dig in. Nachos are awesome, and I have not had them in probably years. Whoa. These are bad. These are very bad, but also strangely delicious. 
We have to eat through the pain. We enjoy the fluorescent cheesy goodness together until we're all out of nachos. So, something's been bothering me for a while. Can you explain memes to me? <sighs> Which meme? See, I was feeling like this game was very fil like um filthy, like the p the person filthy, not the uh not the adjective. I was feeling it was very filthy themed, but now that the character doesn't know what memes are, I realize we're starting to deviate from filthy's vibe. <sighs> Which meme? All all memes. Oh, she places her hand. She places her head in her hands. Dad, it's complicated. See, memes are inside jokes shared by a bunch of people that get less funny the more people do it. So the problem is that by the time the meme gets to you, Dad, all us youths have already done the joke to death. And what's worse than that is that movies and TV and video games will try to jump on a meme train. And just based on how long it took, how long it takes to make them, the meme will be long dead by the time it comes out. So it just dates it and it isn't funny. So what what are our uh, what are our our channel's memes? We have the um, finding hot chicks in games. Are there any others? Oh oh, obviously the vor. The vor is 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 a is a theme on this channel. <laughs> Space bartender, yeah, yeah. Age, that's a that's one. I was I was thinking when I was putting this game on, I'm like, man, our theme has been finding the hot checks in games, and now we're playing literally the one game that we really know is not going to have any hot checks in it. Oh shit, what up? Aww. Dad, please. Anyway, changing the subject. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm ready for this pickle. Where to now? Want to go to that goth store? Mm -hmm. What? You know, the one that's all black and tries to establish itself as anti-establishment, despite being the exact re representation of the establishment. I... I don't know which store you're talking about. Oh, sorry, one second. Oh gosh, my friend. I I don't. <laughs> Is WCW supposed to be like Woman Woman Crush Wednesday or whatever? I don't know if I can do that, my friend. I'm, I'm. That's uh, a that's a big commitment. It's a big commitment. Do I want to spend one seventh of my life playing dating sims? I don't. I don't know. But I, I definitely. You know what though? I'm definitely down to play more visual novels, and I I own actually a few. The only problem with visual novels though, is. Uh, you really have to do your research to make sure they're not, like, laden with nudity. Uh, like... I think I might own... I think I own the Danganronpa games. I think... I think I might own the Steins Gate games, I'm not sure. I would love to play Chaos Child, but I hear that you need to play Chaos Head first. Chaos Child would be sick. AI Dungeon Dating Simulator. I mean, I would love that, except AI Dungeon Dating Sim, you know where that turns. Yeah. Yeah, I would love to play... I would love to play Chaos Child. That would be awesome. I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure, actually, if I do own all of those, the Steins Gate ones, though, but they're supposed to be awesome. Yeah, AI Dungeon Dating Sim is, it's, to be honest, I actually really, oops, I actually really enjoy doing the AI Dungeon Dating Sim thing. I find it kind of funny to be like, oh, it introduces this character and then you just try to hit on them. But it's also so risky for stream because AI Dungeon so quickly is like, hey, do you want to uh, put all of these objects inside of you now? You're like, what? Whoa, 
I have it on strict filter. <laughs> hey, you, you're interested in some unbirthing now? No! AI dungeon, chill out. I was just I was just drinking coffee with you. Yeah. I don't know about that, pickle. <laughs> That's why anytime things might get romantic, I'm like, every character in this story is at least 19 and the reason I say 19 is so that I have an extra year leeway so that I don't feel creepy about them being 18 I don't know what story you're talking about You know the one where you buy chain wallets and it's basically an assault on the people on what people fought for Oh my god, I'm having trouble reading now You know the one you can buy chain wallets and it's basically an assault on what people fought for so hard against in the punk and hardcore movements of the 70s and 80s Dude, you gotta be more specific. The one you threw up? The one you threw up in that one time? That's that's true, Koju. Yeah, I, I wonder why all the characters in AI Dungeon keep calling me Papa. Oh, that one. Hey. Amanda runs into a store with me trailing behind her. She makes a beeline for the back. There it is. You can still see the outline, kinda. I'm so proud. Speech. Amanda. Yeah. Speech, 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 speech. All right, I'll do it if you stop chanting. Amanda stops immediately. I clear my throat. <clears throat> Thank you all for joining us here today to commemorate an historic moment that would forever shape history. On a day very much like today, some five years ago, our very own Amanda Ann Selleck had too much blue raspberry slushy on an outing to the mall. After begging her father to take her to Dead Goth and Beyond to buy rainbow suspenders, and she proceeded to throw up all over the, a display of My Chemical Romance merchandise. Her loving father then had to pay for said merchandise, which to this day remains among our possessions. Thank you. Thank you. Amanda is moved. She begins clapping. Slow at first, then faster and more vigorously. Several other patrons turn their heads. One of them also starts clapping. I bow my head. Yeah. Oh, hey, chain wallets. While Amanda busies herself looking at my at band t-shirts, I try to find something of interest to myself. Not much for a dad to look at in Dead Goth and Beyond. Let's look at band t-shirts. Barely know of any of these bands. Cannibal Bone Party? Doesn't seem like uh, music I enjoy, but they must be really happy that a retail outlet is carrying their merchandise. I hope their parents are really proud of them. Look, this is very important to me. I, oh, Jesus. I overhear a stifled argument over at the cash register. An older gentleman is carrying a garment and showing it to a bored-looking cashier with pink hair. Oh my god, this, this is this is a vampire. We're still meeting characters. I wonder if we're like super early in the game. I can see that. Don't know what to tell you. I just work here. Oh my. Listen, when I bought this online, the website said the blouse was Victorian inspired. However, when I received it, it clearly held the trademark of Edwardian design. Dressage. Do you want a coupon? I can give you a coupon. Will you leave if I give you a coupon? Is... Is there a manager present? People have to know what they're buying. I am the manager. Huh. I see. Well... Would seem that I have outstayed my welcome. Good day, shopkeep. Your superiors will receive a strongly worded letter by post. This guy is awful. <laughs> Whatever, dude. This guy's terrible. The man whirls around and storms out. His literal coattails tranging, trailing behind him. I can't tell if they are Victorian inspired or Edwardian in nature. Listen. I feel like he's a playthrough 2 kind of guy. I feel like he's a playthrough 2 kind of guy. 
Amanda trots up to me with a t-shirt in her hand. Oh boy, here it comes. Hey, Deadtron 5000! Yes, I'll buy it for you. Oh, that was easy, thanks. At least, it's only this time. Amanda plops the shirt on the counter and grins at the cashier. I love your hair. The cashier says nothing and rings Amanda up. Radiating hatred. I hand her a 20. So, what was that guy's deal? The cashier rolls her eyes. Oh, I, I was totally um, reading her like a like a stoner dude. The cashier rolls her eyes so hard. I'm worried she'll pull something. That's Damien. He's he's in here all the time. He's obsessed with obsessed with Victorian fashion or whatever. She hands Amanda her bag, and it's clear the conversation is over. We make our way out of the store and head home to get some rest. Amanda and I sit on the couch trying to find something to watch over bowl watch over bowls of ice cream. Oh cool. Long haul paranormal ice road ice road ghost truckers is on. Your favorite, right? Oh hell yes. They have to make it over the Canadian tundra before the ice road melts and, and they're also hunted by ghosts. Or they're also hunting ghosts. Huh. Also, the trucks are haunted. This is an episode I've already seen, but it's one of the best. Callum and Flint Dogbone. The twin brother truck driving... Wait. The twin brother truck driving and ghost hunting duo find themselves in their greatest peril yet. Oh no. The ghosts have got... I've got control of the truck. I can't steer on... On them there are damn ice roads. Let me use the EVP meter and try to communicate with the spirits. Flint! We're about to die! Ah, almost got it. If you listen carefully, it sounds like it's saying you're going to die. Hmm. That's because we're about to die, you. This is art. The episode ends and Amanda excuses herself to go and start arguments on the internet. I stay up a little longer, curious about the exploits of Callum and Flint Dogbo. After their disastrous ice road accident. Afterwards, I crawl into bed and get a good night's sleep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we did. Just, uh... We, 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 however, did, um... Ice Road Gun Ghost Paranormal Hunter. Right? Morning, sleepyhead. Five more minutes. You have never, ever let me have five more minutes. So get up. Fine. Didn't my character sass Amanda earlier for um, sleeping in too much? Meanwhile, every single morning, my character has had to get woken up by someone else. Granted, one of them was at 6 a.m. I'm just saying. We have cereal for breakfast and spend the morning putting to get- Oh my god. Doesn't this song sound like it's straight out of Terraria? This- this totally sounds like the Terraria song. Anyway, sorry, I got so distracted there. We have cereal for breakfast and spend the morning putting together furniture. Amanda is much better at interpreting the tiny manuals. We're able to put together a few shelves and one desk, and I'm pretty sure it was supposed to be a bookcase. I actually- I almost- it's so similar, I kind of wonder if it is the Terraria song. Like, it's that close. Anyways. This game, by the way, had um, copywritten, had um, DMCA material, but they have they have a streamer mode that I put it on. So it, all of the um, all of the copyrightable material or all of the DMCA able whatever material is taken out of this playthrough. Okay, I don't even remember if I read this because I got distracted. We have cereal for breakfast and spend the morning putting together furniture. Amanda is much better at interpreting the tiny manuals. We're able to put together a few shelves and one desk. I'm pretty sure it was supposed to be a bookcase. So, are you excited for the cookout today? Oh, yeah. Excited to beef up my grilling skills. I'll see this as a learning opportunity. If I can snake some hot grill tips, I think we can consider it a success. Huh? You don't want to meet some of the people in the neighborhood? I'll probably end up standing uncomfortably in the corner with a plate of food and 
hope that nobody else talks to me. Dad, you're a beautiful work in progress. We will get that butterfly to emerge from the cocoon. The social butterfly. Well, we better start getting ready. We definitely don't want to be late. What? No, we have to be fashionably late. Uh, who shows up to a cookout on time? So, brief story time. I have a friend. This friend, she is uh, like a fun, hippie, like karaoke-loving girl. Anyways, the one time she was like, I'm going to be fashionably late to this party and intentionally left to arrive, you know, so she could show up 20 minutes late. She arrives and realizes she got the wrong time and she was 40 minutes early. So she called me up and was like, hey, Curly, I need your help. I'm like, what's wrong? She's like, I'm here 40 minutes early instead of 20 minutes late. I need to walk away from this place for an hour so I can arrive fashionably late. And so she waited away from the event until after it started for like 20 minutes so that she could show up fashionably late. And there's something about intentionally being fashionably late to the point where you wait in a random place out of sight so that you can be late. That seemed like the least fashionably late thing ever. Okay. I just, I, I felt like I should share that story. You know what? We're going early, just because he said that. I head out the door and Amanda reluctantly follows. We walk across the street to Joseph's house with store brought with a store-bought veggie plate. I'm a terrible cook if it doesn't involve a grill. <laughs> I guess we're all... <laughs> I guess we're not as early as we thought we were. Joseph's backyard is already packed with people and the smell of hot dogs wafts through the air. Uh, small children run through the sprinkler and adults chat in small clusters. Is Joseph the... Uh, which guy is Joseph? Is Joseph the church guy? I set our veggie plate down on the table next to the other two veggie plates. Huh. Hey, there's Joseph. I wave to get his attention. The moment he sees us, he jogs over. Arms open wide. Oh. Yes, it is. Welcome. I'm so glad you two are here. You brought veggies. Hmm. Let me introduce you to my family, kids. Or, let me introduce you to my family. Kids, come over here. This is Chris and my eldest. Hi. <laughs> this is Christian and Christy. They're twins. Yes, Pickle, I'm getting a little bit uncomfortable by this guy. Huh? They stare creepily and say nothing. The fact that he had to put Christ in every single one of his kids' names, except maybe the final one. Oh. Is it Clyde? Is it going to be Clyde? Oh, Krish. Then, of course, there's our youngest. Krish. Wait, where's Krish? Maybe Mary put him in his crib. Oh my god, and his wife, or his name is Mary. Oh no! It's, and by the way, my, when I said oh no there, I wasn't reading. I was looking at her and I recognized her and I said oh no. Oh no, it's the woman from the bar the other night. What is she doing here? <laughs> oh, and how could I forget my lovely wife, Mary? Mm. Joseph pecks her on the cheek. She smiles. My god, everything instantly makes so much more sense. Ah, Mary, sweetheart. Did you put Krish to bed? Mm. I'll have to go look for him. Oh. What? You'll have to... Joseph takes a moment and regains his composure. Oh. Mary, this is our new neighbor, Archie, and his daughter, Amanda. Mm. I'd shake your hand, but I have a glass of wine that I need to tend to. I love her. Nice to uh, meet you, Mary, for the first time. Charmed. Well, I have to go over there now. Mary leaves. Oh, God, this is so awkward. I wonder if Joseph knows. I wonder if Mary knows that Joseph knows. I wonder if Joseph knows that Mary knows that I know. It takes all my energy not to run away from the barbecue and start fresh in a new city. Ha, ha, ha. My wife has a wonderful sense of humor, but please, you two, enjoy the barbecue. All the guys are really excited to meet you. I'm glad I did not buy her a drink now. I'm glad I, just, I opted out of that. Amanda and I mill around and try some try some of the food spread out on the table. I pick, up, pick up some deviled eggs. 
Amanda grabs a small paper plate and immediately begins piling it up with baked goods. Ugh, I don't want to have to make friends. Come on, Dad. Where are you going to party with when I get off, go off to school? But I don't want to have to do the pleasantries. Dad, uh, they're going to talk about weather. Go, do it, make a friend. How could I possibly abandon my only child at a social function? That's bad parenting. This, this plate of cookies is my new dad. Bye. Amanda shoves me into the center of the yard. Well, here goes nothing. I look around uh, the party and I'm surprised to see some familiar faces. Isn't that the barista from the coffee spoon? That's Matt. Didn't I meet the other guy at the bar? That's Robert. Didn't that guy throw a frisbee at my head? I forget his name because I, I didn't like him. Isn't that the guy who was throwing a fit at Dead Gotham Beyond? I forget his name. Samuel or something? I don't know. Isn't that Amanda's teacher? Do Mr. Vega? Hugo Vega? Hey, I know Craig. But wait a second. All these people live in our cul-de-sac? That can't be right. I'd better investigate. I'm going to talk to... I talk to Robert. Oh, Brian, right. I talk to Robert and Brian. I glance across the yard and notice Robert and Brian chatting over some drinks. Man, I don't think I want to deal with this being one up by Brian or whatever happened with Robert last night. Oh no, they caught me staring. Oh no, Brian's waving me over. Shoot. I flash a smile and walk over to them. Hey, guys. Archie, how the heck are you? Settling in into the neighborhood all right? Oh, you betcha. Got the living room in order, at least. That's great to hear. I've been doing some living room work as well. Finally got the 50-inch in there. The game looks great in high def. Oh, boy. Archie, have you met Robert yet? Yeah, we've met. Robert regards me over his whiskey. Good seeing you again. We were just talking about my most recent camping trip. Spent the night out in the woods with Daisy and Maxwell. She's definitely an outdoorsy one. She even caught her first fish. Oh. It's good to see you taking your daughter out like that. I bet she loved it. Oh. It's great. It, and it's great that she loves the outdoors. Mine loves being inside. Mm -hmm. Brian raises his eyebrows at me. Being inside making art. She won a local competition for that art. Yep. Mm -hmm. I put it on too strongly. Robert stares at me blankly for a second. Anyway, I haven't gone camping in years. Not since the last time. Oh, did his, like, wife or husband die while camping? Same here. Well, things change once you have kit. Wait, what happened the last time? Robert takes a long sip of whiskey. Well, old Johnny Boy and me were out in the back country. Johnny Boy's a strong kid. Met him in my army days. Comes from Kansas. Build him tougher out there. Anyways, things go south pretty quick. Johnny boy breaks his ankle when the rope bridge snaps. You can see the bone popping out through the skin. Johnny boy's screaming now, crying for his mama, losing blood. We're two days out from the next living soul, and here I am with my dear friend bleeding out in front of me. I'm able to dress the room, but now I got a fireman carry a six foot, 180 pound man over some of the toughest terrain I've ever been in. I won't lie to you. There were moments during those two days when I thought about leaving old Johnny Boy. But you build a bond with bond with your brothers in arms. And that bond never breaks. I got that boy back to civilization, but I lost some of me out there. I guess that's camping for you. Brian and I stare in disbelief. Robert takes another long sip of whiskey. I'm just kidding. My friend John and I went inner tubing down the river and he lost a flip-flop. It's that kid. Brian and I laugh nervously. I'm sorry. I'm going. I'm going. I'm going full Robert. <sighs> or am I kidding? Brian and I tense up again. I'm kidding. Uh. Uh. Amanda and Daisy barrel up to us, laughing. And Daisy is holding a paper plate in front of her, like a steering wheel. Got to get off this haunted truck. <laughs> oh no! The ghost locked the doors. Yeah. Quick! Hit an emergency escape button. The trucks don't have emergency escape buttons. Uh. Ugh, then. Hit the brake, I guess. And then... 
We'll get out of we'll get out of the truck. The imaginary truck. Anyway, we're safe from the ghosts, but how will we ever survive this Arctic tundra? Daisy, you must have to you might have to eat me. Are you prepared to do that? I'm prepared to do anything to survive. This feels like a game I would play with Devil Zorko. Huh. That's cold blooded. Like that. Although I'm not sure I have the materials required to cook you properly. No, that reminds me of the last time I went skiing. Robert, wait a second. Are you guys playing long haul ice road paranormal ghost truckers? Yeah, Amanda and I love that show. It's the best, especially that episode where Callum hides Flint's keys and Flint retaliates by breaking an ancient cursed urn and sending the spirit after him. Yeah, it's such quality reality television. I don't watch a whole lot of television, but I do enjoy that show. That and war documentaries. All right, Daisy. I found a couple of bugs. They're going to make a great meal. A lot of protein. Uh, going to keep us from starving out here in the harsh, icy wasteland. But there's a whole table of food right over the... Daisy, it's a game. We're playing pretend. It's what kids do. Live a little. Amanda gives Daisy a handful of gummy worms from the snack table. They eat them with mock disgust. Let's go find kindling for a fire. Right. Okay. Yeah. Not an actual fire. Because we're playing pretend? Hey. Now you're getting it. Daisy and Amanda run off. <laughs> Man, I've never seen her get along with anyone so quickly. I guess Amanda just sort of has a way with kids. Hey. It's kind of amazing. Daisy doesn't really get along with kids her age. Hmm. It's nice that she's not trying to one-up me... It's nice that he's not trying to one-up me this time. Maybe we can have a regular friendship after all. Really? Aww. She just keeps to herself. Her teachers say she spends every recess in the library. I think other kids are intimidated by her intelligence. There it is. I wouldn't worry about it too much. Amanda was shy at Daisy's age, too. But they used to, she used to have a habit of crawling under tables and crying every time we took her to a restaurant. She bit people, too. <laughs> <laughs> Kids, right? Gotta love him. You're required to, by law. I hear that. Well, since they're getting along so well, maybe we should try to put together a little play date for them. They do seem to get along well, but the thought of continually hearing about all of Brian's accomplishments is rough. Yeah, that'd be nice. Well, I don't want to take up too much of your time. Go meet some of the other fellas. Hmm... We got it. We got to meet Damien. It's about Joseph chatting with a guy from the dead golf and beyond by the grill. I wonder what they're talking about. I walk over to them. So I'm curious. Can you walk me through why you had your house painted black? Where do I start? The house stays warmer in the winter. It provides an artistic contrast to the rest of the neighborhood. And it complements the crimson interior perfectly. It's definitely an uh, interesting choice. Ah. Thank you. I'm very proud of my abode. <laughs> Archie I was just having a conversation with Damien here about his uh, aesthetic design choices. Damien regards me up and down with a warm but critical eye. Ah. How do you? How do you do? I don't believe I've had the pleasure. I think I saw you in Dead Golf and Beyond the other day. Damien's face turns bright red. I uh, must apologize for my behavior on that day. You see, I take the goth lifestyle very seriously, and to be caught in a ruse by such a corporation as Dead Goth and Beyond was profoundly frustrating indeed. I hope you know that while my anger may have been justified, there was no such way for a gentleman to act. It's okay, man. Do tell me about yourself. Are you new to the area? Yes, my daughter and I just moved in the other day. She was the one I took to Dead Golf and Beyond. Very good taste on her part. Does she partake in the golf lifestyle? I th I think... Oops, sorry, one second. I think for a second. I look over to Amanda, who's hanging out with some of the older kids in the neighborhood. <sighs> hey, Amanda, would you consider yourself goth? Amanda yells back. 
I wouldn't necessarily try to fall under any one specific label, but I guess if I had to choose, I would more describe myself as twee hipster with some normcore leanings. Bats are cool, though. Ah, ah pity. Oh. Are you enjoying the party so far? Oh, definitely. Thanks so much for putting this on. It's nice to be in a cul-de-sac where everybody is so friendly and welcoming. Amanda walks up to the conversation. I also like The Lost Boys a lot. Really good movie. Does that count as goth? I've never seen that. Though it would, that it would, my dear. I don't believe we've had the pleasure of meeting. Damien Bloodmarch at your service. Damien finishes the sentence with a flourish and a bow, producing a single rose and offering it to Amanda. Ah. Amanda blushes and returns the gesture with a curtsy. Ah. My. You, do you... My, do you know how to treat a lady? Huh? Okay. Hello, Amanda. Seemingly out of nowhere, Joseph's twin kids appear. Uh, are they speaking in unison? What? Hey. Won't you come and play with us? Uh. Come play with us. Forever. <laughs> Guys, enough of the creepy twin shtick. We've talked about this. Christian and Christy slowly back away. Where do you think they got that from? Mary pops into the conversation, wine in hand. Yeah. I, uh, don't know. Mary takes a long sip of wine. Oh my God. I think I might have taped over a VeggieTales VHS with The Shining. Who knows? Takes another sip of her wine. It's Krish. Oh. Isn't he with you? Mm. You had him a moment oh. ago. He's probably stuffing dirt in his mouth. He'll be all right. Tallers are pretty resilient. Mary tips her glass to me. Mm. My first time in a rodeo. My fourth. Give it a rest, buddy. I squeeze four little... Sweetheart, could you do me a favor and please find Krish? That would be great. Mm. That sure is fine. <laughs> Mary. Mm. <laughs> Jeez. Mary finishes her wine and wanders off. I feel like this dude is a little bit more concerned about, uh, about his wife embarrassing him than he is about the kid. Dad, can we go now? Oh, it's this dude. Hmm. Ah, Lucian, have I introduced you to Archie yet? Hey, it's that punk from Amanda school. I remember you. Whatever. There's no way for a young man to speak to his elders. Be polite. Lucian bows. Whatever, sir. Lucian bows again. Mr. Christensen. May I have a veggie burger, sir? <laughs> Coming right up, bud. Are you a vegetarian? Yep. Make that two veggie burgers. You know that some people in the Victorian era were vegetarians. They described carniv carnivorous people as blood lappers. Dad. That's really interesting, Damien. Joseph turns to the grill. Just a hint of tattoos peek out from underneath his sleeve. I can't believe I didn't notice it before. Looks like the bottom of an anchor. Whoa, is that a tattoo? Hey. <laughs> yep. I wasn't always a youth pastor, you know. That's so cool. Want to see mine? Oh my. What? Lucian pulls some back some rubber bracelets, revealing a lopsided 666 in black ink. My buddy gave me a stick and poke tattoo last week. I think it's healed up pretty good. Lucian. We'll talk about this later. <laughs> That's pretty cool. What's the significance of the tattoo? I don't know. I just thought it looked sick. Well, in my opinion, the only reason you need to get a tattoo is just because you want one. Careful, though. That number carries weight. Man, Joseph is way cool, a way cooler youth pastor than I thought. I just figured youth pastors pop out of the womb with a Bible. I wonder what he did before preaching. Hmm. Talk to Matt, Hugo, and Craig. Matt and Hugo seem to be embroiled in an intense discussion. Craig looks on and smiling politely. I walk over to say hello. Well, 
I don't think it's fair to try to compare two art movements like that. Periods in art only exist because they're a unique byproduct of the social and political climate of the time and place. And to try to say something like, say, the Rococo period, and compare it to postmodernism in America, you're completely disregarding the context in which a work of art is created. Matt and Hugo seem to be so busy with talking that they don't notice me. Craig leans in. Dude, I have no idea what's happening. Uh, uh what are we gonna do? Gonna do, what are we gonna do? What are we gonna do? We listen in? Hmm. Let's listen in, I guess. Hmm. That kind of comparison just eliminates the reason art movements are so important in the first place. Hmm. You're not wrong, but I think there's no harm in comparing one work of art to another. You could definitely say one painting is better than another if you're evaluating it from technical skill or, or a purely formalist standpoint. If I showed you a Matisse and then something by the Dutch Masters, which one would you say shows more technical prowess? I'm so lost right now. I shoot a worried glance over to Craig, who returns I don't it. Oh, well, sure, you could say that the Dutch Masters were technically more skilled, but I would argue that while the Dutch Masters were better painters, Matisse had better paintings overall. Ah. Hmm. Well, that's pretty subjective. How do you mean? Uh, well, the painting of the guy with the apple in front of his face is pretty nice. Matisse rocks. Oh. That's, uh, I don't know how to pronounce this name. Magritte? Right, art. Sorry. You're fine, dude. <sighs> We're just discussing the importance of context when talking about artwork. Listen, all I ask was if you liked Van Gogh or Picasso better. Hmm. Hugo throws up his hands in frustration. But they represent two completely different art movements. How could I possibly choose between the thick, creamy impasto of post-impressionism or the abstractionist beauty of cubism? I don't think I like Hugo. I don't, I don't think I'm into it. Man, that's all way above my head. Me too. Hey. It's all good, man. The cool thing about art is that we all perceive it differently. A single piece could have a totally different effect on each person that looks at it. That's awesome. Oh. Just one minute about that. Hugo, please. Hey. Sorry, sorry. I, I just get really fired up about art stuff. Archie, how are you liking the neighborhood? Pretty nice. Everybody's been super friendly. Seems like your daughter is fitting in just fine. Matt points across the yard to where Amanda, Daisy, and another girl are playing. They're all sitting cross-legged in the grass and picking weeds and uh, weaving them into little flower crowns. It's pretty adorable. The girl, uh, the girl I don't recognize jogs over to us. Okay, so what are my current rankings? Robert. Um, edgy, edgy boy is number one. Number two is Matt, the barista. Barista. Number three is going to be... Mm. Number three might be... The, uh... You know what? We'll say Damien. Or, and then after that, we're going to say... I like the... Uh, the pastor guy. Uh... And then on the bottom of the list, we're going to say, then we're going to say Craig. And then we're going to say, hmm, Brian and then Hugo, maybe. Or Hugo and then Brian. Hmm. It's important that we, we rank all of these people based on how we want to date them. Yeah, what, what, what's your list? What's your list? I know that you. I know that you strongly disagree with my the pastor being up at number three or four, but I mean, also Damien sucks. Yeah, yeah, Damien sucks. He's he's for sure at the bottom, but Damien sucks in an entertaining way that makes me want to bump him up higher. 
but yeah, he's he's clearly awful. Yeah, pa the pastor is clearly going to have some shit. Like, his wife is clearly an alcoholic. They both seem kind of neglectful of the kids. Um, the kids are very uh, something. You know, so there, there's something going on. But I feel like I feel like we have number one and two has got to be. Yeah, Robert number one. Um, and, uh, Matt number two. They're both good. You know what? If I'm being fair... Okay, if we're doing, like, a real ranking, Brian's okay. He's just a little annoying. And Craig is okay. I'm just not super into the, like, dude bro thing. But I, I would, I would, realistically, I would put them both in the medium tier. The bad tier, I would put, thus far, I would put Hugo and, uh, Damien. Uh, I, I'm, I bet you Hugo will redeem himself, but I think I would get so annoyed in real life. Being just the like, you don't interpret art like how I do. Oh, I just can't with you right now. Everything has to be interpreted this way. Oh, you can't compare things at all. Everything is subjective, but subjective in a way that I approve of. I'm just like, ah, oh, chill out, dude. Uh, Okay. Matt points out across the yard where Amanda, Daisy, and another young girl are playing. They are all sitting cross-legged in the grass, picking weeds and waving them at little flower crowns. It's pretty adorable. The girl I don't recognize jogs over to us. What is it, sweetheart? It's a flower crown. I thought you'd look cute in it. But we have to say that Craig... Oh, oh god. Oh yeah, I know. Hey, listen, I went to music school. So, trust me. The amount of talks I've had about subjectivity, just like, it would make e e everyone cringe. It's a flower crown. I thought you'd look cute in it. Hey, yeah. Well, there's only one way to find out. Matt takes the flower crown and places it on top of his head. Yeah. Yeah, I, I would say philosophy and music are a bit different because the at least the thing that's good with music is music you have a lot of especially in university with music you have a lot of people that are like, oh, you listen to that band. That band is so not good. If you actually had taste in music, you would listen to this band. And you have a lot of that. But then as you get a little bit older, you just realize, you know what? Maybe I'm not gonna hang out with those people, and maybe I'm gonna hang out with the people that are just like Oh yeah, you listen to that jazz, and then you listen to that country, and you listen to that Katy Perry song, and I'm f I'm cool with all of that. And you just start being like, you know what? It's cool to like things. You don't need you don't need to uh, pass a test based on taste. It's okay. <laughs> but yeah, philosophy philosophy is bad because you get the thing where every conversation can then it boils down to like the solipsism. Like people are like you get in an argument with anyone they're like well how can you even know anything and then people are like well what is knowing even and then it's like okay we've now gone back to step one and we can't actually discuss the thing that we're discussing and we and you acting like we're making progress let's just make some assumptions and get past this yeah <laughs> matt takes the flower crown and places it on top of his head am i cool now <laughs> I was listening. God, what was I listening to? I was listening to a conversation between. I'm trying to remember who it was. It was a. Uh... Ah, whatever. I don't. Remember. Yeah, exactly. I was listening to a podcast once. Ah, oh, whatever. I'm. I'm gonna move past this. Am I cool now? The girl stares at him, thinking it over. Mm, nope. You're slightly less uncool than you were before you put it on. Hey. Hey, <laughs> hey Archie. This is my daughter. Hello. I'm Car Carmen Sita. Oh, is that like little, little Carmen? Ah. Mm. Amanda comes 
comes over with Daisy in tow. Dad, I'm looking. Look, I'm making friends. Are you making friends? You better be making friends. Why did she not approach this in any of the previous conversations? Yeah, actually, Amanda, you remember the cool barista from the coffee shop and my old college friend and uh, your teacher. Huh? Oh, hi, Mr. Vega. I didn't realize we were neighbors. Ah. Yep. You still going to get me that overdue term paper? <laughs> Great seeing you. Amanda finger guns her way out of the conversation like a champ. She learned the finger guns move from me, and I'm very proud. Hmm? She's definitely a charmer. Speaking of which, where did my son go? Huh? Oh, is her son going to be Noah? Hugo looks around the party and finally spots him because his eyes go wide. Hey, place your bets. Is his son Noah? Although Noah, Noah totally sounds like it would have been the name of um, one of Joseph's children if Joseph's children didn't all have Christ in the name. Sweet Manchego. Ernest. Ernest Hemingway Vega, are you smoking? Oh my god, I hate Hugo. Hmm. Ernest is holding a lit cigarette. Nope. I see Ernest across across the way. He casually takes a long drag out of a cigarette and then flicks it into the gutter. Oh. Unbelievable, excuse me. Hugo marches over to Ernest, and I turn my attention to Matt and Craig. Kids, right? Man, I do not envy Hugo. The last barbecue we had, Ernest tried to shove a sparkler down Joseph's pants. Nearly burned down half the yard. And the barbecue we had before that, he actually burned down half the yard. Then it spread onto my lawn and burned down half my yard too. <sighs> Hugo, walks, Hugo walks back over to us, practically dragging Ernest behind him. I like Ernest. I'm sure I'm going to hate Ernest, but I really like Ernest's character design. I think he, his character is a uh, <laughs> with like the like underbite or whatever and just like the like do I have to be here? Oh. Hey everybody, sorry about that. Archie, this is my son Ernest. Hello. Ernest looks away, sulking. His hands shoved deep into his pockets. Hugo nudges him impatiently. Hey. Nice to meet you, Ernest. What grade are you in? Does it matter? Oh. Ernest. Okay, okay, I'm in eighth grade. God, are you happy now? I'm sure you're just dying to know. Uh, yeah, good for you. Hmm. Can I go now? I'm tired of talking to old dudes who blame my generation for the failing economy. Ouch. Uh. Ernest. Oh yeah, because I'm totally embarrassing you. Ernest puts earbuds in and storms off to stand in the corner. Well, that was certainly... That was certainly something. He seems nice. Hugo puts his hand... Puts his head in his hands and sighs. Mm -hmm. I'm so sorry. He's having a really rough time. As much as I want to be the cool dad, I... I have to be the authoritarian dad, and... He clearly resents me for it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think as a dad and a teacher, that's about as authoritarian as you can get. Honestly, are any of us cool dads? Is that even possible to be a cool dad? What? I'm cool as a cucumber. See that right there? You can't say that. My kids think I'm cool. But for how long, Craig? How long do we get to be the cool dads? Oh. I, uh... I don't know. Yeah, sounds great. I think we just have to accept the fate that as dads, we've become the machine we once raged against. And accept our fate to unironically wear socks with sandals. Your kids may think you're cool now, but the moment they hit puberty, you're doomed. Amanda's 18 and she still thinks I'm cool. Mm -hmm. I yell across the yard to my daughter. Amanda, I'm cool, right? Amanda just laughs. She keeps laughing. I see your point. I I, I like I kind of like our Archie character design. <laughs> I see your point. Oh. As much as we all want it, I don't think it's as important to be a cool dad as it is to be a good dad. We can't all be friends with our kids. It just doesn't work. I mean, forget me in earnest. Mm -hmm. Our job as parents is to make sure our kids turn out okay. Hmm. 
Yeah, you're right, but it'd be nice to have it both ways. Hearing these guys talk about... Uh, hearing these guys talk about this makes me think. My relationship with Amanda. We get along so well. But there might come a time where it won't be like that. Is college when that happens? Mm. Don't let us eat up your time, Archie. Let's go meet... Uh, let's go meet some of the other people around the neighborhood. Oh. And without further ado, let's work some magic. Joseph closes his eyes and takes a deep breath and gets to work. With the greatest of ease, he sets the patties on the grill, flourishing as he flips his spatula into the air. It's easily some of the best grill work I've ever seen. You guys think this is my first time in front of my gr uh, grill? He's working faster now, effortlessly tossing cheese on the patties and perfectly grilling onions on the side. One after another, the dads take notice of the crowd. I mean, take notice and crowd around Joseph to admire his masterful technique. Hmm. You probably didn't know this, Archie, but Joseph's known around here for his grillmanship. <laughs> He's ungrillievable. I've, I've tried to get on his level, but I, I just can't catch up. Let us keep studying. He has a rare quality about him. Oh. Mustard, we keep talking about this. Can't we just appreciate the artist? Never seen him make a mistake. Man, I'm really relishing in all these puns. Oh. Okay, we need to stop. This is getting too cheesy. Please stop. All of the children at the... <laughs> <laughs> you liked me throwing in one that they didn't do? All of the children at the party. Boo. <laughs> All of the children at the party blew the glorious display of puns in unison. Wink. Did he just say wink? Did I hear that right? All right, guys, the food's ready. Please form an orderly barbecue. Amanda groans. We all grab our food and hang out, enjoying perfectly cooked cheeseburgers. Yeah. Man, it's so wild how all of us dads are in the same cul-de-sac. Hey. Pretty nice, isn't it? Feels like there's a real community here. Totally helps when you're just a single dad trying to raise a kid. Okay. Oh. We're happy to have you here, man. I think you're going to like this neighborhood a lot. Oh. Plus, Amanda seems to be getting along with all the kids. If she decides to get into babysitting games, she'll be making a killing. Oh. Hey, why don't you add us all on Dadbook? Dadbook? Hmm. Yeah, it's a great social network for dads to keep in touch with each other. We're all on it, so if you ever need to reach out to anyone, that's the simplest way to do it. Sorry, I'm just old fashioned. I'm just an old fashioned dad. Social media goes over my head sometimes. <laughs> don't worry, Pops. I'll help you figure it out. The rest of the barbecue goes smoothly. We all trade stories and drink beer as our kids play out on the lawn. Amanda breaks up a fight between Carmen and Sita and these weird twins. I think they wanted her soul. Are we just getting to the end of the intro, which is supposed to take 40 minutes? Oh, God. Amanda and I walk back to our place as the sun sets over the neighborhood. <laughs> Pretty fun party, don't you think? I mean, I got a burger in me. Sweetie, if I can impart any sort of wisdom upon you right now, and not that this was a bad situation, but if you've ever, if you're ever in an uncomfortable situation, always look for the silver lining. The silver linings will get you through to the other side. We ate rock and burgs today, so, and it was, and it was good. Amen. Well, hey, at least you met some other cool dads. You should hit them up on dad book. Maybe I will, if I ever figure out how social media works. I have a good recommended feeling about this place. Too, Dad. Eh? Amanda and I arrive home with the remnants of the veggies on our plate. Uh, or with the remnants of our veggie plate. Hmm, seems like nobody was really into the cauliflower. Any big plans for the evening? Actually, yeah, I'm going out with some friends. Oh. Hmm. Is that okay? Of course, just keep me posted and be home before midnight. You got it. And be careful. I will. Make good choices. Of course. And call me if you need, need anything. Uh. Dad. 
You're not going to do the thing where you wait silently for me to come home in the living room with all the lights off, are you? What? No, I've never done that, and I will never do that. Okay, do you have plans tonight? I, uh... My plans were to kind of eat ice cream and watch TV with Amanda. I'll find something to do. Gonna... Work on some stuff. Gonna throw a party. Gonna work on some stuff. You know, dad stuff. I'm just relaxing tonight. Have fun, okay? Great, see you later. I watch Amanda drive off into the night. Really do hope she has fun. I plop down in front of the TV and turn on some wine and dine mastermind with celebrity chef Gavin Chapman. It's like Gavin's making a roasted rack of lamb with rosemary mashed potatoes. I'd love to be able to cook like that. Although, I think it was actually, if I was actually, though I think if I was actually good at cooking, I'd use my powers for evil. Like, making baked Alaskas all day instead of any food of real nutritional substance. Man, Gavin Chapman just caught that thing on fire. Uh, he meant to do it. What a professional. I lose track of all time as I blare through several episodes of Wine and Dine Mastermind. And also one episode of some cooking show called Meat Hell. I'm not even sure what that one was about. It was just a lot of yelling. I glance at my watch. Man, it's almost midnight. I should check in with Amanda. I sent a text. Hey, kiddo, you good? I wander into the kitchen and wait for a reply. Amanda's phone is almost always in her hand. I'm sure she'll respond soon. Unless she's driving home now, in which case, I hope she doesn't respond soon because I definitely taught her better than to text and drive. I reach into the freezer and grab an ice cream sandwich. A little late for this, but I think I earned it after a long day of socializing. I check my watch again. Then my phone. Nothing yet. Hmm. Okay, see, now I'm worried. Do I call her? Do I call the cops? No, no, it's too soon for that. I'll just send her a gentle reminder text. What's up? Half an hour passes. Now I'm getting really worried. The episodes of Gavin Chapman's Meet Hell are not, on are not only not as assuaging my uh, anxiety, but possibly exacerbating it with all the yelling. So I, I keep pacing around the house, waiting for her to come back. Why didn't I find out where she was going? Who she was going with? Why don't I know any of her friends' phone numbers? Why don't I even know any of her friends' full names? Who is Emma P? I decide to send her another text. Amanda, please text me and let me know if you're okay. I can't help but think of all the awful things that could have happened to her. Oh, thank God, it's her. Amanda opens the door and shuffles in. Finally, finally, she's back home. I'm glad she's okay. What's up? Sweetie, thank God you're safe. Dad. Uh, yep. But now that I know she's okay, I'm really mad. Why didn't you answer my texts? Amanda pulls her phone out of her pocket. Oh, whoops. Guess I didn't see those. She starts to walk back to her room. Amanda Ann. Well, we're pulling out the middle name now. Amanda, you came home an hour and a half after your curfew, and you didn't respond to any of the texts. You really freaked me out. I was about to call the cops. Dad, you're seriously overreacting. You're not going to be like this when I go off to school, are you? You're my only daughter. Well, I can't give you a play-by-play -play of everything I do all the time. I'm 18. You shouldn't even be giving me a curfew in the first place. I sit down on the couch and put my head in my hands. I feel very tired all of a sudden. You really scared me, just... Please don't do that again. Alright, I'm gonna go to bed now. Amanda closes the door to her room when I head to mine. Jeez. As I'm falling asleep, one thing she said keeps echoing in my mind. You're not going to be like this when I go off to school, are you? I definitely didn't sleep well last night. I brew some strong coffee and make some scrambled eggs for Amanda as a peace off offering. So I'll be right back. I'm going to uh, go to the bathroom. I'm going to get some water. And I'll leave you with this terraria sounding music in the meantime. I'll be back in a minute. <laughs>
Okay, I'm back. I have my water. I also got rid of some water. Gameplay. Okay. I definitely didn't sleep well last night. I brew some strong coffee and make some scrambled eggs for Amanda as a peace offering. He eventually wanders into the kitchen. Hey, I thought about what you said last night. I should have texted you. I said I was going to do it, and I didn't. I honestly just didn't even think about it. I'm really sorry, Pops. I won't do it again. Well... You're an adult now. I shouldn't have gotten so worked up. Mm -hmm. Team Selleck? Team Selleck. Amanda gives me a hug. Want some eggs? You know it. Sprinkle some cheese on them. Already did. Bless you. Amanda scarfs down the eggs in the time it takes me to wash the pan. All right, I'm off to school. Smell you later. So one more thing before you go. Mm? What? What's dad book? The social media platform. Wait. Mm? What? What's the social media platform? Dad, I have to go to school. Come on, Amanda. I'm an old man. I can't put together a dad book profile on my own. All right. I'll help you sound interesting on the internet. Amanda spends the next couple of minutes setting up my profile on Dadbook, which, as it turns out, is a place where dads can get together and talk about fatherhood. Aww. All right, Pops. We've got to fill out your profile. Let's get some likes and dislikes. On Friday night, you're most likely to. Hmm. Let's say fall asleep and watch the History Channel. We're going, uh... We are going to go Robert route, right? I think that's what he would he would uh, do. If you had one thing to take with you onto a desert island, what would it be? Hmm. I don't need anything. My survival skills have trained me for this day. What are your turn-ons? Hmm. Street smarts. I'm going full Robert, guys. What did you want to be when you grew up? Hmm. Say a good father. What's your favorite movie genre? Ah. Oh. I feel like we have to go war documentaries, but... Sean Connery's filmography also would be pretty good. What's your ideal date? Maybe we're going too too much like Robert, though. That's the problem. What's your ideal date? Trying to geocache, but getting hopefully getting hopelessly lost. What do you never leave home without? Hmm. Oh God. Pickle, does this does this remind you of anyone? My sick vape. Let's see. You never leave home without a cool knife or my cripplingly low self esteem. <laughs> hey, Sapko, how's it going? We're dating some dads today. Did you play this on your stream? I'm doing well. Hmm. A cool knife. I spend a lot of time thinking about... Yeah! I uh, Five Pickle Morning yesterday messaged me and said, uh, If I gift you a game, will you play it on stream? And I said, what game? And she said, I've already gifted it to you. 
I'm now playing it on stream. It looks, it seems pretty good so far. No, no, I, I the, the BRB music was from this game. It sounded like straight up Terraria though. Are you, uh, <laughs> yeah, it, it's, it's so reminded me of Terraria. Are you, are you streaming tonight? If anyone doesn't know, this guy is a beast. With all the good and bad connotations, but mostly good. Hmm. Hmm. It's been a lot of time thinking about. We're going to go dad route here. How proud I am of my child. Oh, nice. Celeste is going well. I When I saw you playing that, uh, I, I know we have a lot of uh, talk about, oh, God, gamer, blah, blah, blah. And then there's the pushback jokes. I could not imagine playing that game with keyboard. So consider me impressed. I've played a bit of that game. I've never beaten it. See, that wasn't so bad. Yeah, that was actually kind of fun. I could totally spend all day on here just looking at people's profiles. You should message one of them. Or more than one. All of these dads seem pretty interesting. That's true. That's true. From everything I've seen. You know? Said God of Stealth. Literally every time, every ending screen said, never detected. Right? You are a ruthless child killer in your streams, though. That's one thing I've learned. Okay, I promise I'll make some friends. Amanda gives me a hug. But yeah, seriously, if anyone's hanging out and you guys have not followed Sav, his stream is well worth a watch. It's always super entertaining. <laughs> Did she betray... Honestly, I don't even... I, I missed some of that. I, I didn't even catch what was happening in the plot. And I, I never beat Dishonored. I think I got like halfway through. But uh, someone actually, Five Pickle Morning said you should totally play Dishonored. And I was like, ah, I can't right now. Sav is playing it. It would seem bad. <laughs> but I love that game. Amanda gives me a hug. Go get him, Dad. Welcome. You've got dads. So. Power rankings. Robert, best dad. Mr. Grumpy. I like him. He, he, he's the edgy guy with the harder gold. He doesn't even seem that edgy. He just looks edgy. Number two, Matt. St he doesn't seem that awkward anymore. He seems like the most normal person. Okay. Number three, for entertainment. Joseph and Damien both seem like they're entertaining, although they would be awful in real life. So in a way, they're at the bottom of the ranking, but for entertainment, they'd be up higher. The middle tier, the normal but kind of boring and somewhat slightly off-putting, are Craig, the bro, the dude bro, and Brian, the one-up guy, the one-upsmanship guy. And then once again, we have Joseph. Uh, he's he's going to be a drama train wreck. We just know it. Damien is just going to be full of cringe. And Hugo makes me so deeply uncomfortable and gives me too many flashbacks to art school. And I can't handle it. So he sits at the bottom of my rankings. We're going to message Robert. Actually, what's this? Dad Manda. Hi, Archie. It's me, your dear old friend from way back in the day, Dad Manda. I'm delighted to see that you've signed up for a dad book. They've recently added this exciting new service, new messenger service. So you might be finding yourself receiving messages from other dads like myself take care not to take care not to miss them amanda is that you what are you doing on dad book why archie i never we've known each other since business school how could you possibly confuse me with your amazing and talented and easy to buy things for a daughter though i am of course flattered you should buy amanda more things <laughs> I, I, you know what I thought was really funny in your Dishonored stream? When the when you were on the boat with the dude, and you're like, and he, this guy's just giving you a lift, and he's like, 
you're a piece of shit. You're the worst of us all. You're terrible. You're awful. You've killed everyone in the world except me. You're a piece of shit. And then you kill him. And then Murph was like, oh my god, I can't believe you killed him. And I'm just like, this guy should have known you were going to kill him. You killed everyone else in the world. And then he's talking mad shit about you. What do you expect to happen? Yeah, like that that was one that I'm like, I'm totally on your side for this. Yeah, it was <laughs> So <laughs> So Sav just played Dishonored. He went the max chaos route. Um the world ended up like shit. Everyone died. He killed everyone. He killed even there was there were parts where like there's a person who's being tortured and you can save the person who's being tortured or kill the person who's being tortured. He kills the person who's being tortured and then kills the torturer. He's just like, screw it, I'm killing everyone. And then the end, he saves the girl and then she falls to her death anyways. And the game is like, the end. Your world sucks and everything's bad. And that's how we ended the playthrough. Yeah, exactly. You're going to be like, man, I just love how generous and you, you look really good today. You look great with or without your mask, Corvo. Yeah, I, I agree. And I also think um, I, I think that the, there's kind of peak sitcom comedy of the fact that you're playing one way and Murph and, and some others in chat are just like, oh, my God, what is he doing? Why is he playing this way? It's just like I would rather watch someone play the game in a way that I'm not going to play it because I'm never going to see that route myself. That's just not how I play. I'd rather see the content and someone approaching it in a way I wouldn't expect. <laughs> I never do, um... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I never do ghost because, honestly, I don't really find ghost that fun. I go um, stealth kill. So I kill everyone, but I don't, I don't let their bodies be seen. And that's what I find the most fun. Oh, really? I've never played Shadow of the Colossus. I know it. I know the plot. I know that it's one of the games that, like, video game kind of nerds are just, like, cry over it being the best art ever in video games. And I, that sounded like I was saying that sarcastically, but I wasn't. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, I'll make jokes in chat at your expense, but I, uh... But no, I'm totally enjoying the playthroughs. That's exactly... <laughs> I, I don't know if you, uh... <laughs> oh, we're, we're talking about the game Dishonored. Don't worry, I'm not going to kill Robert. <laughs> uh, uh, Pickle, so um, Savko was playing Dishonored, and he was doing the mage route because he likes being a magic boy. Well, in the, But in this case, he was being a magic girl. So he's playing this female mage, and Jowen, the, the whiny little mage guy, is like, hey, Saf Kita, or whatever her name is. Hey, meet this beautiful woman friend I have who's going to help you. And then Savko's character is like, oh, great, you're bringing this fat cow to me. And then they just got super awkward and were like, um, trust me, the Saf Kita, she's, she's not nice. She's just joking. Don't worry about it. And they just like dealt with it awkwardly and moved past it. And I was like, man, I like in, in video games, like Mass Effect and stuff, if I, uh, if I'm presented with an option where I just, like, call a woman a fat cow, I would feel so deeply bad in my soul that I would never be able to do it. And and so the, the, the good thing about watching Sav's stream is that I can now see the other side. <laughs> Why, Archie, I never, we've no, oh, I, I've read this. You should buy her more things. Amanda, I know you didn't go to business school. I barely even managed to get a degree. Wait, no. Wow. I didn't say that. Never heard that. This is gold. I was a great student, I swear. I graduated at the top of my class because I worked hard and ate all the vegetables. Totally holding on to this for later. Wait. Do you even remember what I majored in? I declined to comment. Cool. Conversation ended. Okay, we gotta talk to Robert. Okay, what does his say? Robert Small. When the internet gains sentience and decides to destroy us all, you know it'll use this information against us, right? On a Friday night, you are most likely to make a deal in an alleyway. Have it go badly. Who's the cop? Was it Giacomo? 
I trusted Giacomo. If you had to take one thing to a desert island, what would it be? A gun. What are your turn-ons? Don't talk to me. What do you want to be? What did you want to be when you grew up? A grifter. What's your favorite movie genre? Italian neorealism? This guy is the best. What's your ideal date? Grave robbing. What do you never leave home without? At least four knives. You spend a lot of time thinking about... You ever really look into a rabbit animal's eyes? <laughs> Can I, I can't rate him. This guy's the best. Robert was pretty nice. A little odd, but nice. And ruggedly handsome. We should hang out. I type out a message to him on dad book. Hey, Robert. Good seeing you again at the cookout. You want to grab a drink? So just so you know, Robert, we met him at the bar. He's like, I like the other sports team than you. Your sports team sucks. And then we made friends. And then I'm like, hey, you have a nice tattoo. And then he got all silent because clearly it's like, oh, that it's to remember something. And he was all like dark and broody. And then uh, and then he's like, hey, want to come to my place and we'll fuck? And I was like, no, I don't. And that's where we left off. So he's my favorite. I think, and I, the reason I said no, because I, I was DTF, but the reason I said no was, um, yeah, I, the reason I said no is because I'm pretty sure he, he, his character is doing what they always do with the broody characters in these games, like Jack with Mass Effect, or the, uh, like, elf dude from, oh, I shouldn't say that, from a, from a game that you might have started playing on stream. Where it's like, oh, hey, I'm a romance option. Want to bang immediately? Yeah, I would love to bang you immediately. Oh, great. Now I know that we're not going to have a serious romance option and you are barred from having a romance with me because I only see you as a physical thing now. I sit there for a couple seconds, hoping he'll message me back. Hey, it says he read my message. Oh, he left me on red. I anxiously wait for a response. We're going to watch cat videos on the internet. Like Cat Cherdo. Cat Cherdo is a classic. Uh, and if you have not seen it, Savco, just you should Google Cat Cherdo. It's, it's worth it. it. It gives that dog one a run for its money. They're they're very different though. I start down a rabbit hole of cat videos, and Robert quickly vanishes from my mind. I didn't realize how long I've been doing this, but by the time I watch maybe my 30th cat video, Robert packs, pops back into my head. I jump back over to Dadbook and see if he's responded yet. Nothing. Well, guess the guy's busy. Might as well make the best of my day. Dang. Left on red. Yep, the cat's playing a piano. I get up, walk to the living room, then sit down and turn on the TV. We'll watch the History Channel, just so we're not actually a liar. Ooh, Naked and Afraid. Catching the Dadliest Ancient Aliens is on. Oh, Deadliest. I said Dadliest. Oh, this game has seeped into my brain. I'm so cold. I'm so scared at this rate. I don't think we're going to catch these aliens by day 50. I'm having trouble following this. Ancient astronaut theorists predict that being naked makes you 10 times more likely to find ancient aliens. Some suggest that aliens are fascinated with the human physique, most notably the butt. Okay, I'm back in. I lose several hours to whatever the hell that was. Sighing, I get up and walk around the house. My stomach grumbles. Time for lunch, huh? Well, I guess it's time for the old Chef Selleck to cook a gourmet delicacy. I walk over to the refrigerator and open the door. Do you think Robert Route is dead? Or do you think we just need to play the patient game on this one walk over to the re refrigerator and open the door are we going to end this game completely alone and sad I'm gonna, I'm gonna make a sandwich i make a sandwich in its entirety while standing there who needs plates the sandwich a lost art Well, listen. It's a pandemic, Sav. What do you expect? Why are you judging him? It's a pandemic out there. 
we're trying to socially distance fuck people over dad book. And it's not about fucking. Listen, if 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 that's all you're if that's all you're playing this game for, then that's that's on you. But I, I'm pretty sure this is about finding love. I admire my work for a second before I clumsily drop the entire thing on the floor. <laughs> have you have you played Terraria, Sav? The, I swear this song is like straight out of it. It sounds so similar. It this game is definitely about its puns. I admire my work. Oh yeah, drop it on the floor. No! I look around and remember that Amanda's not home. This is still good. Five second rule, right? I reassemble my sandwich, peeling pickles off the floor and putting them back where they belong. In my mouth. Hey, this is a new house, right? I've only been here for a day. I'm sure it's clean. I'm sure the previous family was clean. Wait, I'm a wreck. I finish my snack and walk over to the house. Walk around the house some more. Bored. When's Amanda coming home? Oh, I just remembered something. When we were packing up the old house, we found an old basketball hoop that we would hang off the door. Who would really be bring the living room together? I wonder where I put it. I spend a couple minutes poking around the new place until I find it. After installing it above one of the doors in the living room, I'm ready to dunk. By the way, Sav, if you choose to play this game, just be aware that in the options, there's a streamer-friendly mode. The reason is because I think the game by default has some DMCA content. Um... But streamer mode makes it so that you don't encounter any of that. Just letting you know. I spend a couple minutes poking around the new place until I find it. After installing it above one of the doors in the living room, I'm ready to dunk. Come on and slam. Wow, you can tell that this is a Game Grumps game, considering they uh, referenced Come on, Slam, and Welcome to the Jam, or whatever it is. I take a leap from the free throw line and rocket that sucker down the net. The crowd goes wild. Yeah, quite a few games are doing that now, as it's, uh... I'm not sure if you know much about the uh, Twitch DMCA, just bullshit that's happened. But there's, uh, not on Twitch's part. But, uh, there, like, apparently there's games that have, um... Some games that, like, they license music, they have, like, retail rights for selling it. And then they have broadcasting rights, which allow people to stream it and stuff. And some games have a finite time for the broadcast rights. So a lot of people, they had VODs that were totally fine for five years. And then after the broadcast rights expired five years later, all those VODs became a violation of copyright. And so people's channels got pulled down because of a video that was that they had up for five years and was totally legal and then suddenly stopped being legal. It's like ridiculous. And welcome to the jam. Okay. I pull up from the three point line, breaking my ankles and sinking a fadeaway. And I forgot the, the rest of the words to this song. Yeah, for sure. 100%. Uh, and, and the other thing is some games you just don't know. Some games will just have that content in it and it's, you know, like good luck doing your due diligence on everything. No look behind the back hook shot. Everyone's on their feet. Something, something space jam. Dad, I turn around to see Amanda standing in the doorway. Her eyes are a little puffy, almost as if she's been crying. Hey, Amanda Panda, you all right? I'm fine. What are, you, what are you doing? I, uh, got in the hoop and I'm taking it to the hole. Huh. Pass me the rock. Did something happen with, with Emma P or Emma R or Noah? Or is it about uni her university acceptance? I'm going to laser the ball to Amanda. I led the league in blocks. Set the record for rebounds in my rookie year. You think he can handle this? A rebound. Oh, uh, when someone misses a shot and the other player tries to re retrieve it, it that's, uh... Right. Just kidding! Amanda zigzags past me and tips a layup into the hoop. Art of war, bitches. Amanda, language! Oh. Sun Tzu didn't care about language. I would argue that Sun Tzu cared very much about language, so once you write something as timeless as the art of war, then you're allowed to swear. Amanda sticks out her tongue and dunks for another two points. 
Sav, would you recommend uh, Shiba Inu's Day Out or whatever the heck the game is called? And a six out her tongue and dunks for another two points. Seriously though, are you okay? You look like you've been crying. Oh dude, I'm cool. I just, I just saw like this really cute dog on the way home and it let me pet its belly and I couldn't contain my emotions. Uh. Well, you know, I'm always down to just end it. Hmm. Should I should I ask her what she's actually upset about? Should I ask about the dog? Let's talk about this dog. Gladly. There's a little French bulldog named Jacqueline, and her tongue was permanently stuck out of her mouth. She had a little sweater on. Wow, I probably would have also cried if I got to pet her. I was so excited for tummy rubs. Oh no, I'm tearing up just thinking about it. But seriously, you know you can always talk to me about anything, right? Nice! We did the correct answers! <laughs> yeah, that's why I'm talking about my love for French Bulldogs with you. Okay, just... Remember that it's always o that it's okay to be sad. Also remember that I love you very much. And only want what's best for you. I'm, I'm a little bit worried about this game, that partway through it's going to backdoor me into crying IRL. And uh, let's hope that doesn't happen. They don't want to be like... <laughs> <laughs> and only what's best for you. I, I don't. I don't want to. I don't want that to. I might have to not upload that vod. That's all. All right. All right. Jeez. Don't make me cry again. Oh. Okay. Just making sure. Maybe. Maybe you should be less concerned with my face and more concerned with your with full court press. Amanda and I play ball for a little longer. Then we cook dinner together. We managed to not almost burn down the house this time. Afterward, Amanda and I dig into a cartoon of ice cream over an episode of Chopped Toddler Tournament. Wait. What you have in front of you is a molecularly deconstructed sweet potato with a brown semi-sugar demi-glaze with cre creme fraiche, of course. That, that is true. That's one way to interpret it. <laughs> I bet you, I bet you in the Savco playthrough of this game, you're, you're most definitely going to burn down your house in that scene. The game's just going to punish you. This is literally a jar of baby food. The toddler immediately burns into tears. We bad people for watching this? Yes. Just then, my computer dings. Huh? What's that? I bet you it's Robert. Oh, you probably just got a message. Amanda and I walk over to the computer and check dad book. It's a message from Robert. He's playing hard to get. You up? What are you doing? Oh, this dude. I feel like the more I talk to Robert, the less I'm going to like him. I, I want to keep our conversations to a minimum. But we're going Robert route, so we got to try. I just don't know the way to this man's cold, cold, frigid heart. Heart. Whoa, I said hard. Oh, jeez. Daddy dating simulator just got me some, speaking some Freud. <laughs> I just want <laughs> I just want to find the way to this man's heart. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> what am I doing? <laughs> You're just chilling. Just chilling. Amanda deletes the G and hits send. We'll make you look cooler. A couple of moments pass by. Another message pops up. Want to grab a drink? Hey, that means he wants to hang out. I know what that means, Amanda. But it's kind of late. Come on, Pops. Live a little. I am living with ice cream and traumatized toddlers. <laughs> well, it sounds... Well, it's your life, but I think you'd have a lot of fun tonight. You are trying to get to know the neighbors better, aren't you? Ugh, Fine. I typed back a message to Robert asking him for details, and he asked me to meet him at Jim and Kim's. Well, don't wait up for me. So I think we're still in the early game, I believe. Or early mid-game. So I don't think we want to bang Robert. I never do. I throw on a nice jacket and run out the door 
It's only a short walk to Jim and Kim's, and it's a beautiful night. I walk into the bar and see the usual crowd of barflies drinking beer. I'm watching sports. I spot Robert at the back of the bar and wave hi as I walk over. Hey, man, how's it going? Hey, buddy. Hey. Ahoy there, Skipper. Robert and Mary here? Uh-oh. Uh. I brought Mary along. Figured we needed a drinking buddy. Okay, this is getting a little skeezy. Oh, man, I was excited to get to know Robert a little better. Now I have to deal with the weird married later. Bleh. Weird married lady making passes at me? Ugh. Don't look scared, kiddo. Just having a drink. Yeah, speaking of which, I think it's time for the first round. What are you having? Hey. Whiskey straight up. Oh. A dad after my own heart, huh? Ooh. Oh, did you see the eggplant emojis and hearts and, and, uh, and sweat emojis, we'll call them? Robert orders three shots of whiskey and passes them between us. Well, this wasn't how I expected my night to be going. Hey. Here's to bad decisions and relaxed moral values, fellas. What have I gotten myself into? We all knock back the shots. I almost choke on the whiskey as it burns down my throat. <laughs> I, I, I've heard that people love this game. What's the, um... I got to ask you about this the other day. Uh, what's the name of the pigeon one? I, I, I keep blanking on it. Like, I, I think that this game is... Yeah, Had a Full Boyfriend. I think that that game and this one, like, they're both ones that it's like, oh, this is, this is going to be a silly, ridiculous thing. And then it, like, sneaks in, like, an emotional core that you're like, this is actually really sweet. I didn't expect to be touched. We all knock back down the shots. I almost choke on the whiskey as it burns down my throat. Holy hell, that was a kick. I look over at Robert and Mary, who seem like old pros at this. Robert grabs his jacket and throws it on. Let's get marching. What? Night's young, chief. Come on. We're bar hopping. Oh, all right. We leave the bar and start walking down the street. I still don't know this area of town very well, so I just follow Robert. So where are we headed? Irish and I were drinking. Oh, Irish, I were drinking. It's an Irish pub. Oof. Oof. A good pun is the whiskey to my heart. Give it a rest, buddy. Ugh. <laughs> Puns are the lowest form of humor, Archie. Try harder. Ugh. Am I going to be the butt of the joke all night? Jesus, Mary, put your fangs away for a second. You walk into Irish, I were drinking. The bar is pretty much the same as Jim and Kim's. Except for all the old-timey Irish memorabilia on the wall. Next round. What are you having? Uh, this guy hasn't failed me yet. <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> I'm going to get wasted. Robert orders three more glasses of whiskey. We post up in Garish Green Booth. Harry slides in and slides up next to Robert, which makes me breathe a sigh of relief. Let's sip this one, why don't we? Suit yourself. Mary immediately downs her shot with one gulp and burps loudly. I wonder what Mary's deal is. Yeah, Mary is terrible. So the deal is there's a dude named Joseph. Joseph is the uh, youth pastor, like, like guy. He's like a preacher dude, but he has a, he has a giant anchor on his house and has an anchor tattoo. So he has some mysterious past, which is probably like it was in the Navy or something. Uh, he has four kids. His kids are all creepy as fuck. And his wife is this drunk girl, this this alcoholic woman, who goes up to men in bars and asks them if you'll buy her a drink. She approached me in a bar before I knew she she was married to Joseph and was like, hey, you'll treat me to a drink, huh? And I said, no. So this girl is like, and they basically like, it seems like they basically kind of ne neglect their kids. And their kids are freaky ass children of the corn people and the husband is a dude that you can date on this so their family is like like i bet you they're an entertaining i bet you he's an entertaining route because it seems like drama but to be fair right now this is starting to seem like it might be drama mary immediately downs her shot in one gulp and burps loudly ah. that'll put hair on your chest 
You are truly the paragon of grace and beauty. Mary grabs my drink and sips on it. Hey, Archie, be a deer and get us another round, will ya? Yeah, she's not a great... I don't know how to process this evening at all. I get up and order another round of drinks from the bartender, and I head back to see Mary and Robert having a lively conversation. Robert roars with laughter. I don't think I've ever seen this guy smile, let alone laugh. I take a seat across the booth from them and pass out the drinks. So, Edith's kids snuck some pot brownies onto the table at the last bake sale, right? And I spot that little hemp sweatshirted gremlin in the act. So I go up to Edith with the baggie and I'm about to tell her when all of a sudden she just freaks out at me. You're ruining the bake sale, she says. I should have been PTA president. Your roots are bad and blah, blah, blah. Mm. So what did you do? I told her to have a brownie and that evening everything was going to be fine. <laughs> They both erupt in laughter. I politely follow along with the story. She ate three. More laughter. Okay, that was actually pretty funny. He called the cops and told them that time had stopped. Mary looks directly at me. You smoke weed? What? No, the devil's lettuce. I... I have two big fat blunts in my purse right now. Want a blaze? Uh... What? No. Oh my god, my character my character is is acting way too uh I, I know I made the choice, but I'm acting too offended. I can't believe you would. I don't even know how you this is preposterous. Oh, he doesn't like me anymore because I didn't take drugs. Robert giggles helplessly. Ah. Just kidding, cowboy. Lay off the kid, Mary. He might not be used to your brand of humor. Hey. Fine, fine. Huh? We sit around and sit our drinks, people watching and cracking jokes. After a little bit of time, I begin to warm up to Mary. Her jokes become much fun funnier and much less scary. But it seems like she's not going anywhere anytime soon. I just wanted to have some alone time with Robert. I wonder if I can get her to leave somehow. Did you get the next round? You trying to ditch me, pal? I... No. Because if you're trying to ditch me, you can just tell me to scram. I just... No, no, it's fine. Archie wants alone time with his new best buddy, Robert. Read you loud and clear. The wingman breaks formation to pursue their prey. Ah. Now, if you fellows will excuse me, Mary needs to sink her teeth into a helpless boy. Go with God. Nice seeing Come you. On. Deuces, nerds. Mary gets up and saunters over to a younger looking boy, uh, younger looking guy at the bar. Hey. She grows on you. Does she though? I feel like she kind of delights in making men suffer. Huh. Well, she does. But what about her and Joseph? What about him? You know, they're married. And she definitely tries to get in the pants of, to get in my pants the other night and. <laughs> that, I'll, I'll, I'll wait for that in your playthrough. I gesture to her across the bar where she's making goo goo eyes at that young man from before. It looks like he's being held hostage. I... Oh, that's just a thing she does. She's harmless. Tell that to the boy she's hanging off of. Poor kid looks like he's seen war. <laughs> Robert lets out a hearty laugh. Hey, I got him to laugh. Aw, oh, man. I know I pegged you for one of, one of those straight lace types. Hey, we turned down your pegging offer. <laughs> oh, don't worry. I got pretty wild back in my day. Still got a little wild in you? <laughs> I have a child I need to care for. <laughs> you know it. Robert orders a couple more rounds of shots. I gulp. What am I getting myself into? Okay, so I pissed him off once and I've gotten eggplants three times. I think we're, we're okay. Mm. Think you can go shot for shot? There's only one way to look cool here. I grab the shot closest to me and down it. I doubt I can go shot for shot. Robert looks impressed. He takes a shot and knocks it back. Mm. That's one. So, what do I even talk about? He's so cool and he probably hates small talk. Uh, so how are, how are things? Oh. I hate small talk. 
Okay, so I'm just I'm going to adjust the ratings a little bit. I think I have to say that Matt is daddy number one. I'm I'm still enjoying I'm still going Robert route and I'm liking this route, but I think we have to bump Matt up to number one. Archie, okay. Too many people and this isn't necessarily you, but wait, too many people and this isn't necessarily you, but too many people think that they have to fill the dead air with noise. Personally. I think that I think they're afraid of silence or they're afraid of what the other person is going to think of the silence. If you want some unsolicited advice, just learn to be comfortable with silence. Mm. Nothing wrong with two people sitting in silence and drinking whiskey. Oh, all right. Hey. Robert and I sit in silence and drink whiskey. I take the I take in the rest of the bar, patrons laughing, playing darts, spilling beer. Mary giving the hard sell to that young man. The young man pretending he got a phone call from one of his friends. Huh, maybe silence is nice sometimes. So, you ever kill a man? <laughs> I choke on my drink. Excuse me? You know, watch the life drain out of someone's eyes. It's not just their life, you know. It's their hopes and dreams draining away. Every memory and experience they ever had. Gone. <laughs> uh, no. Listen, Sav, if you think this guy's bad, wait till you see the fucking vampire, dude. Uh, no. Yeah, I know, really. Uh, the the uh, vampire dude is like, goes, basically goes to like a hot topic and is like, I ordered this online and it said it was Victorian chic, but I looked at it and it was actually Edwardian dressage. So I expect a full refund. This is false advertising. I'm going to post a complaint by mail. Oh. Sav, please don't reinforce Filthy's... No, I'm just kidding. By the way, the, the Filthy Mick is my brother-in-law. Uh, no. Great, me neither. Robert knocks back his shot and motions for me to do the same. I reciprocate. Hey, Filthy, there were a ton of, there were a ton of jokes in this that I'm like, oh my god, this is so you. This is so you. This is so you. Yeah. <laughs> How do you think I got affiliate? So I forced them to watch. No one that's not in my family watches me. Robert knocks back his shot and motions for me to do the same. I reciprocate. Mm -hmm. I'm just messing with you. Relax. I laugh nervously. Huh. Or am I? I laugh nervously again. We sip more whiskey and people and watch people some more. Mary has her sights set on another man. And um, after the other one who excused himself to the bathroom and I assume crawled out of the window. Gosh, this whiskey is hitting me hard. Gosh, this whiskey is hitting me hard. Betcha, Robert gets up out of the booth, bouldering his jacket. Let's roll. Next bar. Sorry, whiskey. Inside voices. Let's roll. Oh really? Cuz cuz on dad book it you you could say how do you spend your evenings and one was like big vape tricks. And I was like that's filthy. That's filthy right there. Wait, what about Mary? Brother, Mary's going to be just fine. I look over at Mary who's lying on the bar in front of some poor sap. She's singing happy birthday hit birthday to him while he insists that it's not his birthday. Oh god. We, we make our way out out of the bar and back into the street. I'm trying my hardest not to stumble, but man, that sidewalk is just coming right at me. I hope Robert doesn't notice me tripping over my own feet like this is the first time I've ever been drunk. Have a good time, Sav. Have a, yeah, thanks for hanging out, man. Uh, always a pleasure. Have good, have good lessons and a good day, and I'll see you later. And that is an adorable emote. I like it very much. It looks like Vivi. Eh, eh. Okay. Where to? Mm -hmm. You'll see. I follow Robert through the street lamp spotlights until we eventually arrive at a rundown strip mall. There's a beauty salon, a sex shop, 
Computer repair store that looks like it's been closed for 10 years. And finally, a liquor store. Hey. Wait here. I'll be right back. After a minute, Robert returns with two wine bottles in brown paper bags. He hands one to me. Cheers. He sits on the curb and drinks. He motions for me to do the same. This is really not what I expected the night to go. I take a sip. White Zinfandel? What? Nothing. I just wasn't expecting... It's delicious, fruity, and refreshing. Don't judge me. <laughs> I start to say something. Think of his lecture about valuing silence earlier. And I stop. I sip on my wine and watch cars drive by. Let's throw rocks at shit. Oh, I hate that. What? Robert suddenly hurls a rock at a stop sign. The ding echoes throughout the empty parking lot. Mm. Oh my god. That felt good. He presses a stone into my free hand. Hey, you try. Uh, I don't know. With feeling. I look at the rock in my hand. And look at the stop sign. Back at the rock. Back at the stop sign. I don't know what needs to be done. I got a problem with authority. <laughs> you hurl the rock at the sign. It sails over the stop sign and right into the window of a parked car, leaving a crack. Dude, run! I leap up and dart to the nearest alley, wine in hand. I can hear Robert's footsteps behind me. Oh my god. Uh, and I'm, I'm sure I'm far enough away from the cracked window that I'm no longer culpable for the heinous crime. I stop to catch my breath. Maybe we strike rock throwing from the to-do list. Agreed. Suddenly my stomach growls. Oh man, I'm starving. Let's get pizza. Can't argue with that. Where's food around here? Actually, or good food around. Where's good around here? I actually don't even care if it's good. It just needs to be edible and in my mouth in the next five minutes. I know just the place. I follow Robert through a maze of alleys and side streets until we eventually end up in front of a tiny hole in the wall pizza joint. The, the bright red neon sign reads, Pete's Piece of Pizza. This is the, this is the route I'm going with. Ta-da! Uh, filthy, you see this guy right here? This is Rook. I can see a few exhausted looking workers behind the counter tossing dough and pulling piping hot pizzas right out of the stone ovens. My stomach rumbles again. We go up to the counter and get ready to order. Let me get two slices of Hawaiian pizza. Oh wait, Archie, are you cool with pineapple on your pizza? Oh my god. Oh my god. He likes Hawaiian. I, I want to say you know. I want to say you know. I know he'll hate me, but I feel like I have to say you know. Robert grabs me by the collar. I respect your opinion, and I will fight with my life for your right to say it. But where's your sense of adventure? Where's your sense of taste? Why won't you love yourself? How dare you. Oh, that's totally that's totally Dan from Game Grumps, I think. The juiciness of the pineapple paired with the tanginess of the sauce is a flavor combination that everyone should experience at least once, if not a thousand times more. Pineapple on pizza is one of the few things in life that I generally, genuinely and thoroughly enjoy. Please, please just do this for me. No, do this for yourself. So, two slices of Hawaiian pizza? Absolutely. goddamn lutely. We wait for the minute. We wait a minute for our pizza. I like how he's like, wait, are you cool with pi uh, Hawaiian? I'm like, no, he's like, too bad. We wait a minute for our pizza to come out of the oven. I'm practically drooling at the smell. The cashier hands us each a giant slice of paper on a paper plate so saturated with grease that I'm worried it will fall apart. We take our pizzas outside and wander through the alleyways as we eat. I take a bite out of the pineapple pizza and, hey, it's actually not that bad. I can't believe I spent so much of my life berating this sort of pizza of all my friends. Maybe I should give pineapple pizza a shot one day. This game is railroading me into liking pineapple pizza. I think I have to end the stream now and never play it again. I'm just kidding. Okay.
I take a bite of the pineapple. Uh, maybe I'll, okay. I should give pineapple pizza a shot one day. Okay. Man, I feel way better now. You and me both. You hear a noise coming out of a slightly ajar door in the alley. Uh, Robert looks at me excitedly. Got any more of that wild in you? You betcha. Good on you. Or good on you. Robert and I slide the door open and peek inside. It's completely dark except for some flickering light. We slowly creep forward. Cautious not to be heard or seen. Shh. Don't shh me so loud. Shh. We come to the end of the hallway and find ourselves standing in front of a movie screen. Oh, this suddenly makes sense. Did we really just sneak into a movie theater like a couple of teenagers? No talking during the movie. We look into the audience and are surprised to find that it is almost completely empty. Save for a row of a few teenagers in the front. They look annoyed when they notice us. Robert starts making his way to the very back of the theater and I follow him. We settle in with our wines and we try to make sense of the movie. It's a romantic comedy, I think. The young man is frantically trying to get through New York to find a woman that he's finally realized he's in love with. Kiss already. Nobody to kiss yet. You want him to kiss the taxi driver? Hell yeah. The kids down the way notice us heckling and one of them speaks up. Hey man, keep it down. Oh, it's Ernest Hemingway. Oh damn, that's Ernest Hemingway, Hugo's kid. Ernest, hey Ernest, I know you. It's me, your neighbor, hi. Ernest turns back around, embarrassed. I turn back to Robert. He kiss anyone yet? Turns out that yes, he did kiss someone. He made his way out to a tiny island near New York to profess his love for a woman who for some reason he knew would be there. She tells him that they hit the jackpot. He says that they had, but I think that there was some subtext I'm missing here. Yeah, I know you're this, this, oh gosh, I, I feel like I'm, I'm romancing you now. That's making me uncomfortable. Okay. Boo, love is dead. Shut up, it's beautiful. No, you shut up. Ernest grumbles. The credits start to roll. I stand up. Robert immediately pulls me back down. Hundreds of people worked very hard to make this film, and you're just gonna sit and you're gonna sit here and appreciate them. Okay. Look at that, Elizabeth Shelton. You worked really hard. She did lots of good uh, wardrobe design. Thank you, Elizabeth Shelton, for this beautiful film-going experience. And Peter Anders catering fed a bunch of people so they could have the energy to do their jobs what a guy we let the credit roll credits roll while robert individually thanks every member of the crew once it's finally over he makes sure no animals were harmed in making the film we leave the movie theater we stumble into the theater parking lot polishing off the rest of our wine hey assholes out of nowhere a rock flies through the air and hits me on the knee i used to be a crimer until I took a rock to the knee. Old memes. My knee, what the hell? Ernest and his friends stand in the alley, blocking your exit. Oh, what do you guys want? You go and throw a rock at my knee. This is my good knee. My orthopedist is going to be pissed. Ernest tosses another rock up and down his hands. What's wrong with this kid? You ruined my theater-going experience. Now you have to pay. Oh, well. I don't have any cash on me right now, and, like, movies got really expensive. Are we going to beat the shit out of, uh, our, our daughter's teacher's kid? Ernest tucks another rock at my other knee. I'm able to jump out of the way, but I didn't properly stretch before physical activity, and I'm probably going to feel super sore in the morning. You ruined it for you? That movie was pretty crappy in the first place. Hey, you take that back. That was a beautiful love story with really genuine acting. You call that good acting? What classicist mainstream slop have you been served your entire life? What? 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 Have you ever seen any Michael Powell? A Matter of Life and Death? 1946? Easily the toughest five minutes of love you'll ever witness. Oh god, we got into, we got into more art pretension. Listen, man. How dare you. That is totally Danny Sexbang speaking. No, you listen. That popcorn-ass drivel. 
the mass media shoving down your throat will only make you dumber and sadder. You of all people should strive for a higher standard in the art you consume. Your name is Ernest Hemingway, for Christ's sakes. Oh, no, now you've done it. Ernest rushes Robert, screaming like a banshee. Ah! I dive between Ernest and Robert, trying to stop the kid. He lunges forward, kicking me as hard as he can in the knee. Fuck, my knee! Robert gets in between Ernest and myself. It's as if he's seeing red. Fuck, my fucking knee hurts. All right, buddy. Talk like a punk, get hit like a punk. Robert squares up into his boxer stance. This dude is in fucking eighth grade. Is, are we, is he going to beat the shit out of an eighth grader? Queensbury rules. Three minute rounds with one minute rest in between. No low blows, fish hooks, J grabs, or, <laughs> or high blows. No low blows or high blows? Okay. What? I don't even. And don't even think about pulling an illegal turnstile. That's an automatic deduction of three points. I. You'll have to designate a second if you're unable to fulfill your role as main duelist. One of your friends over there looks like he's. Uh, looks like he has enough youthful vivacity to handle it. Hey man, I, I don't want to get I don't want to get dragged into this. That, that that movie sucked. It's too late. You two are bloodbound. If he dies, you die. Sorry, I don't make the rules. Talk to Queensbury. We're, we're just gonna go. Ernest and his friends warily back away. Robert calls after them. The Queensbury Association will hear about this and consume better content. Once the teens are safely out of earshot, Robert turns to me. You about to actually fight that kid? Are you kidding me? I would never hit a child. That'd be despicable. I... You throw the rules at them, though, they'll always bolt. Nobody wants Queensbury sanctioned throwdown. By full disclosure, I made half of that up. Wow. See, if you don't even know the rules, you can just make them up. Come on, let's get out of here. Robert and I cool down a bit as we walk back to the neighborhood. I'm so sorry, I really got into the art of filmmaking when I drink. It's okay, I think it's cool how much you like movies. To be honest, I don't know a lot about them myself. Buddy, I got so much to show you. Ever see any Sam Fuller? I haven't. Fuller is cash. Thanks. Huh, should I say thanks for the adventure or defending my honor? Let's thank for the adventure. Ah. Adventure is all I got, buddy. Robert throws an arm around my shoulder and we drunkenly belt out tunes. All the way back, we finally get to the doorstep. It was an interesting night. I liked it. A smile forms on his cheeks, a rare sight. Mm. Let's hang out again soon, yeah? Yeah. I linger there for a second, swaying drunkenly in the night breeze. Robert claps me on the shoulder. Night, bud. Robert heads back inside, and I stumble on my way back home. And he didn't try to bone me this time. <laughs> really special. <laughs> that is totally... Yeah, that's Danny. Okay. Uh, I only got rank A. I didn't get rank S or triple S. I don't know how high this goes. Okay. Well, that went okay. I like how there's dad points and daddy points. <laughs> Achievement progress. Knife dad. One out of three. While I'm doing my afternoon word jumbles, I hear a mail truck pull through the cul-de-sac. Wonder if we got any coupons today. Nice mail person slides a couple letters in a large yellow envelope through the slot. Takes a couple of tries for them to get it in. Hey, my coupons! I take a closer look at the large yellow envelope. Hmm. I lightly knock on Amanda's door. She probably has headphones on. Amanda? She yells through the door. What? Uh, I don't know. I, I I really want to try to marry Robert. So that's that's my goal. I feel like Robert is my midlife crisis. Ugh. 
So the one the one concerning thing about this is I think we're progressing through the game very, very, very slowly. But I think that our first playthrough is not going to be a one day playthrough. It's going to take a couple days. I have something for you. I'm kind of busy right now. Can you come back later? Okay. Just thought you'd want a big old envelope from HIA. Whoa, that was gross. Sorry. Thought you want a big old envelope from HIA. Immediately. Amanda pushes her door open. Porn Institute for the Arts? I mean, if you're busy, I can come back. I like her room. That's kind of cool. Father, please. I hand over the envelope, which she tears open with her teeth. It's probably bad for your teeth. She doesn't seem to hear me and spits out the piece of the envelope. She pulls out a letter and unfolds it. And the suspense is killing me. This is her dream school. Amanda's face is unreadable. I can't believe this. Oh, honey. It's okay if you didn't. I got in! Oh! I got in! Amanda tosses the letter aside and gives me a big hug. Congrats, sweetie. That's amazing. I'm so proud of you. He pulls away and looks at the letter again. Oh my god, I really can't believe I got in. <laughs> Of course you got in. You're a great student. You nailed the interview and your photography is incredible. Wait, Dad. I know this one's really expensive and it's so far away. I think for a moment. HIA was one of the more expensive schools that Amanda applied to. But I know she had her heart set on it for the longest time. It'll be tough, but we're going to make it work. Really? Of course. Amanda hugs me again. Thanks, Dad. Okay, sweetie, we're celebrating tonight. Dinner, your choice, wherever you want. Mm. Wherever. Yes. Yes, that is the... that. <laughs> but then we can make bad decisions. Amanda and I walk along the bayside, tearing into our foil-wrapped burritos from a nearby food truck. Could have chosen anywhere in Maple Bay. Cost was not a determining factor. Please, Dad, you know I'm a simple gal. Just give me a burrito with a view. Can't say I'm mad. Amanda and I sit on a patch of grass and watch the ships sail lazily through the bay. Yeah. And the dorms are right near a bunch of cafes. There are all these galleries nearby. And there's a discount if you bring your student ID and... Amanda, slow down. You're going to choke on your burrito. I know, I'm just excited. Did I mention that students get their own studio space once they're seniors? And we can get all the professional photo editing software for free. It's nice to see to see Amanda so enthusiastic about HIA. But I wish she wouldn't do it in between bites of her burrito. I thought I taught her to chew with her mouth closed. I wonder who my roommate's going to be. You take a survey online and they match you with someone with a similar major and in interests. I bet we're going to be friends. Craig and I were. Good roommate and be a lifelong friend. But don't expect to get- but don't even get me started on bad roommates. Oh no. Just kidding. We didn't have a bad roommate. Only our other roommate was a- Our only other roommate was a puppy that Craig bought, brought home one night. We spent a semester fabricating a story about our foreign exchange student, who had a really bad cough that sounded a lot like- exactly like a dog's bark. Carl ruled. Right. <laughs> oh. They let you have animals in the dorms? If you, if you get a note saying you need one, I bet I could forge one. You could get a rabbit or maybe a snake. Maybe both. Would the snake eat a rabbit, though? Oh, boy. I think I'll leave all that up to you. She's so excited I don't want to disappoint her. But I need to be real for a second. So, you know, I had that talk with Mr. Vega. He didn't tell you about the dumpster fire, did he? What? No. I don't want to put a damper on the good news, but... I need you to knock it out of the park these last few months of school, okay? I really want you to go to Horns, but we need that scholarship money. I know you can do it. Okay. I promise I'll try harder. I pat her on the back. Think you can handle a 14-hour drive to come home for the holidays? There's going to be some treacherous ice roads to cross. Don't even get me started on the paranormal occurrences. See, that shit is straight up um, jokes that you would make filthy. That's why I feel like this game is a game from your heart. Well, 
It'll be worth it if I get to see you. My eyes immediately well up with tears. Oh, Dad, don't cry. Sorry, I'm just very, very proud of you. You're all grown up now, and you're such a good person. I hope you know how important you are to me. Dad, stop. You're going to make me cry, too. It's too late, honey. It's happening. Dad, I can't get tears on in my burrito. It's going to make it taste sad. I pull Amanda in for a hug and kiss her on the forehead. Love you, kiddo. Love you, too, pops. Dad tip number 53. Pet every dog. Hey, Archie. What are your feelings about poker? Eh. Beyond hardly knowing her. Poker? I hardly know her. There it is. Well, good talk. Wait, I actually like poker. I just... I saw the joke and I, I had to take the shot. Please, Matt. I'm a dad. I'm contractually obligated. No, no. I, I get that. <laughs> Anyway, we've been playing weekly poker games, and I figured I should send an invite your way. Sounds great. I'd love losing money. Cool, dude. See you soon. Message. I had a lot of fun with Robert last time we hung out, but I'm beginning to wonder if he's dodging me. I tried messaging him a few times, and Dadbook says he hasn't even read them. I haven't even seen him come out of his house, actually. I decided to send him one last message, figuring that this will produce the same result. Hey, man, don't know where you've been, but we should grab a drink soon. I'll walk away from the computer, because at this point, I know he's not messaging me back anytime soon. I linger in the kitchen. I'm all caught up on work, but house is relatively clean. Maybe I should do something nice for Amanda. Ah! I'll bake her her favorite pie. I root through the pantry and pull out all the ingredients. This is an old recipe. But this is an old family recipe that I used to make with my grandmother when I was a kid. I lost the actual recipe card a long time ago, but I think I'll be able to remember how to bake it. I start mixing the ingredients together for the crust until I get a nice dough. I throw in some cherries into the saucepan to make the filling. Normally, I don't like to multitask in the kitchen. This is a cherry pie, but this cherry pie is a piece of cake. Pie? It's a piece of pie. Making a pie. Oh man, I can never remember what temperature you're supposed to set the oven at. I'm pretty sure it's 375, but I could be wrong. Who am I kidding? I'm never wrong when it comes to this pie. My special twist on my grandma's recipe includes a secret ingredient that not even Amanda knows about. It's re It really makes the cherries extra flavorful. Oh god, I can't remember what the extra secret ingredient is. Mmm. Almond? Oh, it's almond extract. Duh. Oops. Accidentally poured a little bit too much in. Way too much in. I'm sure it's fine. Baking is an art, and some of the most beautiful art is made from mistakes. I finally get the pie in the oven. How long am I supposed to leave it in there? 50 minutes? Ah, I'll just wing it. Man is going to be so excited. This kid loves a good pie. I have a seat at the kitchen table to do word jumbles until Amanda comes home. I can hear the door slam open. Yo, Pops! It smells like pie in here. It's pie, sweetie. Amanda darts over to the oven and looks inside. Yes! Hey, it's not done. Be patient. What's your angle here? What? Pies are an objective-based confection. What are you trying to get out of me? I've been leading a double life. Amanda, I have terrible news for you. I'm actually a pro skateboarder and an aspiring astronaut and a bank robber. That lifestyle is calling me back and I must go. One last job. You know how it is. Oh my god, this is straight up AI dungeon. This pie was the only way I knew to tell you. Except AI dungeon, wouldn't it wouldn't be a joke. AI dungeon, those things would all be the new canon. Well, I appreciate the years we spent together, but a trade-up is a trade-up. Remember me when you're kicking your feet up in Ibiza. Thanks for all the pie. We share a cordial handshake. I wait a few more minutes before taking the pie out of the oven. I set it on a rack to cool 
and guard it so Amanda doesn't dig in before it's ready. Huh. What? Does it look kind of weird to you? Oh, that's just me taking artistic license on what cherry pie means to me emotionally. I'm just saying this because, you know, it seems like you might have baked the pie incorrectly. And you're currently right now trying to pass it off as a good thing. It's art, sweetie. Was it art when you accidentally baked a whole uncracked egg into the center of my 12th birthday cake? Well, it's... Was it art when you tried to make brownies and accidentally created chlorine gas? Well, it's a bit of an exaggeration. Was it art when you... Just eat the pie, panda. I cut us a few slices and we sit down to eat. The cherry filling oozes out and then slides. And the buttery crust glistens. I watch as Amanda takes a bite. Ugh. What's wrong? Is it not that good? Amanda winces and fans her mouth. No, no. I just... Burn the heck out of the roof of my mouth. This pie is amazing. Sorry for doubting you. I breathe a sigh of relief and take a bite. She's right. The pie is pretty incredible, as it always is. I'm really proud of you for making this pie without burning the new house down. I got a few dad tricks up my sleeve. We fathers aren't as bumping and stupid as the media makes us out to be. Maybe we as a society should have a little more respect for fathers as a whole. Dad, your sleeve is on fire. I run to the sink and put it out. Pride will be my undoing. Okay. Amanda and I clean up the kitchen and play a little more living room hoops before she retreats to her room to do homework. I go back to my word jumbles. Hey, this one spells cat. The rest of the evening tickles by. Trickles by. <laughs> we eat dinner. I help Amanda with one of her scholarship applications. We both start getting ready for bed. I decide to check dad book one last time before I check into bed. Still nothing from Robert, huh? Hope he's okay. I turn on the lights and lie down. Hey. Okay, I'll be right back. Oh, wait. Hey, Archie. Hey. Hey, Archie. Hey, I'm outside. Come outside. Oh my god, this guy. Ugh, what is that? I was on the verge of falling asleep. I climbed out of bed and tried to identify the source of the dinging. My computer screen illuminates dark room. Okay. I'll be right back. Robert is back. Okay. Oh, one second. I got to do something. Sorry, one second. Here, I'll, I'll put this to this. You know, just had to post a couple messages on Discord so that our, our, uh, 
our brand new Discord server isn't so dead. Okay. Some Robert time. Robert date two. I walk over to it, ready to turn it off when I notice what is happening on screen. Out of curiosity, what's this? Oh, we can save. I should probably do that. Saving. Probably a good call. Okay, that's good to know. We can save. So we don't have to do one eight-hour sitting of this game. I walk over to it, ready to turn it off when I notice what's happening on screen. Don't make me honk. I will honk. Get out here. I look out of my window, and surely enough, there's Robert leaning up against his pickup truck in my driveway. He better not drink and drive today. I open my door, try to figure out what's going on. Hey. Hey. Want to hang? Just kind of sleeping. It's no fun. Come hang out. Would argue that sleeping is very fun, but I don't have to be anywhere in the morning. Might as well live a little. Sure. Cool. You plan on going out like that? I look down and realize that I am, in fact, not wearing pants. I mean, I don't mind. Right, one second. I like how I'm apparently wearing, uh, like, you know, a, a button-up cat shirt, a blazer, and then no pants. Right, I wonder if I sleep in that outfit. Right, one second. I run inside and throw on my going out pants, shoes, and jacket. I grab my keys and meet Robert back outside. Ready? Ready. Hop in. I jump into the passenger seat of his old red pickup truck. I have to move a few empty cigarette packets and a gas and gas station receipts out of the way before I can sit. Robert silently starts the car and we drive out of the cul-de-sac. You like Tom Waits? Love Tom Waits. I love... Before I can answer, Robert turns up the radio. Yep, that's Tom Waits all right. He lights up a cigarette and cracks the window. We drive together in silence. <laughs> so, where are we going? Robert doesn't respond. Robert? You ever kill a man? Well, you will tonight. It's kill or be killed out there. Oh, I heard you. He doesn't answer my question. I look out the window and notice Robert's taking us to the highway. I twiddle my thumbs. Well, whatever I've gotten myself into, it looks like I'm in it for the night. I settle into my seat and watch streetlights pass by. I glance over to Robert, who's driving intently. He looks tired, as he always does. There's something a bit more there. I just can't place. Is it the anniversary? I'm going to say nothing. I remember Robert said some... Uh, I remember what Robert said about hating small talk and decided to keep my mouth shut. Nice. He notices me staring. Stop looking so nervous. I'm not nervous. I'm a little nervous. Just hang on. We're almost there. Almost where? I have no idea where we are. I think we're moving at a slight incline, but I'm not so sure. We eventually come to a stop. Robert gets out of the car, and I sit for a second, unsure if he wants me to get out. What are you waiting for? I hastily exit the car. Robert sits on the bed of his truck and pats the space next to him. I'm gonna do some, uh... Oh, nice. Oh, we're on lo lover's, lover's Lane, or whatever it's called. I sit down and take in the view. We're on a hill overlooking a city skyline against the bay. This is a cool night. The cool night air rustles. Some trees near us as lights blink in the distance. Off to the side, I can see an entrance to a dense forest. <laughs> Man, it's all so gorgeous. This is where I come to masturbate. W what? I I'm kidding. What's wrong with you? This is my little spot where I come to think. It's nice. You can see the whole city from up here. It gives you some perspective. Robert reaches behind him and pulls something out from under his jacket. It, gliss it, it glints in the moonlight, and I suddenly realize what it is. Oh shit, that's a knife. Oh. Please don't stab me. Robert reaches into his pocket and pull pulls out a small piece of wood. Is he going to whittle? Please don't stab me with that either. Robert takes the knife to the piece of wood and starts carving it. Oh, I breathe a very audible sigh of relief as Robert looks at me sideways. 
think I was gonna stab you just now. What? No. I hate to break it to you, but I did, in fact, bring you out here to harvest your organs. Yeah, well, you think you caught me in your trap, but I knew. For years, I've been putting the most vile junk food in my body in preparation for this day. Come at me, friend, and reap what you will. Two steps ahead of you at all times. That's how I operate. Uh, nothing gets past you, huh? Oh. Robert reaches into his pocket and pulls out a folding knife that he opens and hands to me. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna warn you. The last guy I had a knife fight with lost three fingers because he didn't know the eight basic rules of knife fighting. You're familiar, of course. Correct? I, I honestly can't tell when you're kidding. I'm just so many levels of irony deep that I forgot what humor is. <laughs> he and I laugh. <laughs> Have you ever whittled before? Considering I'm not a grandpa, no. What do you mean by that? Well, I just thought you would have had a block of wood shipped to you along with the... Well, I just thought that you would have a block of wood shipped to you along with your first social security check. Archie, I'll have you know that whittling is a time-honored tradition enjoyed by both young and old alike. That, that you're dismissing it before you've even tried it speaks volumes about your character. However, because I've gotten to know you for some time, and instead come to think of us as friends, I will attribute it to ignorance instead of malice. Yeah. I, I think you see a lot of yourself in him, right? Double meaning? Uh. What I'm trying to say is, go get that stick. Robert motions to, to a good-looking stick on the ground, perfect for potential whittling. I pick it up. Oh. Most important thing to remember while whittling is to cut with the grain, not against it. If you cut against the grain, the wood is going to splinter. Yes, yeah. That was that was the uh <laughs> That was the double meaning. Isn't the most important thing safety? No. Getting hurt comes with the territory. Look at my damn hands. I look at his damn hands. They're calloused and covered in tiny little white scars. They are very nice hands. Can't make a stick omelet without breaking a few hand eggs. Knife that wood. Oh god. A good start. <laughs> That's a good, a good start. What is it? A sharp stick? <laughs> One second. Oh, God. <laughs> Careful. Don't poke yourself with that. You made a sharp stick. Tell me about this one. The flatworm. <laughs> Gross. <laughs> you made a flatworm. <laughs> What's the story here? It's a bubble popper. Toothpick? You want a toothpick? Fine. I realize that you could have just picked your teeth with a knife. Hey, a toothpick. Hmm, what's this? Uh. Chicken nugget. Please don't eat that. You made Robert uncomfortable. <laughs> nice form. What's that supposed to be? It's you. 
really captured my likeness. I'm impressed. <laughs> you made Robert, I guess. Ah, oh, this is this is good. I would play this if this was a full-size game. Interesting. What do we have here? It's a left chopstick. It's a stick in a lefty chopstick. I'm not sure if I need to go as slow as I am, but I'm, I'm worried about going too fast. Oh. Keep this up, you'll be a whittling pro in no time. It's a new friend. He's beautiful, I'm happy for you. Made a new friend. handiwork what do you call it sir horsington the brave we have to a brave and noble name for a brave and noble creature but my uh that's what my daughter used to uh that was what her horse was you made a beautiful gift for amanda nice hey. dad dad tip number 80 please don't pirate games that would be good if that existed only on the pirated copy of the game. Robert and I sit in silence uh, for a while, carving out... Oh, sorry. Robert and I sit in silence for a while, carving our pieces of wood. I think I'm getting the hang of this. It's actually kind of relaxing. I glance over to see what Robert's working on. He's carving a smaller wooden knife. Ah! While I'm distracted, the knife slices into my thumb. Blood gushes all over the little wooden carving. Um, Robert is lost in carving. He doesn't notice me bleeding everywhere. Uh, Robert still doesn't notice. Robert, I'm dying. I'm bleeding to death. Robert finally looks over. He reaches for his jacket again. Jesus, how much stuff does this guy keep on him? In there. And pulls out a red bandana. He wraps it around my thumb. Hold tight. He hops off the truck and I can hear him rummaging around the, in his car. He comes back uh, he comes back a moment later with a well-stocked first aid kit. Robert carefully wipes oh. <laughs> Robert carefully wipes all the blood off of my hands and swipes a bit of antiseptic onto the cut. With surprising gentleness, he places a bit of gauze on the wound and wraps it all up. You okay? Yeah, Robert, Robert is, I, I'm, I'm back on Team Robert. I put him back to number one. Date one, he was a little bit, uh, he was a bit something. But listen, the competition for the best two are Robert and Matt. So Robert gets a bit too edgy and a bit too, like, teenager-like. Like, oh, I'm gonna throw some shit at a thing. But Matt is, you know that when we actually, if we play Matt's route, it's gonna be like, we're both awkward. We're so awkward together. And that's going to be the story, right? That's good. Matt is like the most normal dude. Um, but he's... One of his defining traits is that he's awkward. And one of my defining traits on this is that I'm awkward. Right? So I, I don't know how those two will play off of each other. Maybe we'll find that we're not awkward together. Maybe that's his arc. You okay? Yeah, I'm good. He hands me what's left of the tube of antiseptic. Make sure you keep that cut clean. It's oddly touching and... and a little sexy? I guess I'm a real whittler now. That you are. Be careful, though. They're attracted to the smell of blood. Wait, what? What's attracted to the smell of blood? Hmm. Cryptids. Tons of them out here, you know. Cryptids? Like Mothman and stuff? Mothman is bullshit, but yeah, this town's a hotbed for cryptozoological occurrences. You're joking. Oh, oh, I wish I were. I'm a skeptic myself, or 
At least I thought it was. There are things in these woods that we can't possibly comprehend. I think about my entire time in the city. Aside from the occasional stray coyote, I don't think it's too bad. No, I, listen, I'm with you. The, the only, he lost me a bit with the like, let's, let's uh, drink a bunch and then go out and throw rocks at a sign. Oh, we hit a car. Let's run. Oh, there's a kid. Let's sneak into, like, to me, that, that reminds me a little bit too much of like, oh, you're, uh, you, you know, you're 15 and you're, you, you don't have a curfew right now or something. Let's, let's be, let's do the stuff we're not supposed to do because our parents don't know. You ever heard of the Dover Ghost? I don't think so. Hey. Well, let me tell you a story. I was out in the woods here on a camping weekend trip with Betsy. You don't know Betsy. She's a big pup. Pitbull. Real intimidating. I feel safe around her. First night goes without incident. Get some solitude. Betsy gets to pee wherever she wants. All good stuff. Hmm. Second day, I get the idea into my head that I can hike, hike deeper into the Probably against my better judgment, but hey, we're just having a fun camping trip, right? So, me and Betsy start marching into the morning. It's a little late, we set up camp, but it's different this night. Real quiet. I can't hear the birds, the crickets, squirrels. Nothing. Dead silent. Then it happens. I hear the most unholy growl I've ever heard in my life. Right outside the tent. Me and Betsy, we go to investigate. We look around the clearing. Nobody's there. But there's this feeling. Not sure if I can quite describe it. I know someone. Something watching us. Betsy, though, she's scared. Never seen her like that. And when she's scared, I know that I should be too. Then I see it. In the distance. Mm. A man. But. If something that didn't know what a man was supposed to look like made it. It looked like something. Wrong. Big. Arms too long for its body. Black eyes. Just stood there and stared at me. Mm. Then it disappears. I hear one yelp from Betsy and I turn around to check on her. She's gone into thin air. I didn't sleep at all in my tent that night. But. I don't think I've slept right since. Yeah, he's definitely best boy. That's terrible. Or you're lying. <laughs> the only downside, filthy, is that you highlighted your message and it highlighted in the same color that the hearts are, which ironically makes them harder to see. Should I say uh, that's terrible or you're lying? Let's say that's terrible. Harder to see? Man, this game is made for you. Wow, Robert. Oh. I'm so sorry. They say that if you listen closely on quiet nights, it's just like tonight. You can hear the howl of the Dover goat. A howl resonates through the woods. It doesn't sound like a regular howl. It's so guttural. Even from far away, something about it makes my skin crawl. Oh, okay, Robert. Real funny. I turn to look at Robert. He's white as a sheet. You're messing with me, right? Really? I, w I was messing with you up until literally just now. I totally made that camping story up. I strain my eyes to scan the, the forest line, trying to see where the howl originated from. Off in the distance, I see something. It's so far away, I can barely make out a shape. It looks human, but... It's dragging something. Um, do you see that? We should go. Robert and I slowly back away and get into the truck. He turns off his headlights, and we slowly crawl away back onto the road. Too scared to look back. What was that? The Dover ghost, I guess. I chuckle nervously. This time, it doesn't seem like he's messing with me. Wait, do you... <laughs> Oh god, Robert has little stickers of like a pineapple, elephant, dinosaur. 
Or maybe someone illegally dumping garbage on a wildlife preserve. Yeah, that's that's the story we'll tell ourselves. We sit in silence for a little while longer. The fear of whatever that was slowly... The fear of whatever that was, slowly subsiding. We get closer to the city. Oh. Thanks for coming out. This was fun. I'm sorry I haven't been in touch. I've just been in a way lately. I had to get out of the house. Oh. Had to be around somebody. You doing okay, man? I love that they got Danny Sexbang to voice this and they have him like, oh. 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 <laughs> Most of the voice acting, they're like, we need another line. We need another take. This time. Do it a bit sexier. Oh. Okay. This time, do it a bit more concerned. Oh. You doing okay, man? Uh -huh. <laughs> uh -huh. Do it quizzically. Uh -huh. Robert thinks for a second and lights another cigarette. Uh -huh. Oh. <laughs> Now that I've pointed it out, I can't stop fixating on it. Been doing a lot of thinking. He takes a long drag. As I get older, I feel more and more that I'm just drowning in this sea of regret. I was so busy chasing all these things that I thought would make me happy, but I didn't think about anyone else. All I cared about was myself, and I, I didn't even think. Oh. Robert stops, and I wait for him to finish his thought. But he just stares at the road. Maybe I'm just built like this. Mm. Or maybe I do it to myself. Maybe it's my own choice that I'm unhappy as I am. I try to think of something to say. I remember all the times in my life when I've been sad. But there's... There's a great many of them. There's always been a light at the end of the tunnel. Something I held on to that kept me going. There's something so resigned about the, about the way Robert's talking. Okay, I got to save. It must have taken you a lot for you to tell somebody this. Uh, You're a mysterious guy, Robert. You don't have to be. Do you ever huh. wish you were a better father? I think about it for a second. All the time. You can read all the parenting books you want, but nothing will ever prepare you for raising a child. There's so much I regret or wish I could have done better. But I don't have the answers. I don't know if anyone does. So I was going to make a joke about these stickers, but I have a, I'm guessing that he clearly must have had a kid. And so he's a little dark dude, so we'll see. Oh. It's funny. I, I look at you and your relationship with your daughter, and it seems perfect. It isn't. Oh, no. At least you're there for her. I stare out of the window at the blur of passing trees. I just I hope I'm a better father to my kid than my dad was to me. Uh -huh. What did your dad do? It's more about what he didn't do. He was quiet, stoic. I don't think he ever once told me that he loved me. He cared more about his work than he ever did about me or my mom. Huh. You hate him? No, I used to, but after I became a parent, I just kind of feel bad for him. He missed out on my whole childhood. When I think about all of the happiest moments in my life, they're all with Amanda and Alex. He just wasn't there. Yeah, this game. Sorry about that, filthy. This game. We know it's we know it's coming. It hurt like hell when I had to leave him to die in that Belarusian prison. Huh? What? I turn and smile at him. Nah, he's retired in Florida with my mom. We go there every Christmas. <laughs> okay, nice. You both break out into laughter. He pats you on the shoulder. Nice. I'm saving. We did, we did a good choice. We drive the rest of the way in silence, listening to the radio and watching the bright lights of the city grow bigger. Robert drops me off at my place. As I'm about to get close to the passenger door, I realize that I still have Robert's pocket knife in my jacket. I pull it out and offer it back to him. You hold on to that. Never know when you might need it. Night, Robert. 
Have a safe drive home. Robert smirks, then pulls away. Okay, Robert is back to number one. He then immediately pulls into his driveway, which is one over from mine. Oh, seriously? He gets out and waves. I tiptoe to the house, careful not to wake Amanda up. Whoa, where'd you come from? Hmm. I look around and spot Amanda coming out of the kitchen with a glass of water. Hmm. I thought you were sleeping. Oh, uh, Robert woke me, woke me up to do some go cryptid hunting. <laughs> yeah. You know, the Mothman is bullshit, right? Uh, yeah, so I think getting busy, I think if that happens, it's going to be a, a third date kind of thing. Unless I, uh, unless the first meeting. <laughs> I'll be like, hey, Robert, come back. This time my pants are off. I'm not putting them back on. <laughs> hey, Robert, I know you like cryptids. You want to see my Suchinoko? You know what they say about Bigfoot. You know what they say about Big Feet. Okay. You know the Mothman is bullshit, right? <laughs> Amanda. Lang oh, Amanda Lang. You know what? It's fine. I think about the conversation I had with Robert in the car as Amanda starts walking towards her room. Hey, Amanda. Yeah. She stops. I love you. Mm -hmm. It's weird when you say it outright and sincerely like that, but I love you too. Night. I chuckle to myself and then finally decide to go to bed. Okay. So I'm guessing... I'm going to guess we're probably... We've got to be past the halfway point. I'm guessing we're at like the two-thirds point of the game-ish. Yeah, boy! Rank S! Yeah, we did it! This is good. Angry about weather, flip up sunglasses, whiskey, knife, silence. <laughs> well, it's been a long day. Just about ready to pack it in. After a few bites of ice cream uh, from the freezer, I turn off all the lights and walk down the hall to my room. God, my lips are so dry right now, it's ridiculous. I wonder if Amanda is still awake. That kid needs some sleep. As I pass her room, I can hear a faint sound, but I can't quite make out what it is. I get a little closer. Is she crying? I knock gently on the door. Hey, Amanda? The crying immediately stops. Give her the horse. Not right now. Her voice sounds so strained. She sniffles. I need to make sure she's okay. I open the door. In the dark, I can see Amanda's outline in the middle of her bed, knees hugged up against her body. Listen, don't just walk into your 18-year-old daughter's room. Come on. Is everything okay? Don't want to talk about it. Did something happen? No, nothing happened. Go away. Amanda. Get out. Okay, okay. <laughs> I quickly leave her room and shut the door behind me. Once the door closes, I hear her crying again. Okay, let's try something. I need to know. Oh, what has her... Oh. Wait. Load. This? No, nothing happened. Go away. Alright, I'll leave you be. Ugh, I don't know what I should do. I don't know what I should do. Well, you know what? Here's what we're going to do. We're going to get yelled at. And then move on. No, nothing happened. Go away. Amanda. Get out. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I quickly leave her room and shut the door behind me. Once the door closes, I can hear her crying again. You might not like that as much. But I think I gotta. Wow. Why is her so upset? She seemed fine earlier. 
She's usually so open with me. Did I do something wrong? Is she mad at me? I guess if she wasn't before, she definitely is now. I can't even remember the last time she snapped at me like that. I have a hard time falling asleep, but when I finally do, I, I'm... But when I finally do, I'm still thinking about Amanda. After a long night of very little sleep, I roll out of bed and make myself a pot of coffee. Amanda should be up for school. Maybe she'll be willing to talk about whatever's bothering her. About ten minutes before she's supposed to leave, Amanda comes out of her room and makes a beeline for the freezer. Morning, Amanda. Morning. She drops her frozen waffle in the toaster and then slams the freezer door. She won't look at me. Yikes. So, anything big going on at school today? No. no. <laughs> Wait. Okay. You need a ride to school? No. Want some coffee? Amanda pulls the toaster lever up and takes her still freezer bird waffle out before it's finished cooking. I have to go. Amanda picks up her bag and storms out. Oh, okay. I haven't seen her act like that in a long time. She it's usually short lived, but it always hurts. Hopefully this blows over and things are back to normal soon. I sit back at the kitchen table and look at the picture of Amanda and and I hanging on a wall. In it, I'm teaching her to ride a bike. Her face is a mixture of excitement and pure, unadulterated fear. I remember how determined she was. Every time she would fall off and scrape her knees, she would get up and try it again. Finally, I had to stop because she was bleeding everywhere. Then she started to cry. Because she didn't think she needed bandages. She wanted to keep trying. As I put the bike away, she just stood there in the middle of the street and screamed. Then I took her for ice cream, and it was like nothing ever happened. After giving it a bit of thought, I decide that if I force her to talk about it, I'm only going to make things worse, but I have an idea. I start rummaging around for ingredients. I hear Amanda walk in the door. Instead of heading for the kitchen like she usually does, she makes a beeline to her room. She's clearly trying to avoid me. Hey, pumpkin. What? Can you come here for a sec? There's a moment of silence. Yeah. I wanted to say sorry about last night. I'm just worried about you, kiddo. I get scared when I know that something's wrong. And I get even more scared when I feel like I can't do anything about it. Dad, I... So just, whatever it is, and you don't have to tell me if you don't want to, but whatever it is, know that you have a dad in your corner who wants you to be happy. Mm -hmm. Honey, you know I'm bad with words, so I was hoping I could speak... Speak a language we both understand. I pull out a cake from the refrigerator and place it on the table. Hopefully the frosting is set by now. Ta-da! Dad. It, <laughs> it took me a really long time because I ran out of red frosting uh, somewhere around sad. And I had to start over and... Sorry you're sad, but I support you 100%. Huh. This is beautiful. It's a straw... It's strawberry. Amanda gives me a big ol' hug. I grab some plates and forks that serve us some delicious cake. Yeah, I, re I reloaded and went with the route where she gets angrier at me. Because it's like, hey, even though she gets angrier, it's probably better to let her get angry about us because we're, we're caring too much <laughs> and, like, having a hard time dealing with that than to be like, oh, okay, whatever. You know what I mean? Like, I'm like... If the issue is showing too, like, I don't know. It just seemed like that would probably be an easier to resolve route. I grab some plates and forks and serve up some delicious cake. So, it's really stupid. What is? This whole thing. I know I've been really weird lately and there's just, I don't even know how to explain it. I feel like I might have to make you a chart. I'm listening. You want me to go take notes? Hmm. I guess I should start from the top. So, you know how Emma R is going to that fancy art school in California? Emma R. Okay. Cheat mode. It's not the one who puked in, in De Dead Goth and Beyond. I don't think it's the best friend. I think that might be Emma P. Hmm. Guess you're not technically wrong. It's good to have fallbacks like this, like that one. Uh. Anyway, ever, ever since she got the acceptance letter, I've been feeling like she's been drifting away, you know? And she's been spending a lot more time with Grace and Emma P. I just 
thought it was all in my head for a while. Then I found out from Rosie M that both of the Emmas, Grace and, and Noah, all went to a party at Mackenzie F's on the same night. They all told me they were busy studying for the Calc AB final. Yikes. Aww. So, another important piece of information is, uh, God, this is embarrassing. I, um, have a crush on Noah and, uh, that's, that's a thing. What? Whoa, I had no idea. I definitely didn't know that. Okay. Everyone knew she had a crush on Noah. You're a bad liar. So are you. I learned from the worst. Aww. Anyway, so the only person I told about the crush was Emma R. And she promised not to tell anybody. And I, I, I didn't confront them about the party thing because I didn't want to start drama. So I just kept quiet and kept going about my business. Amanda sighs. Then one day I invite everybody out to get nachos at the mall, and after not texting me back for like two hours, even though none of them ever put their phones down for more than 60 seconds, they all say they're busy, like, simultaneously. So I tell them, never mind, I'll just eat nachos at home, right? But we were out of chips, and I really wanted nachos. Totally understandable. Uh. They go to the mall anyways. I get to the food court, and who would I see there but Grace, Emma P, Emma R, and Noah, all hanging out together and eating nachos without me. What? <sighs> It gets better. I'm standing there by the escalators watching them, and I realize that Noah has his arm around Emma R, which is kind of weird. But then they kiss. No! Yes, I know! So I storm over there, and I'm like, hey! And Grace does a... Grace drops a nacho on her shirt, because of course she does, and Emma R just, like, glares at me. Grace. Grace. Nothing is coming up. I don't know who that is. Grace is the... <laughs> the boring one? The gossipy one? <laughs> oh, that sounds perfect. Why don't we just get uh get get good old Robert to threaten to fight them? <laughs> well yeah, but that's not the important part. <laughs> Grace is the one nobody really likes, or I guess that's me now. But anybody, and, uh, but anyway, nobody will say anything. And I'm like, you guys suck, which I realize is not the most eloquent thing to say. But I was very angry and really embarrassed, and I just wanted to get out of there. So I left without nachos, I might add, which only further contributed to this shitty day. And I immediately drafted a super long text to the group chat asking why they were being so weird. And I wrote another one to MR asking how long the Noah thing's been going on, and sorry, I know that's a lot. You're still following? What did MR say? Oh, okay. Get a load of this. MR says, you know what? Let me just read it to you. Amanda pulls out her phone and reads word for word an arduously long string of text messages. Hmm. Can you believe that? I cannot believe that. I care so much about Amanda's social life and mental well well-being, but man, do I not understand what she's talking about? This is all beyond me, and I'm trying my hardest to be supportive. Oh. They were dating in secret for like months. So I told her that she so I told her that she's being a really terrible friend. And she's like, well, if you think I'm so terrible, then just stop being my friend. And I was like, okay. And then she left me on red. And then, wait, left me on red. What's that? Oh, like, she saw my message and didn't reply. And I know because there are red receipts. Oh, it's just like Robert does to us every single day. I don't know what red receipts are, but I'm going to nod and pretend I understand. Gotcha. So while all this is happening, I'm talking to Emma P about how mad I am. Because she's at least being kind of reasonable, and I'm venting to her about how pissed I am at everybody and stuff. No, 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 no. I Did you see the first date? He left me on red. Second date was unread. But the first date was red. Uh. And then out of nowhere, Noah texts me and is like, how could you say that about me? And I'm like, say what about you? And he tells me that Emma P sent screenshots of everything I told her to the group chat that I got kicked out of. <laughs> okay. I feel like right now you might be in the infatuation stage where you're not, you're not seeing Robert 
for his full, true, 100% self. Real love is when you can accept who he really is. That doesn't mean you have to like everything. But you need to see who he is. Okay. And I'm like, say what about you? And he tells me that Emma P sent screenshots of everything I told her to the group chat that I got kicked out of. All right, I think you lost me at screenshots, but that definitely sounds bad. So much more, but honestly, this is all just really stupid teenager stuff. So here's my advice for, for Amanda. Her friend group sounds fucking awful. So, thankfully, she's going to an art school very far away, and she can ditch these fuckers. Well, I didn't see... I didn't mean that she needs to see your true self. I just mean that you need to you need to accept Roberts. There is so much more, but honestly, it's all just really stupid teenager stuff. Bottom line is that everybody dropped me. Half of my grade hates me, and now I have no friends. Amanda, I'm so sorry. I almost expected it from everybody else, but Aww. Emma R has been there since Mom died. I can't believe she would just stab me in the back like that. I'm not even mad that she's dating Noah. I'm just upset that she lied to me about it for so long. Amanda stabs at the remnants of her cake. Okay, I take it back. I'm kind of mad that she's dating Noah. Like, what did I do wrong? Why did everybody just suddenly decide I'm not cool anymore? Why wasn't I enough? I don't understand. As mad as I am at everybody, like, I miss them, Dad. Amanda looks dejected. I almost can't take it. What could I possibly say to help? Anyways, that's it. That's the whole sordid tale. Thanks for listening. Tune in next week for more hot gossip. Wow. I know, it's pretty dumb. It's not dumb. No, it's a stupid thing to be upset over. Amanda, your feelings are real. Don't ever be mad at yourself for having feelings. Yeah, I should be like, hey, listen. You're 18. Let's go out. We'll throw some rocks. You know, we'll drink. Well, uh, we're in Quebec, so it's, you're allowed to drink at the age of 18. Uh, we'll throw some rocks at, uh, stop signs, we'll miss, we'll hit a car, we'll sneak into a movie theater, we'll threaten some 8th graders, you know. It's like responsible adults. Here, take this knife. Amanda, your feelings are real, don't ever be mad at yourself for having feelings. I guess. Unless you're, you've secretly been a robot who's been approximating human feelings this whole time. Dad, if I was a robot, I would have transformed into a monster truck long ago. A long, long time ago. But seriously, I know you probably don't want advice, but I feel like it's my duty as a dad to bestow upon you a few nuggets of fatherly wisdom. I'm gonna save. When you get older, you start realizing the sort of people you want to associate yourself with. Do you really want to surround yourself with people who would do something like that to their friend? It takes a lot of work to find and maintain meaningful friendships. <laughs> it took me a long time to figure that out myself. I wish I had learned it sooner. If the other person isn't putting the effort in to show you how much they care, it's not worth it. You're not, you're not beholden to be their friend. Ultimately... I think this says way more about their character than it does about yours. Because you're amazing, and if they can't see that, well, that's their problem. Listen, high school sucks. It's a fine answer. I feel like, I feel like we need to get to the root of the problem, and the problem isn't high school. The problem is shitty people. Unless she's been shitty this whole time, and she's not being accountable because she has protagonist syndrome, where she sees herself as completely justified in all her actions. Meanwhile, she treats people like shit. That's the other possibility, but I'm going to assume she's only been good thus far, at least to us. She's only seemed like an awesome person. And so I'm going to assume that her friends are gossipy, like selfish pieces of crap. But who knows? Ah. I'll keep that in mind. I look down at the table. Did we just eat the whole cake? Yes. Yes, we did eat that whole cake. Well, good talk. Amanda gets up and goes to her room, but before she closes the door, she turns around. Hey, Pops. Yeah? Does she love me? 
Damn it. Thank you. You're always welcome. Love you, Amanda. Me too, Dad. Oh, okay, good. Okay, we got we got good child ending. Nice. We parented good. Welcome. You've got dads. You've got dads? Okay. Listen, I'm not doing poker route. Hey, hello, Amanda's dad. It's me, your friend Craig, who loves sports. I have nice and smart children who are good at computers. Aw, oh, man, great to hear from you, buddy. What's up? I'm still strong. Strong, I'm strong. Ah, don't I know it. Say, I've been reading up about whey protein. You use that at all? I figured it'd help me develop a bit more muscle. Yeah, I know what that is. My children are having a party, a tea party, and they wanted to invite Amanda, but we can't find her on here. They're also invited. I'm going to leave them on red. We're going Robert. <laughs> hey, you want to come over for a tea party? Oh, I'm suddenly busy. You know what they say about third dates? They get pretty serious. Uh, you might not have time to browse dad book for a while. Are you ready? Sounds like this is the point of no return that we see in games very often. Save and continue. Let's beat this game. I haven't spoken to Robert since the night we drove out to his thinking spot. He seemed unusually somber then. Like, more so than usual amount of somber. That Robert is, which is already a lot. Uh, did I say a sentence that made sense there? As I was reading it, my mind was uh, melting. He seemed unusually somber then. Like, more so than the usual amount of somber that Robert is. Which is already a lot. Okay, it made sense that time. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm ready for some Robert. <laughs> I haven't spoken to Robert since that night we drove out to his usual thinking spot. He seemed unusually somber then, like more so than the other, than the usual amount of somber that Robert is, which is already a lot. I've been thinking about him and I uh, hope he's doing okay, but I've been a little bit reluctant to reach out to him. Archie, hey Archie, guess who's getting their drink on tonight? I take a look at my dad book messages. There's a flurry of them from Robert. Yes, it's you. Also me, but mostly you. Step back to Robert. Robert, buddy, tonight we ride. Yes, meet me at Jim and Kim's on 8 p.m. Okay, Mary better not be there. Truth be told, though, I don't want to admit this. Mary kind of grew on me a little bit, even though she's a freaking mess of a human being. Okay. Not, but hey, maybe that's why she grew on me, because I like messes of human beings, and I am one. <laughs> Not that I'm underappreciative, but I think this is the first time that Robert's given me more than an hour's warning before hanging out. Oh, this is serious. Amanda! Amanda pops her head into the hallway. He's like I don't recognize blaring from her room. What's up? I'm hanging out with Robert later tonight. Robert Small. 
Robert's last name be small. <laughs> Robert's last name may be small, but his feet are big. Okay, cool. Get it? Bigfoot? <laughs> Dad jokes. Robert, who is my friend? I've been absorbing this game. Robert, who is my friend? I have friends. I'm happy for you, Dad. People, people enjoy my company, Amanda. Ugh. Dad, I'm so happy for your continued development as a human being. What are you listening to? Sad shit. Amanda, Lang. You know what? You're an adult now. I gave it an earnest effort for all 18 years of your life. Go forth and swear. Hmm. Fuck yeah. <laughs> let, let Amanda say censored. I just got an achievement. You, I just realized you didn't see it. I really hope I don't regret this later. Amanda goes back into her room and turns up the volume to her sad shit. Yeah, come on. L listen, I'm 31. And uh, sometimes I'll swear and my dad will go, oh, what? <laughs> it's like, listen, we're, we're like half my life past this. <laughs> so let's 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 move move on and let, let let the swearing occur. I put on my going out coat and walk over to Jim and Kim's. I spot Robert leaning against the brick wall, smoking a cigarette. As I get closer, I realize it's looking a little different. Cleaner, I guess. It actually seems like he's combed his hair, and his clothes are less wrinkled than usual. Yeah, he's trying to he's trying to make a good impression. I wonder what would have happened if we banged him on the first date. Actually, to be honest, I don't know if uh if he was gonna bring us into bang. I I have a theory that the implication was a misdirect, and either he was joking, or we were gonna get in and watch some like old movie. I have a feeling now that it wasn't a it wasn't the traditional thing but maybe it was who knows it actually seems uh it actually seems like he combed his hair and his clothes are a little less wrinkled than usual hey hey take a shower just for me i'm working on my relationship with existence we both stand there for a second and don't say anything robert finishes his cigarette and abruptly goes inside i follow him by the way now that i learned about the save button i'm gonna freaking abuse it for robert route by the time I get inside, Robert's already at the bar ordering two whiskeys. I spot a booth in the back and claim it for us. Robert slides in and hands me a glass. To us. Here's to us and all the property damage and petty larceny that we may commit tonight. Nice. You clink whiskey. Gl I wonder. I'm just going to check something real fast. I need to know something. I need to know something. Oh, okay. You you clink whiskey glasses, uh, and I watch him sip his rather traditionally. Uh, sorry, I, I I just had a realization there. There's three different levels of response. There's oh that sucks. Oh that's good. Or oh that's great. We clink whiskey whiskeys, and I watch him sip his rather than his traditional approach to slamming the whiskey back as quickly as possible. Oh, what's the plan for tonight? Get some bars. Maybe grab some pizza. I think I'll kill some time before we go burn down that old abandoned house in the woods. Most definitely not as fun if it's abandoned. That's that's Mary. Mary pops over. Uh, Mary pops over the back of the booth. Glass of wine in her hand. She punches Robert on the shoulder. Where was my phone call? Sorry, I figured you were busy sinking your teeth into some poor sap. I am. He's right here. I look around the booth to see a guy sitting across from her. He waves meekly replacing me with a new kid mary i could never replace you whether i wanted to or not mary leaves the booth and slides in next to robert the guy she was sitting with looks mildly relieved she eyes robert's clean pressed clothes up and down what do you got a court date coming up he looks handsome and then he cleans up nicely dang it dang it no no! Robert route is over! I've ruined everything! Could have had to shave first. 
Seriously, though, what's up with you? Robert Stare. God, if only life had a had a reload button, huh? <laughs> okay. Robert stares down at his drink, suddenly looking serious. It's Pappy. Doctors say it's cirrhosis of the liver. I'm told that old bag of bones. Uh, I told that old bag of bones to quit it with a sauce, but it's all he's ever known, especially since Ma's gone. That's why I invited you out tonight. Just didn't want to be alone. Oh, come on. Uh... Archie, don't be an asshole. You know the one thing Robert doesn't joke... doesn't joke about... Sorry. Archie, don't be an asshole. You know the one thing Robert doesn't joke around about is his pappy. Whoops. They're giving him two months. I gotta help straighten out his affairs. Robert, I am so sorry. Robert takes a long look at his whiskey, eyeing it in the dim glow of the bar's lights. I look at his life, and then I look at mine, and... I know history is just doomed to repeat itself. Oh my god. I'm just kidding. He's retired with his new girlfriend in Acapulco. They watch the sunset every night. Probably screw like donkeys. I... Wait. Aren't rabbits the only ones who screw a lot? Oh, sorry. I didn't realize you were an expert on which animals screw a lot. Please stop saying the word screw. <laughs> Filthy. Robert finishes his drink and slides it away from him. He gets up out of the booth. Me and Archie are going to hit the bricks. Coming with? Mary casts one last glance at the sad sap she's been hunting down the rest of her life. Wait, she's been hunting. And downs the rest of her wine with, in one gulp. Hmm. I like how my brain just like auto-fills sentences as I'm reading. And I sometimes just veer off into another sentence that is nowhere on the screen. This place is dead anyways. Ah. We exit the bar and find the typically empty street filled with a small crowd of people. The friend is a guy with a really deliberate attitude and bad posture. He carries a lantern that he shines up at his face for dramatic effect. Man, get out of here, Mary. What's going on? Looks like he's one of those walking ghost tours. They do that in this part of the town all the time. Oh, not the Dover ghost or whatever. Really wanted to go on one of those. Ah. Oh no, not 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 uh not Damien. You know all those stories are fake, right? Pretty much all the stories are fake. This is research. Ah. Robert makes a beeline towards the back of the group. He turns around when he notices that I'm not following him. Come on! We can't just crash it, can we? Be such a square, Archie. Stack like you belong. Robert slides up to the tour group. I reluctantly fall into step behind him. Well, here goes nothing. Hey, hey, it was... It was in this place in 1694 that the most infamous witch trials were held. To date, we do not know if people bur if the people burned at the stake were actually witches, but it is widely reported, widely reported that their ghosts still haunt the hapless dive bar to this very day. It was actually 1692. What? And the site was over by the coffee shop down the road. Oh, I'm sorry. Who are you? Daniel McSturgis, ghost historian. And this is my colleague, Dr. Ah. Dr. Loomis, paranormal <laughs> investigator extraordinaire. We're touring the Americas. I, I was just guessing 80s, because I'm like, these guys are probably in their 40s. I'm like, these guys are probably in their 40s. That is probably the, you know, I'm in my 30s. People my age are all like, you know, <laughs> remember Bop It? <laughs> Bop It, Twist It, Pull It? You know, and then people in your generation are like, <laughs> God, remember Zach the Lego Maniac? So I, I realized that, you know, know your audience. Dr. Loomis, paranormal investigator extraordinaire. <laughs> We're touring America's most haunted locations as research for our new book. Uh -oh. You've seen our guest cameo on the Paranormal House Hunters Extreme Edition. A couple of people in the group start nodding. Man, Robert's good at this. I, are you guys part of the group? I don't remember seeing you at the first stop. I like to keep a low profile. Easier to catch ghosts that way. Ha <laughs> <laughs>
I remember back before TVs were black and white. They were just black. Uh, <laughs> They've definitely been here. Been standing next to them the whole time. Thank you, random lady who I do not know. Mm. <laughs> hey, Mary helped us right now, so she gets a pass for the moment. I just, I don't want her to third wheel us out of, uh, you know, out of Robin, Robert ending. As I was saying, the epicenter of the paranormal activity can be found at the center of the coffee spoon over there. Uh-oh, Robert is trying to bring us over to uh, Matt. And who runs it? Must have been plagued by the haunting since he signed the lease. Damn near driven him mad. But whatever you want to say is cool, I guess. It's your tour. Man, didn't know that about Matt. Wait, Robert's making this up. The rest of the tour group listens intently to Robert's every word. I think the tour guide can tell he's losing the group. He seems to be getting flustered. Right. Thank you for your contribution and knowledge, Mr. McSturgis. Let's move on to the next haunted location. Robert, Mary, and I follow the group down the street. Yeah. Second. Um... The tour guide's... The tour guide's shirt is cool. Yeah, everyone in the group gets one if we make it to the final location. I turn to Robert and grab him by the shoulders. I need that t-shirt. Well, let's run this for the long haul then. <laughs> Just follow my lead. Don't want to arouse too much suspicion. And we'll have cool ghost shirts in no time. Hey. The group arrives at an old, decrepit, colonial-style house. Oh my god, this is going to be Damien's house. Although it's not painted black, is it? That's the good stuff. A quick pause in the tour. My name is Quinn, but most people on the ghost tour circuit call me Tour Master Quinn. I'm a DJ, trivia master, and part-time actor. Can we switch to Quinn route last minute and date Quinn? I like Quinn. He's got a good finger gun going on. <laughs> I do private ghost hunting events, birthday parties, um, MC bar mitzvahs, and perform traditional vaudevillian mime work. <laughs> Tour... Wait, why did your founder's badge disappear? What is this? Tour Master Quinn gives out some headshots to all of us. His resume is on the back. Hmm, stage combat experience. Anyway, there's a little bit of history for you all. This was the home of noted American author Dorothy Pembridge, who, whose prose was wildly popular in the late 19th century. It was in the attic of this very home where she wrote such classics as The Diaries of a Victorian Mistress, Lady Fitzwilliam's Courtship, and The Ghost of Sea Captain Reginald Barclay. She unfortunately died of consumption shortly after the turn of the century, but several people have reported that on some nights you can see a light from the attic where the ghost of Miss Pembridge continues to work on her latest bestseller. I guess you could say she was consumed by her work. Sad Master Quinn. No reaction from the crowd. This guy needs to work on his dad jokes. Actually, consumption is the popular cover-up. The little known fact is that it was actually a murder-suicide. Um, I'm pretty sure she died of consumption. Sure, sure. And we definitely didn't hire Stanley Kubrick to elaborate a f fake, uh, to elaborately fake the moon landing. That's the watered down censored version they teach you. School. But you can't handle the real story. I understand it's not for the faint of heart. And that is the actual conspiracy theory. I have heard that. Can we? Uh -huh. I think everybody would much rather hear what this world-renowned ghost historian has to say. Right, everybody? The group murmurs in agreement. This is a topic we cover extensively in our book. Dr. Loomis, would you care to tell the story? Ah! Ah! What did they do? What did they do? Everything's closed. Okay. Hmm. It's got to be the first one, but I, I want to see. I want to see the last one. I just want to know. Try to remember something. Anything from the impro improvisational comedy class I took. 
for one semester in high school. <laughs> but yeah, Dorothy B Pembridge. Dorothy Pembridge was writing a lot of books, and yeah, I'm going to need a word from the audience. Any oh, Jesus. Ghost. Yes. And ghost. Ghost, Dan. I look over to Robert. I think this is the part where he's supposed to come tap me on the shoulder and jump into the scene, but he's just staring at me. Everyone is staring at me. <laughs> and, and scene. Thank you very much, everybody. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. We know it's the first one, but I just had to know. Actually, it might be something highbrow. I mean, it might be something, you know. But anyways. Oh, uh, yes. Though it's rarely covered in fi traditional textbooks, Dorothy Pembridge was caught in a fierce rivalry with fellow local author, author Livingston Price. Others' books were blatant ripoffs of Pembridge's work and consistently sold better. Pembridge was engaged by this. Uh, sorry, Pembridge was enraged by this and confronted Livingston Price at his home with plans to end his life. Their bitter feuds surprisingly blossomed into a torrid, passionate affair. After many months of secret courtship, Pembridge followed through with his, her original plan and poisoned Livingston Price in his sleep. Overcome with unexpected grief, Pembridge polished off the latest, uh, off the last of the latest... Oh my god, I'm losing the ability to read. Pembridge polished off the last of the poison and died by her lover's side. Reports say that couples who enter the house will no doubt doom their relationship to a bitter end. It was... Uh, we did the wrong one! Abuse the game. Abuse the game. Something I know. In the 19th century, Dorothy Pembridge, who is credited for protecting New York City from potentially world-ending paranormal forces, despite her success, her ragtag group of ghost hunters were disbanded by government officials. Oh my gosh. <laughs> However, after learning that the ghost of Vigo the Carpathian has taken an interest in her son, her and her ghost busting friends, launching a mission to defeat the ghost and once again save New York City. <laughs> hey, isn't that the plot too? Nope, it's not. <laughs> the tour guide sees this as an opportunity to take back the group and addresses us with some razzle-dazzle. How was that one the better one? Ha, <laughs> ah, what an interesting story. Now, I just want everyone to know that the next location is extremely terrifying. If anyone thinks they can handle it, feel free to excuse yourselves. The first one was clearly the superior one. Oh my god. All right, I'm bored. Mary turns to a young guy at his phone and taps him on the shoulder. Okay, good. Mary is being a good wing person now. Hey, kid. Fancy buying a gala drink? The kid looks up at her and smiles. Only if the bar is haunted. Honey, I can show you the most haunted place in town. I think I, think, I, think I could exercise your demons if that's what you're looking for. Don't write checks your dick can't cash, kid. Ooh. His eyes go wide. Mary salutes me and Robert. Oh my god. I I need to know what 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 happens in the preacher route now. She suddenly pulls me into a hug and murmurs into your ear. Hmm. You've known Rob for as long as I have. You know when something's wrong. Keep an eye on him for tonight. Um, keep an eye on him for me tonight, okay? Sure, Mary. Good man. Mary pats me on the back and pulls away. Takes the guy's hand and leads him down the street. Hey. Take it sleazy, fellas. God help that poor soul. Mary or the kid? Hmm. Both. Oh. One last stop. This burial ground is on is such a hotbed of horrifying paranormal activity that I'm not sure where to begin. There's the wailing ghost of the wharfman. The vampire of Maple Bay, the children of the moonlight. Mm. What about the Dover ghost? By this point, the tour guide is clearly irritated with us. What about it? Oh, nothing. I just thought it would be a crime to come all the way out to this cemetery, the actual origin of one of New England's most notorious paranormal entities, and not even mention the infamous Dover ghost. It's not a real thing. It's absolutely not a real thing. I think somebody needs to brush up on their paranormal history. I know tons about paranormal hi history. I know every ghost story in this area. I can guarantee there's one you don't know. Robert looks over at me and smiles. Oh. Would you folks care to hear the tale of how Loomis and I met? Hey. <laughs> no. The entire group shushes the tour guide. Okay, fine. Fine, tell the story. Well, it was a dark and stormy night. 
wasn't always a paranormal investigator. Way back when I was just a... Bible salesman. Tra <laughs> traveling around the state, not only spreading the good word, but becoming closer to the man upstairs, myself. I happened upon the quiet town of Maple Bay, quite by accident, but little did I know that this city has a dark side. Now, at about the same time, I was just starting out as an apprentice to a rather famous ghost hunter, who was an old friend, a family friend of mine. I carried the equipment, operated the EVP machine, all that. Wait. Yes? Who? Who was the famous ghost hunter? I don't like to name drop, but... Georgia Mathers. The tour group gasps. Georgia Mathers? She's a legend. You know her? Knew her. Amazing woman. Died mysteriously. Miss you, Georgie. Anyway, we were in Maple Bay investigating some reports of strange lights. And... Sounds coming from the cemetery late. Sounds coming from the cemetery late at night. Now, we had been warned by the old crypt keeper that this place was highly dangerous, but Georgia was never one to shy away from an adventure. We camped out at the center of the cemetery for three nights straight. We endured your so called wailing watchman. Wailing ghost of the wharfman. Whatever. Your stupid vampire was just a teenager in a mask. But the Dover ghost, man. Tell him, Loomis. Oh. So, there I was, just walking back to the hotel after my long day off. Selling Bibles. Sudden, uh, saving souls and selling Bibles. Also, saving a couple Bibles, but never selling any souls, except my own. But that's another story. I lean over to Tour Master Quinn. Won it back in a fiddle competition. Found myself, walking past this very cemetery now... I was never a very superstitious man, but something seemed off. I could hear some sort of commotion happening deep within the graveyard, and I felt compelled to investigate. Oh, thank God you did. Georgia and I were conducting a seance in the mausoleum. At first, things were pretty normal, but after about an hour, everything went south. Playing back the EVP meter, we were able to hear a single word. Run. The air suddenly went cold. Something was very, very wrong. I just knew we weren't alone. We started to hear this faint, distant scraping noise, like something being dragged across the ground. It got louder and louder until it was deafening. Some kind of demented howl. And then I felt it. Someone. Something. Grabbing my ankle. Robert has the whole crowd hook, line, and sinker. You could hear a pin drop. I've only cried twice in my life. Once was at the birth of my daughter. The other was when... That thing started dragging me. I wasn't sure where it was taking me, but knew it was no place I wanted to go. I was sure I was about to die. The moment I crossed the gate into the cemetery, I heard this god-awful screeching. I ran into the mausoleum just in time to see a man being pulled across the floor by God. To this day, the mere thought of it ties my stomach in knots. It looked like a man, but I glance at Robert. Like someone who didn't know what a man was supposed to look like tried to put one together. Their arms were too long. Its eyes glowing re glowed red. It was like a walking shadow. What did I do? What any good person would do. I lunged for... Shoot, what was his fake name again? Uh, I think it was Daniel McSturgis. I lunged for Daniel. I grabbed his hand and entered the tug of war. For the unholiest of forces. I thought I was going to be torn in half. But I had God on my side. The pocket Bible I always kept on me. Out of my shirt pocket. And to this day I can remember what passage it opened up to. Oh Jesus. <laughs> well say. Blessed is he that readeth. And they that hear the words of the prophecy. And keep those things which are written therein. For this time is at hand. I have no idea where Robert pulled that verse from. With a horrifying growl, the entity finally relented. Daniel and I collapsed onto the ground, exhausted. We were both covered in blood. That damn creature clawed onto my chest. Got me real good. Had to get 16 stitches. Robert pulls down the collar of his shirt to reveal a wicked, a long wicked scar across his pecs. And that's how I got this scar. I... 
I followed Georgia Mathers to the ends of the earth. We faced exorcisms, demons, poltergeists that threw our equipment across the room. But I had never seen Georgia so scared. She was never the same after that, and neither was I. Watching what happened to Daniel and Georgia shook my faith. But I came out of that experience a better man. And a better friend. And we've been brothers ever since. The tour group gives us a round of applause as Daniel, er, Robert and I share an emotional hug. As he embraces me, I can smell the cologne on his neck. Wow, Robert does clean up good. I find myself lingering a little too long on the hug. The tour guide seems to have bought it, and he's wiping a tear from his eyes. Thank you, thank you. It's an honor to be able to share our story. Be sure to watch out for our book. Okay, what's our book? It's got to be the second. Come on. <laughs> Robert has to suppress his laugh at that one. Well, I think you both definitely earned your t-shirts. The tour guide hands us the coveted t-shirts. He then slips us both his business card and leans in close. You guys are ever in need of a, of a professional actor, balloon art, animal artist, Elvis impersonator, or nude model. Please don't hesitate to contact me. Uh, hi. <laughs> hi. You got it, buddy. After a couple of tourists take selfies with us, we split away from the group and walk home. It was incredible. <laughs> I really can't believe they bought all that. I didn't know... <laughs> I didn't know you had it in you, Archie. Excuse me, Dr. Loomis. <laughs> that's, a, that's, a, that's a bit of a pocket... Sorry, that bit about the pocket Bible was aces. Although, giving the Dover ghost glowing red eyes was a little cliche. And the Kubrick conspiracy theory wasn't... All a part of the character. Well, we got the shirts out of it. We arrive in front of Robert's house. Want to have a drink? I think we got to have a drink. Is that even a question? How long have you known me for? You really think I would turn down the opportunity to share a fine alcoholic beverage with my treasured friend that ac an accomplice, Mr. Robert Bobbert Small? If you ever call me Bobbert again, I will kick you right in the shins. Both of them. You can expect an angry phone call from my orthopedist in the morning. Oh. Bobbert. <laughs> Dang it, we did the wrong answer. We did the wrong answer. Let's metagame the hell out of this game. I know where this goes, Small. I know the steps. One second I'm sipping delicious aged scotch, and the next I'm foaming at the mouth. And you've taken over the throne. Long live the king, baby. Oh. Okay, we did it. Robert leads me inside. That was a better answer, to be honest. Robert leads me inside. I can't help but think about what Mary said to me. Robert did seem a little bit off, but then completely disappeared when we were joking about the ghost tour. Okay. We're in. I don't know. He's hard to read. While I'm thinking, I hear claws skittering along the floor. Oh god, it's his pit bull. I'm about to be torn to shreds. I shut my eyes tight and brace for the impact. Betsy, hey, be nice. I don't feel anything but tiny paws scratching at my shoes. I open my eyes. Betsy. Mm. Robert's dog jumps away from me, running around in circles and sniffing Robert's legs. He pats her on the head. Can we pet the dog? I bet you they let you pet the dog, because that's, that's, that's the whole thing, you know? Hey, that's not a pit bull. It's the cutest, dumbest Boston Terrier I've ever seen. I've seen one cuter and dumber Boston Terrier in my life. I know, oh my god. Oh my god. I, you know what? I understand what my sister sees in you. Betsy, you're not a pit bull. And you, you weren't taken over by the Dover ghost. Betsy's made of tougher stuff than that, ain't you, girl? Betsy rolls over for some well-deserved belly rubs. <laughs> I, 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 uh, I just keep a picture of a large pit bull in my wallet in case of emergencies. Immediate emergencies. We make our way to Robert's living room. For a quiet man with arguably the oldest pickup truck that can be legally driven, this place is amazing. There are sleek, modern appliances throughout the, uh, throughout the room, and a big flat screen TV mounted on the wall. He has, sh he has shelves upon shelves of DVDs. Guess he wasn't lying about being really into cinema. Whoa, he also has th these. Over here. He pours us both glasses of whiskey. 
from a well-stocked bar in the corner while Betsy curls up on a pile of cushions. So, how'd you really get that scar? And don't tell me you got it fishing for Alaskan king crabs in the Bering Sea or something. Train me too well. Robert laughs and takes a sip of his drink. I don't know. My daughter and I were riding on our bikes. I hit a rock and flew over the handlebars and then we went to the hospital and that's it. Not a very interesting story. Never heard you talk about your daughter. Well, I have one. Hmm. That's her. He points at a picture on the wall of a very serious little girl with dark eyes. Yep, that's definitely Robert's daughter. How old is she? Uh, 25? 26? Not too sure. Does she live around here? No. Bella is back home in Brooklyn. Works at some new media online magazine thing. Makes buckets, though. I don't know. He suddenly seems really serious. I probably shouldn't press him about it. You like Santana? Santana? Oh. Great. Robert puts on Santana. Takes a seat on the couch next to me. He suddenly downs his drink in one gulp. Hey, you all right? Sir. Robert leans in and kisses me, the taste of whiskey burning on my lips, and I'm surprised at first. I slowly relax into his arms. He pulls away slightly, his lips barely brushing against my mouth. I am now. I can't say anything, at best managing a sigh. Robert leans in again, kissing me harder. He pulls my bottom lip between his teeth and bites lightly, sliding his hand under my shirt. My heart pounds in my chest as he l lies us both down on the couch. He kisses a trail down my neck, his teeth grazing against my skin. <laughs> this music is like so good for the moment. I, I just wait. It's not that. Robert bites down and I have to stifle a moan. Stop. Robert stiffens up and pulls away. No biting? No, no, I'm... I'm more than okay with that. Something's... something's up. Robert runs a hand through his hair and he looks away. I'm fine, I've just been kind of stressed out. Tired. Not a big deal. <laughs> Filthy. No, don't stop! We were almost there! Okay. This is date three. I know he likes silence. But I feel like we're at, uh, we're at a character thing. I know. I feel like I have to. I know that everything is saying this, but I feel like we're at the point where we switch to this. Listen, I want this as badly as you do, but I know something's wrong. I need to make sure that you're okay. Robert stares at the ground. You don't know me that well, Archie. I'm not a good person. He takes a deep breath. Mm. I spent my whole life only taking and taking and taking. Now here I am, an old broken man sitting on top of a pile of everything I've ever taken, alone. But I want to know you. You don't have to keep hiding behind fake stories and acting like you don't have feelings. Mm. It's... He sighs heavily. It's Val. She's visiting tomorrow. She wants to patch things up. Are you, uh, sorry, but is this a bit? No. When was the last time you saw her? Three, four, I think. Months ago? Years old? Mm -hmm. Years. Well, uh, I sit, I sit up straight. Jesus, Robert, what happened between you two? I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> Welcome back, Pickle. <laughs> How's your day been? I think we're near the end. I think we might actually get a one-stream run of this. Oh, sorry, one second. Yeah, I'm a little bit disturbed with the... A little bit disturbed with how much it turned into... Pick, uh, into uh, Filthy over there. I don't want to talk about it. Robert and I sit in silence, neither of us wanting to look at each other, both of us unsure of what to do next. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Fine. Hmm. Things were already bad between us. I cared about her, I always did. 
Things just got in the way. Before I knew it, she was leaving for college, wanting nothing to do with me. Marilyn and I moved out to settle down. Thought it would help to get away from all the distractions, all the money, the drinking. But temptation gets to you. I tried to be better, but I just couldn't. And then the accident changed everything. I think every day about how she must have died hating me. I never became the better man she wanted me to be. The one she always saw in me. She was the last thread Val and I had connecting us together. I didn't know that when I lost my wife, I was going to lose my daughter too. Robert. I spent too much time chasing the things I thought were going to make me happy. That I ruined my only real chance at happiness. Now my wife is dead and my daughter hates me. And I convinced myself that this, he gestures vaguely in my direction, was going to make me happy. Why do I even try anymore? So sorry, I know how hard it is to... No, you don't. How could you possibly know how this feels? You did everything right. Your daughter loves you. You're a good person. I was a terrible husband and even worse father. I have no idea why she's bothering to contact me now. No, I'm just gonna fuck it up like I always do. Broken. Shouldn't even go. Robert puts his head in his hands. Okay. Obviously, I gotta tell him what he needs to hear. That, that one is like a freebie one. Tell him what he wants to hear. Tell him what he needs to hear or walk away. If you phrase it like that, everyone is going to answer the correct answer. Nothing is going to change until you do. Robert pauses. He looks at me. There are a lot of things in my life that I regret. That I wish I could take back and do over. And it hurts so much to know that I can't. But... What I can do and what you have to do, what you have the privilege of doing tomorrow morning is to wake up and try to be a better person than you were the day before. Things aren't going to fix themselves tomorrow or the next day. And patching things up with Val isn't going to solve all of your problems either. But nothing is going to change if you don't. And you can't love anyone else until you stop hating yourself. And you're right. I don't know you that well. But you have the same capacity for that good that we all have. I know you can find it. Val is giving you a chance. Don't waste it. But, Robert, listen to me. It's going to be okay. But, I lean over and embrace Robert, pulling him in as tightly as I can. He buries his head in my shoulder, hugging me back. It's going to be okay. I place a hand on the back of his head and stroke his hair. He shudders and then sobs. I realize that he's crying. Thank you. We stay there for a while, holding each other. We both eventually drift off to sleep. Date complete. Now, I cheesed this date. I cheesed it. So this better be an S. What? What? I totally cheated to get all the good things. Did it know I loaded? Did it know I loaded and penalized me for it? Oh, my lord. <laughs> that's true. But I got, I got the achievement Knife Dad, so that's all good. Whew. I, you know what, though? Not every relationship needs to be an S-rated relationship. If our relationship is two A's and an S, that's fine. I wish it was one A and two S's, because I would like me good ass. Of a relationship, but I'm stuck with ass. Okay. <sighs> Woo. I think I have everything finally set up. Amanda should be here any minute now. I think that's her car in the driveway. Okay, gotta act natural. So I'm guessing, I'm gonna guess that we now have a... Uh... I'm guessing that we're now going to be in an epilogue scenario where the game is mostly kind of playing itself, but I could be wrong. I think that's her car in the driveway. Gotta act natural. Be cool, Archie. Be cool. Amanda walks through the door with a suspicious look on her face. 
Hey, Dad. Off to a good start. Mm, something fishy? Rats. I like this uh, plushie right here, by the way. Sorry, sweetie, it's the feds. The life of crime is finally catching up to you. I tried to send him a different direction, but... Even I'm no match for the power and fury of the U.S. government. Well, they think they're going to take me alive. But you got another thing coming. I'm kidding. You're right. I have a little surprise for you. Yeah, I can tell. You're very bad at lying. Amanda, my dear, would you care to join me in the kitchen? Father, it would fill my heart with glee. I lead Amanda over to the kitchen table where a present lies under, uh, covered under a tablecloth. It's nothing special, but I wanted to get you a little something. You graduated high school last week, and I know you, you told me not to make a big deal about it, but... Ah, oh, Dad, you... I dramatically whip the cloth off the table. Amanda's jaw drops. No way! I figure you probably wouldn't uh, be able to get cable in the dorm, so I thought it might be nice to take a piece of home with you. A DVD box set of long-haul paranormal ice road truckers. This is all 19 seasons. Come on, we all know she can get internet. And bonus material, including commentary with actual ghosts featured on the show. Dad, I love this. Thank you. She gives me a big hug. I'm glad you like it. Hey, you want to hang out with me in the backyard for a bit? Toss the old pigskin or something? Totally. I follow Amanda to the back door. <sighs> oh, shit. W what? Told me not to come. You told me not to make a big deal, but you seem to have forgotten that my entire mission in life is to make a big deal out of your accomplishments. So consider this your graduation party, and also Brian, my daughter's better than yours. So step off. Surprise, Dad! Everyone's here. All the dads in the cul-de-sac. How did you know that I have no friends and thus want to be surrounded by dads? Yeah, this is a very weird party. Yeah, everybody wanted to come and support you. Is that a mac and cheese bar? Sure is. Fully customizable, down to the type of mac. And there's ice cream cake. The good kind, with the crunchies in the middle. I don't know what to say. Don't say anything. Just go have fun with your pals, all right? I think my uh, Robert voice is slowly killing my voice. My throat. I'm so proud of you, Amanda. Amanda smiles and runs to her friends. I should make the rounds and make sure everybody's having a good time. But first, mac and cheese. I walk over to Mary, who's having a lively conversation with Amanda. Listen, kid. You're going to need some real-life skills out there if you're going to make it out on the streets. Oh, Jesus. Please don't get any advice from Mary. I'm going to college. Same thing. Look, I know you're not old enough to drink. Hmm. Right. And I know you're not... I know you're smart enough to not drink until you're of legal age. Uh-huh. Uh. But hypothetically, if you were to drink, it'd behoove you to drink a glass of water between rounds. Got it. Uh. Hypothetically. Hey. And if you wake up with a headache, all you gotta do mm -hmm. is take a jar of pickles and drink the pickle juice. You're gonna be fine. What's going on here? Girl talk. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Mary turns back to Amanda. Yeah. Now, let me tell you how to deal with a bad roommate. First thing you need to know, you get straight A's if they die during the semester. <laughs> Mary! Relax, it's a myth. Supposedly. Against my better judgment, I leave them be. Yeah, Mary is a character that actually... I know they said that she grows on you, but she actually does. Although her whole home life is a mystery, and I wonder if she'll grow on you there or if she's terrible. Hmm. I don't recognize that girl by the snack table, so should I go say hello? This has got to be, um... Got to be the daughter. I forget her name, unfortunately. Val. I think it's Val. Hi, I don't think we've met. Oh, we've met years ago. I guess it's not Val. I'm here for my revenge. Okay, I guess it is Val. You're Robert's kid, aren't you? Yep. Spot on. Guess that makes you Archie, huh? Yeah, it's nice to meet you. 
I'm glad Robert brought you along. He promised there would be free food, so it's kind of hard to pass up, and... Look, I don't know you, but can I get real with you for a sec? My old man's a real closed book, you know? Me and him, we got a long way to go. You don't erase decades of neglect in a week, but... You sure can get tired of staying angry about it. That kind of bitterness, it poisons you. You think I'm too old for that. Anyway, lately he's been better. A lot better. And between him shaving once... Wait, between him shaving for once and how much he talks about you, I get the feeling you have something to do with it. So, thanks. Robert means a lot to me. I'm glad he's getting better. Just... Keep an eye on him while I'm not around, okay? Or else. What? I'm kidding. Or am I? I don't know why I'm like this. I think it runs in the family. Amanda trots up to the conversation. Hmm. Hey, I love your necklace. And your hair. And just, geez, your whole vibe is cool. Thanks. I like your jacket. My girlfriend collects pins too. She's in, um, she's like a, a, a media person, right? So, hey, maybe this isn't so bad. Such a bad uh, relationship to form. Big wig in a media company? Photographer? Oh, this is my daughter, Amanda. Amanda, this is Robert's daughter, Val. Nice meeting you. I heard you're a photographer. Mm -hmm. Aspiring photographer. I'm going to school for it. You take pictures? Yes. Yes? You're a photographer. Welcome to the biz. Val hands Amanda a business card. Nice. If you're ever looking for internships, shoot me an email. Awesome. Anyway, I need to go make friends with that woman over there who is dual wielding wine glasses. <laughs> Catch you later. Val walks away. She's so cool. She gave me her business card. She touched my hand. Congrats. You just networked for the first time. I'm a, I'm a regular business lady now. Quarterly projections, stock market, synergy. Well, you're making a fortune as a businesswoman. I gotta keep this party going. Get you around, Pops. Is this story gonna end with... I don't care, Brian. Go away. My daughter's better. Is this story gonna end with your daughter leaving? And then it's like, the end. Archie. Brian, you made it. I wonder if you can just end really alone and nobody likes you. Brian, you made it. <laughs> I don't pass up on good Mac. What do you think of the party? It's not bad. Just not bad? Oh. Yeah, it's not bad. Don't let him bait you. Don't let him bait you. Thank you for the lovely compliment. Izzy trots up. Hi, Amanda's dad. Hey, Brian's daughter. See? See how that feels? <laughs> that was a very filthy line. And by filthy, I don't mean the adjective. I mean the viewer in chat right now. This is a really great party. Thank you so much for inviting us. You're very welcome. Tiny child. Who knows how to pay a compliment? Brian and I lock eyes. This isn't over. Hey, bro. Bro, this feels like an epilogue to me. This feels like the end of uh, an AI dungeon run. Where I'm like... After... Uh, after... Robert reconnected with his daughter. Uh, Brian walked up and said some shit. <laughs> after uh, after Robert reconnected with his daughter Craig broed out a bit this is a real rager taking our older age into consideration I'm I'm trying to be in bed at a reasonable hour tonight don't let me get too wild don't worry dude I'll keep an eye on your fruit punch intake you know I'm really glad we're bros again let's hit the gym sometime soon huh sure thing dude Brian and Hazel peek out behind Craig I wonder if you can, like, date everyone once in a single run. Or if you only get one ending. Like, like, does the game keep extending itself? Um, based on, uh, who gets the third date? Or do, uh, or do you only get three choices of a date? So you can have, like, one with one person and two with another. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Briar and Hazel peek out behind Craig. I've never met them. Are they twins? 
Ah, little ones. Hello. Hiya. Thank you for all that ice cream cake. Oh. Wait, girls. How much of that did you eat? Briar ate four pieces. Ask any witness. No, I didn't. Hazel ate four pieces and wants to pin it on me because we look alike. I have your face. Nobody will ever believe you. Oh, boy. I'll let you guys figure this out. Good seeing you, Craig. Let's hang soon, yeah? Oh. Totally. Tell Amanda. Congrats for us. Looks like you've settled in this neighborhood quite nicely. Yep. You can ask for a better cul-de-sac. Well, I'm glad. Hopefully we'll get to see you at more church events. we got a big schedule planned for the rest of the year. Not interested. I mean, sure thing, Joseph. And maybe if you aren't doing anything later, we could hang out sometime. Sure, Joseph. That'd be great. Must be lonely having a wife who constantly hits on other men. Well, see you later. Hugo comes up to me with a plate of mac and cheese. Oh, Jesus, not this guy. Hey, hey the perfect cheddar to mac ratio. Beautiful work, Archie. Not as good as Matisse, though. Matisse is uh, subjectively the best. That, whatever. Sorry, I, I zoned out for a second. What happened? Thanks, Hugo. You know, I'm really pleased to see Amanda going to her dream school. I'm glad she turned it around for finals. Yeah, I know, really. It's like, we just invited them. I think the reason we invited them is because uh, Amanda's friends are terrible. And we just basically told Amanda to abandon all her friends. So right now she has no friends. And so the closest she has to friends are like the, the daughters of these other dads that she babysits. So we're just like, let's invite all these people so it feels like a congratulations. You know, I'm really pleased to see Amanda going to her dream school. I'm glad she turned it around for the finals. Me too, that scholarship money will really help. Amanda walks by and pretends not to see Hugo. Amanda, come say hi to your old teacher. Hey! Congratulations on graduating. I know you're going to do great things at art school. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Amanda starts to back away. Wait, I just realized that you're not my teacher anymore, so I don't have to be afraid of talking to you. You no longer hold power over me. You're right. Go forth, Adel. I can no longer give you detention. Yeah, I'm going to break anything I want, and there's nothing you can do about it. You still mad about that time I gave you detention for breaking my globe? Nope. <laughs> yeah, I, I agree. Yes. Yes. And I'll, I'll, uh, I'll have you know that the globe didn't even fit through the basketball hoop in the first place, so... We'll fit into college just fine. Hey, man. Hey, Matt, I'm sorry. You and I, we had a lot of potential. You know, we had some chemistry, but... I saw a man out there, and that man... He needed something a little bit deeper. Maybe next time. You're a good guy, and you'll you'll find someone that's more your style. I'm sorry, Matt. Take care. <sighs> Filthy. We're in sentimental time. Now's not the time. Matt! We know where Amanda leaves for college. I'll have a fresh... <laughs> I'll have a fresh batch of grateful bread ready for her. Thank you. I know she'll love it. And Grateful Bread was the best choice. I don't know why he didn't like it. Oh. What a splendid garden party. My deepest thanks to uh, for extending an invitation to my son and I. This icebox cake is divine. Yeah, thanks, dude. Good cake. Thanks for coming by. I like how it's like the people we never talk to. They're just like, yo, later. As the party starts to wind down, I take a seat on our back porch step. The sun is setting, and everyone seems to have eaten their fill. Amanda wanders over and sits next to me. Another party, Pops. What can I say? I was inspired. So, uh, I, uh, I also have something for you. For me? Why? Not to be completely genuine about my feelings for once or anything, but... Growing up wasn't easy, but it could have been a lot harder if it wasn't for you. This is where we're going to cry. Dad, you've been there for me through everything. There's been times in my life when you were my only friend. 
was really scared of going to college and being so far away from you, but I realize that everything you've done for me has been preparing me for this, and I'm ready. I wouldn't be who I am today without you. Don't cry. Don't cry. I swear to God, Curly, if you cry again. I mean, Archie, if you cry again. You're the best, Dad. I love you. And I'm crying. Anyway, that was enough emotional vulnerability for one day. Present time. Amanda hands me a tiny wrap package. Is it photographs? Is this going to be photographs and now I'm going to cry? I'm tearing off the wrapping to find a framed picture of me and Amanda. It's us. Kind of shocking. All our photo albums were just pictures of me, huh? I figured we needed at least one picture together before I leave. Amanda, thank you. Watching you grow up has been the happiest experience of my life. You're such a talented, intelligent young woman. And I'm so excited to see what the future holds for you. Knock him dead, kid. Yeah, Amanda is has been pretty consistently good. There's not really anything you can say about bad about her. Oh. Always do. Amanda and I share a hug. This is only the beginning, Pops. Plenty more memories for us down the road. Memories to make stuff and break stuff. And I didn't read any of that correctly. Yes, I am still streaming, man. How's it going? We're almost done. Memories to make and stuff to break, right? Aww. Oh, I just got an achievement. World's best dad. Oh, I'm going to break so much stuff intentionally and unintentionally. You're probably going to have to pay for most of it. It would be my honor. Amanda hops up. Looks like someone's been waiting to talk to you. I glance over the back of the yard where Robert is standing on a bench beneath a cherry blossom tree. Oh, of course, beneath a cherry blossom tree. He smiles at me. Are we there at the one, the one week of the year where the cherry blossoms are in full bloom? I'll leave it to you, me, and the Emmas. Wait. I'll leave it to you. Me and the Emmas are going to get ice cream. Oh, she's going out with the Emmas. Weird. Love you, Pops. She did not take my advice to ditch those pieces of crud. Amanda runs off to join her friends. I'll take a seat next to Robert. Um, As the last guests make their way over to the party. Oh. So I have a giant backyard with a freaking pond and a big old cherry blossom tree and a bench. Dang it, what does is, what is Archie do for work, other than being a famous cartoon character? Hey. Hey. I can't believe we're playing this whole game as a meme. Robert gestures, gestures vaguely to the snack table. Good stuff. Yeah. So... I had the chance to talk to Val. Did she physically threaten you? Yeah, that's my girl. She said you've been doing better. Oh. Trying to work on the vices. I also showered today. We sit in silence for a moment. You know, every day for me is a battle against my self-destructive habits. But lately, it's gotten a little easier. Thanks for talking some sense into me, and it's hard to get the things through my thick skull sometimes, but... What you said that night actually helped. I'm glad. I like you, Archie. I like you a lot. I haven't felt this way about someone in a long time. I lean in and kiss him for a moment before he pulls away. He takes my hand in his. You're special to me. But I have some stuff I need to work on. Uh, emotionally. Before I can get into anything romantic with you. You deserve better than who I am right now. I need to be on my own for a bit. Figure some things out. Of course. I think that what you need right now is a friend. And I'm happy to be that for you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what, what am I... What are you doing, Archie? You were in. You were in. Now you're talking your way out? Are you kidding? Mm. Thank you. That means a lot to me. And... If you're ever ready for more of that, for more than that, you know where to find me. Mm -hmm. Let's hunt ghosts sometime. I would love that. But I bet this is all because I got an A rating and not an S rating. I put my head on his shoulder and we watch the sun slowly dip below the horizon together. Although, to be fair, putting your head on your shoulder and watching the 
sunset is uh it's not the most platonic gesture in general i mean it can be but i i, I don't see it i think i think we got i think we know what's going to happen in the epilogue it's better to be early than late okay nice the ending was a hopeful future Executive producers, Aaron Hansen and Brett Lilly. Oh, God. I would sing along. Oh, Aaron is Joseph. Barry is Brian. I would sing along, but I think I killed my voice doing Robert's voice. Well, I have to say, Pickle, thank you very much for gifting that game. That was fun. I appreciate it. Nice playthrough. I'm glad we got through it in a sitting. Always feels nice to do that. It took me longer than uh, most people's playthroughs of it. I think probably because I was reading it and engaging. There's a penguin minigame? Dream Dad. <laughs> There's a concert minigame? A gargoyle minigame? We know where the gargoyle one is going to happen. Today? Or ever again in my life? I'm not going to stream it today. I think we're going to... We're getting close to wrapping up the stream. I'm just... Uh, I'm going to watch the credits. See if that's the end. You know? Uh, I don't think I'm going to stream AI Dungeon tomorrow. I don't know what I'm going to stream tomorrow. Uh, I'll find something. I'll find something I get excited about. Uh, and then on Friday... In two days, I'm going to play Inside. Yeah. So I'll find something fun tomorrow. Oh, you're the best, Pops. Amanda. Nice. <laughs> Dream. Nice. Oh, look, he whittled a little, uh, he whittled a little dog. So I wonder if that's best Robert ending or if there's like different endings. If there's like, if there's better endings. Like that seemed like a pretty positive ending. Nice. Yes, I am in the, uh, yeah, I'm e Eastern time zone. Yep. Hmm. Nice. So we got one of the pictures. We got one of the mini games. Cool. Well. Thanks for hanging out. I hope you guys enjoyed that. That was a long ass playthrough, but we got through the game and we picked the obviously the best route, although we didn't get any action in the end. It doesn't matter. It was for the best. Uh, yeah. All right. I hope you guys all have a really wonderful night. Um, we've got a, we have a pretty small crew online right now. But I think we're going to skip doing the raid. We're just going to, we're just going to take off. Um, thanks so much for hanging out guys. I'll see some of you tomorrow. I presume. And some inside on Friday. Okay. Take care, everyone.